Chapter 621, Group Battle of Heroes Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash The expressions on the faces of the spectators were all calm. The ending of this battle was only to be expected, after all. Although Wang Yunfei thought highly of himself and was quite famous in the sacred royal city, wanting to borrow the sacred battle platform to make his name, how could someone like him be comparable to the top ranker of the immortal martial realm Ken Wenchen? The talent of those absolute geniuses of the royal sacred region could easily be deduced from their title. And even though Wang Yunfei was strong, his fame was far beneath an heiress suppressing genius. He was basically not on the same level. Since Ken Wenshin had the capabilities to fight against Li Shi, it was only within expectations that he would defeat Wang Yunfei. If not, undoubtedly, everyone would drown in disappointment with regard to this top ranker of the immortal martial realm. This battle caused quite a great shock to Wang Yan, Shen Jing, and Moon, as well as the others from the Divine Weapon Academy. But to the vast majority of those major characters that came here today, it was simply nothing but an interesting prelude. The next event was the one that they were all waiting for. Ken Wenchen made his name after achieving the position of the top ranker of the immortal martial realm. Borrowing that incomparable prestige of that ranking, he had jumped levels and challenged the Shi of the eight era suppressing geniuses. If Ken Wenchen was victorious, his name would surpass the name of the eight era suppressing geniuses, becoming someone at the very peak. In the same era, nobody's name would be ranked beside him. He would become the symbol of this era, a representation of the future. Hence, the meaning of this battle was extraordinary. Not only that, this wasn't a battle solely between Ken Wenchen and Vishi. During the ending of the Immortal Martial Realm, Vishi issued a challenge to all the heaven chosen in the Royal Sacred Region wanting them to gather at the sacred battle platform to see who among them was the one that could truly stand at the peak. Qian Wenchen didn't feel anything defeating Wang Yunfei. He understood that the battle after this was the challenge that he truly needed to face. This was the fight that belonged to him. On the sacred battle platform, Qian Wenchen's long hair danced in the wind, akin to sharp blades as a fiendishly demonic aura exuded from him. Many people were speculating. Would this person become a brand new legend starting from today? The Sacred Battle Platform, the most illustrious arena of the Royal Sacred Region. Would this be the place that skyrocketed Ken Wenshin's name and cemented his status? Boom! A loud sound akin to an earthquake thundered out. Li Shi stood up, his gaze penetrated through space, landing on that fiendishly handsome looking silhouette on the Sacred Battle Platform. His entire body radiated an incomparable baleful aura of a ferocious primordial bird of prey about to lunge out of him, slaughtering everyone, engulfing everything. His sharp eyes roamed the crowd as he coldly spoke, after the immortal martial realm, I invited the heroes of the Saro to gather here. For those under celestial phenomenon, they are able to participate in combat to see who is the one truly unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. Dishi's voice was booming. A tyrannical chi permeated the atmosphere. He came here today bringing with him a supreme confidence. Qian Wenchen would become the stepping stone for him to rise all the way to the top. He would undoubtedly be victorious today, killing the top ranker of the immortal martial realm, Qian Wenchen, and cleansing the shame and humiliation of him not getting into the top ten back in the immortal martial realm. The eight era suppressing geniuses are all ranked equally. But, I have not truly fought against any of them. Today since there's such an opportunity, I also want to see who among us would truly be unrivaled in the Heavenly Dipper realm. A tyrannical voice thundered out as a sturdy figure slowly walked out. This, was none other than Li Yan, of the eight era suppressing geniuses. In the wilderness, there were many clans and tribes. There were those who were claimed to be from the barbarian clan, but in truth, the name of a single clan simply couldn't encompass the vastness of the wilderness. Li Yan was born in the Heaven Punisher clan of the wilderness and was termed by others as Li Yan of the Barbarian clan. His attainments in the Mandate of Gold were incomparable. He who pursues the peak, cultivates only a single mandate. The blood in his veins was the blood from the barbaric wilderness, his physique could transform, becoming larger, turning into a barbaric war goat. 
he was blessed with innate divine strength and when coupled with his insights and the mandate of gold, the strength of his attacks were beyond terrifying. Li Jian has broken through to the eighth level of Heavenly Dipper. The crowd all sighed with admiration in their hearts when they felt the powerful aura rolling off from Li Jian's body. The eight of them stood at the frontier of the era, they were all representatives of the future. After him, Qi Lian walked out. His entire body was radiating with the tyranny of devilish energy. Dong Ayu Hanjiang, crown prince of the eastern mountain ancient country also stood up. The crowd drew in a deep breath as they stared at the figure. This battle wasn't only between Ken Wenchen and Vichy. At the same time, it was also the penultimate battle for the eight heirs suppressing geniuses to see who stood at the peak. Sadly, Gu Lufeng and Hua Taixu weren't present today. Fan Miu walked out as well. Fan Miuyun's cultivation base was already at the peak of the ninth level. She had the highest possibility of being the strongest among the era suppressing geniuses and hence, with the highest odds of being ranked as unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. Ji Fiaxu didn't step out. His cultivation base now was only at the peak of the seventh level and had yet to break through to the eighth. Although his talent was high, when facing against so many similarly monstrous opponents, his defeat was all but assured. Staring at Ken Wenshin's silhouette, Ji Fiaxu couldn't help but admit that the rumors circulating outside saying that Ken Wenshin replaced him in status as the number one disciple of the Battle Sword sect had already became a reality. Just these few people? There should be more right. I thought all of you had confidence in your combat prowess. Hadn't you all stepped into the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper already? Why don't any of you dare to step out now? Di Shi tyrannically snorted. As the sound of his voice faded, yet another figure appeared in the direction of where those from the Violent Thunder sect were sitting. This person was tall and exuded an aura and excelled in the world. He wasn't any one of the eight era suppressing geniuses, and his fame couldn't be compared to them. But for those who were familiar with him all knew that this person was much more dangerous compared to any of the eight era suppressing geniuses. Lulan from the Violent Thunder sect. And just like what Di Shi said, he was one of those who had already entered the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper Sovereigns. What did the supreme tier mean? The supreme tier of the Heavenly Dipper realm undoubtedly meant that those characters in it had no opponents who could match their combat prowess. Only people at this level would have the qualifications to be termed as unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. It was common knowledge that for those who desired to break through to celestial phenomenon, they first had to comprehend the true intent of their respective mandates before forming a constellation that belonged solely to them. However, there were numerous existences who had transcendent combat might and comprehended the true intents, yet they had not broken through to celestial phenomenon yet. Characters like these who comprehended the true intent of their mandates were generally referred to being at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper. Lulan was precisely such a character. Dishi came here with another purpose than just killing Ken Wenchen. He wanted to be the overlord of the Heavenly Dipper realm, trampling everyone underneath him. Although there were several characters like Lulan who were all at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper, not one of them could obtain the recognition of everyone in the royal sacred region to become worthy of the title, unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. After all, there could only be a single person worthy of the name. If there were two or more, how could it still be termed as unrivaled? Dishi today came here with such an ambition. He wanted to become the only existence that truly stood at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. From this, one could see how great his appetite was. If one wanted to obtain public recognition, becoming unrivaled in the Heavenly Dipper realm was even tougher than becoming one of the eight era suppressing geniuses. There were simply too many demon level geniuses in the royal sacred region, too many people who stayed at the Heavenly Dipper realm and had yet to break through to celestial phenomenon. Some of these roamed the world, while others stayed hidden in seclusion searching for a spark of insight that would allow them to break through. There were even many who had comprehended quite a few true intents of the martial mandates. Other than these people, who then could truly obtain the title of being unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper? Yet another figure walked out. This person was clad in a golden armor, his entire being radiating a golden light. He stared straight at Li Yan as his intent to battle skyrocketed. 
the crown prince of radiant gold ancient country. Many in the crowd felt their gazes freeze. This person didn't participate in the immortal martial realm but because of a twist of fate, he comprehended the true intent of his mandate. Right now, nobody knew how strong his combat prowess is. In the direction where members from the war country were sitting, there was a figure who similarly walked out. This person was middle-aged and seemed about 40 years of age. He was the heaven chosen of the war country, as well as a disciple of one of the nine great sects, the Heaven Cleaving Manor. His combat prowess was unfathomable and it was rumored that he had also stepped into the supreme tier of heavenly dipper sovereigns. Lulan and this heaven chosen from the war country didn't choose to enter the immortal martial realm a few months ago. Their combat strength was unfathomable, but what the immortal martial realm tested for was innate talent. There were several older heavenly dipper sovereigns with immense combat strength who didn't enter the immortal martial realm. Because, if their talent was insufficient, the immortal martial realm might very well be their burial ground. These characters all had already comprehended at least a kind of true intent, with a single foot already in the celestial phenomenon realm. Why would they take such a needless risk? Only the eight era suppressing geniuses didn't have this fear. They had absolute confidence in their own innate talent. The burial grounds for geniuses would never be able to bury them. This battle fills me with even more anticipation. However, why is she so confident? Many wondered in their hearts. Could it be that Dishi had also comprehended the true intent of his mandate? If that's the case, it would definitely be very dangerous for Ken Winchen. Although Ken Winchen's innate talent was ridiculously high, his cultivation base was still at the seventh level after all. If he were to fight against those at the supreme tier, he simply wasn't strong enough yet. Winchen, be careful of those people. They are all peak existences at the Heavenly Dipper Realm who comprehended the true intent of their mandates, Lin Shuai transmitted his voice over. Just fight a battle against Rishi and reject the group battle. Nobody would say anything against you. Ken Winchen's heart trembled slightly when he felt the overwhelming pressure in the atmosphere. These people who dared to step out were all extremely terrifying characters. Nine people. Wonderful. Dishi swept his gaze onto those who dared to step out. There were five of the eight era suppressing geniuses, Ken Winchen, Lulan from the Violet Thunder sect, the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold, and the Heaven Chosen from the War Country. The appearance of any one of the nine could cause the hearts of the crowd to shudder and to think that today, all nine of them were walking towards the sacred battle platform simultaneously. Since we have all appeared, we might as well settle everything in one great battle. I propose all nine of us step up at the same time, how about it? Dishi's eyes gleamed sharply as he spoke. The sacred battle platform was big enough for many to battle on it. He's crazy, why is Dishi acting like this today? Why is he so confident? Has he truly reached the supreme tier? Many people exclaimed when they saw the madness of Dishi. Wenchen Nine people stepping on the sacred battle platform at the same time indicated that all nine will fight directly against each other in turns. You have to be careful, these people are all monsters of the Heavenly Dipper realm. Lin Shuai warned. Ken Winchen's gaze stiffened, nine people fighting in a round robin format? And for these opponents, there wasn't a single one which Ken Winchen could say with confidence he would definitely be able to win against. Each one of them all possessed torrential combat strength, unfathomably powerful. Dishi's words instantly caused an uproar throughout the spectators. Did the other eight dare to accept? Did Ken Winchen dare to accept? Ken Winchen. At this moment, Dishi spoke again, his gaze directed at Ken Winchen. Ken Winchen inclined his head, matching his gaze only to hear Dishi coldly continuing, This battle between us nine, let's set a rule for the two of us. Between you and me, if you don't die, I will not get down from the sacred battle platform. And similarly, if I don't die, you cannot get down the platform as well. The hearts of the spectators pounded violently. This, was the rule of a life and death battle. Only with one of them dead would the other be able to concede if they found themselves unable to match up against the other opponents. Do you dare? Dishi roared, his killing intent gushing out in waves. 
His great goal today was to slay the top ranker of the immortal martial realm and stand at the very peak of Heavenly Dipper. Chapter 622, Fighting Rishi Translator, Lord Blue Fire Editor, Dash Right now, Rishi was brimming with immense confidence, as though Keen Wenshin was already prey in his eyes, and would undoubtedly die to him. Wenshin, be cautious. This time the person you wanted to fight against is merely Dishi alone. Don't accept the group battle. Duan Han transmitted his voice over to Ken Wenshin. Such a round-robin battle was simply too dangerous. Of the nine, other than five of the era suppressing geniuses, there were three others who had comprehended the true intent of their mandates, belonging to the supreme tier of heavenly Dipper sovereigns. Ken Wenshin's talent was redoubtable, but after all, he had cultivated for too short a period of time. The gazes of everyone landed onto Ken Wenshin. They were all very clear on how great the pressure this number one ranker of the immortal martial realm was currently facing. He just needed to endure for one or two more years, breaking through to the eighth or even maybe the ninth level of Heavenly Dipper and at that time, it would be much easier for him when facing such a situation. After all, his cultivation base was simply too shallow. If it was Gulufling that was here instead, Gulufling would stand a better chance. Wenshin From the side of the human emperor, Yi Ling Shuang worriedly transmitted her voice to Mo Qingzheng's hands were tightly clenched as perspiration could be seen on her palms. Her beautiful face was tinged with worry, yet she didn't say anything. She didn't wish to add to the pressure Ken Wenshin was feeling. Moon was staring over at him as well. She didn't expect Li Shi would be so brazen. Despite Ken Wenshin's magnificence being unmatched through the generations, if he accepted the battle, he would face a situation where he might very well die. What would Ken Wenshin choose? Ken Wenshin's long hair danced about in the wind, his fiendishly handsome eyes stared straight at Li Shi. His sharp gaze was even sharper compared to the edge of blades. He was the one that challenged Li Shi. If his strength failed to match up to Di Shi, he would die. If his strength was stronger than Di Shi, Di Shi wouldn't be able to retreat as well in front of all these people. This battle was also a battle of their courage and conviction. The first time we met, you were our against knew no bounds. I killed your brother in front of you. The second time we met, was inside the immortal martial realm on the path of monuments. You were still as arrogant as before, yet when we fought, you were ousted by me and was kicked out of the top 10 rankers. This is the third time we meet, yet you are still so arrogant and just as foolish as ever. In that case, let today be the date of your death. Ken Wenshin stared at Di Shi as he icily replied, I will accept your proposition. Ken Wenshin's words instantly caused an uproar among the spectators. He actually accepted it. And not only that, from the words he had spoken, Di Shi was truly pathetic. No wonder he hated Ken Wenshin so much. Him being ranked outside of the top 10 was actually because of Ken Wenshin and in that case, his vaunted arrogance didn't have any substance to it. After all, in their earlier two meetings, Li Shi was the one that suffered, Ken Wenshin had taught him a bloody lesson. The two times earlier weren't true combat. Today, I shall make you regret everything you have done in the past, Di Shi icily retorted. After which, he turned his gaze onto the other seven, if any of you don't dare to battle, you can retreat now. If no one retreats, it means that all of you agree to rules of this battle. The seven other experts were at the side of the sacred battle platform. Since they already stepped out, how could they retreat now? Since no one wants to retreat, other than my battle with Ken Wenshin which is a life and death battle, the others can voluntarily concede if they want to. We will refrain from using divine weapons. How about it? Di Shi asked again. I have no problems. But between myself and Ken Wenshin, we will have another agreement. Let our rules be the same as what you said earlier, a life and death battle. Lu Lan faintly spoke, causing everyone to be startled. Was Lu Lan here because he wanted to kill Ken Wenshin? Back then in ancient Yi. It was rumored that Ken Wenshin and Yi Kini Un had formed an irreconcilable grudge with the Violet Thunder sect. It seemed Lu Lan was arranged by them to be here to kill Ken Wenshin. Lu Lan, how despicable. You are someone of the same generation as me, yet your face is thick enough to request of a life and death battle with my junior brother? 
Lin Shuai sarcastically commented. If he doesn't dare to, he can very well reject it. Lu Lin uncaringly replied. I accept. Qian Wenchen's voice was low, yet the words he had spoken caused the hearts of the spectators to pound violently. The pressure of this group battle was almost at an unimaginable high for Qian Wenchen. Since everyone has no disagreements, please get on the sacred battle platform, Di Shi emotionlessly spoke. In the depths of his eyes, one could see a cold light flickering within as he stared at the rest. There were a total of nine participants. Five era suppressing geniuses, Di Shi, Li Yan, Qi Lian, Fan Miu, and Dong Ayu Hanjian. Three supreme tier heavenly dipper sovereigns, Lu Lan of the Violet Thunder Sect, Crown Prince of Radiant Gold Ancient Country, as well as the Heaven Chosen of the War Country who was also a disciple of the Heaven Cleaving Manor, Wu Tang. Such a terrifying group of people stood atop the sacred battle platform at the same time. The hearts of the crowd trembled with anticipation. Although the sacred battle platform was the most illustrious battle arena in the royal sacred region, it was very rare for such a terrifying group of people to be seen on it. Right now, this group of combatants could all be said to already be considered the highest tier in the Heavenly Dipper realm. One would be hard pressed to find a group to surpass them. In the sacred battle platform, a total of nine stone platforms manifested below the nine participants, linking the space within them. From afar, the spectators noticed that the circumference of the platform widened and it was also powerful enough to withstand attacks from celestial phenomenon ascendants. Who should fight first? A voice rang out. The nine stone platforms all shimmered with a brilliant light, enveloping all nine participants in a screen of light. Me. I want to fight Ken Wenchen, Di Shi's eyes contained an incomparable loftiness. His terrifying aura at the eighth level of Heavenly Dipper gushed out, filled with a fearsome balefulness as a scary phantom of a primordial azure rock manifested behind him. His entire being was radiating a demonic azure light, the sharpness of his eyes was so intense that it seemed he could kill with a single stare. The nine stone platforms started spinning. The other seven platforms were moved away from the center, leaving only the stone platforms of Ishi and Ken Wenshin behind. Is the top ranker of the immortal martial realm finally facing off against one of the eight terror suppressing geniuses? The gazes of the spectators landed on the two of them. Ishi stepped out, lunging forth like a primordial bird of prey. Ken Wenshin's eyes turned incomparably fiend like. The power of his bloodline erupted out as he activated the Fiend Art transformation. The phantom of a resplendent golden rock manifested behind his back, the two of them confronting each other as their tyrannical ores collided in midair unceasingly, causing thunderous booming sounds to ring out. BZZ. The raging wind seemed as though it wanted to tear apart the space. Dishi rushed towards Ken Wenshin, blasting out with his palms. Instantly. A gigantic bird manifestation shot out, ripping its way towards Ken Wenchen. This casual strike by Dishi already contained the strength exhibited by an ordinary ninth level Heavenly Dipper Sovereign. Upon seeing the baleful manifestation shooting straight for him, Ken Wenchen similarly pushed forth with his palm. The entire space trembled violently, yet Dishi took this chance to further close in the distance, appearing before him. The terrifying azure rock behind him let out an incomparably sharp screeching sound as several ferocious-looking bird of prey erupted into being, wanting to tear the void apart. Boom! Ken Wenchen stepped out, his star-seizing palm imprint sweeping over everything as a resplendent light enveloped his body. Dishi's speed was blindingly fast, circling around Ken Wenchen at extreme speeds. However, the golden light radiating from Ken Wenchen blasted outwards, illuminating the sky. With a roar of rage, he dashed out, breaking through the encirclement with a speed not a whit inferior to Dishi's. The manifestations of Dishi slam relentlessly into the palm imprints unleashed by Ken Wenshin as thunderous sounds rocked the entire arena, causing reverberations throughout the area. Such a battle deeply shocked all the spectators, especially those who weren't at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper. They realized that if they were the one facing attacks of such magnitude, they couldn't even block a single strike. Even the attacks of ordinary ninth level Heavenly Dipper Sovereign would be easily shredded apart. The grand battle between them shook even the heavens. After which, 
the crowd discovered there were numerous incarnations appearing on the battle platform. Regardless of Dishi or Ken Winshin, it seemed that both of them cultivated a similar technique, enabling them to manifest incarnations of themselves to aid in their attack. For those who were more meticulous, they discovered that the number of Ken Winshin's incarnations exceeded that of Dishi. Although this was simply a small detail, it was sufficient to cause the hearts of many to shiver. This indicated that Ken Winshin's talent was stronger compared to Dishi. Boom! Another violent collision resounded, the two of them lengthened the distance between each other as the arena returned to its original calm. The incarnations merged back into one, their true bodies. Dishi floated in the air, staring at Ken Winshin as he icily commented, I was merely testing you with that attack. If your strength is only at this level, just die then. After speaking, a terrifying glow circulated around Dishi's body as streams of blood-colored light towered up into the sky. His astral soul and astral nova in the form of an azure rock rumbled the void, appearing behind him. The light of that faint image seemed to contain life in them, akin to a true ancient primordial azure great rock. BZC A super-strong destructive energy erupted forth from Dishi. In this instant, Dishi became even more dangerous compared to before. Mandate of Demon at the Perfection Boundary, Mandate of Corrosion at the Perfection Boundary. There also seemed to be a kind of strengthening effect mandate, Ken Winshin surveyed Dishi. In the midst of that azure light, he could sense a terrifying corrosion energy. Was this Dishi's strongest state? He should still be hiding one more of his mandate. After that strengthening, Dishi truly resembled an ancient primordial bird of prey. His entire body transformed into a stream of light and rushed out, with even quicker speed than before. Both his arms trembled, and instantly, the great wings of the azure rock behind him shone with an intense light. Boom! 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 Multiple beams of azure light zoomed towards Ken Winchen. Ken Winchen retreated backwards yet somehow, he discovered that his movements were restricted, he couldn't move at all. There was a formless energy locking him down. This, should be a type of restrictive mandate. Or maybe, this was the mandate Li Shi was keeping hidden. In the immortal martial realm, Li Shi's capabilities were restricted, he couldn't explode forth with his true strength. But now, he could finally unleash all of his abilities. Wenshin. The countenances of those who were concerned about Ken Wenshin all drastically changed. They watched as the terrifying ferocious manifestations of birds that were akin to beams of light shot right towards him while his movements were being locked. Each and every one of the eight terrorist suppressing geniuses all had their own unique abilities. Dishi naturally was no exception. Seems like in terms of combat prowess, Dishi has an advantage. Could this recent character that rose up live to walk away today? Many were silently speculating. If Ken Winchin were to survive, it meant that Dishi must die. Right now, resplendent astral light circulated around Ken Winchin as his physique gradually grew larger. The light emanating from him caused the hearts of the spectators to shiver. His long hair turned a completely inky black, even the clothes he wore seemed to be dyed by that inky blackness. Right now, he completely resembled a descendant from one of those ancient primordial demons that ruled unchallenged in their era. A multitude of incarnations burst into the being, superimposed together as they erupted forth with an attack at the same time. The sky shook, the earth trembled. Ken Winchin moved forward instead of retreating, his strength causing the void to rumble. I really wanted to see how would you take my life. Ken Winchin's physique was now several times larger than Vichy. He rushed forwards, slamming forth violently with his palms, aiming at that ferocious ancient primordial azure rock. Chapter 623, Extreme Combat Strength Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash Right now, Ken Winshin's physique was incomparably huge, akin to the body of a fiend His palms shimmered with a torrential astral light, suppressing both heaven and earth. Dishi and that manifestation of the gigantic azure rock behind him attacked at the same moment, causing resplendent lights of pure destruction to engulf the sky. In fact, in the midst of their battle, faint shadowy heavenly constellations actually appeared, causing the spectators to all be wholly taken aback. 
the Battle of Two Heavenly Dipper Sovereigns actually formed a faint manifestation of heavenly constellations. Although this wasn't a true constellation, it still caused the hearts of those who saw it to shiver. Bind. She roared, a boundless azure light shot forth from the azure rock as several silhouettes of demonic birds suddenly appeared beside Ken Winshin, grabbing hold of him. What power is that? The hearts of the spectators pounded violently. Each ferocious bird of prey seemed to burst out of the void, locking down Ken Winshin. The azure rock roared in a savage manner, the light glinting in its eyes filled the hearts of people with terror. You can't escape death even if you want to. Dishi icily roared, seemingly transforming into something resembling a demonic overlord, as he advanced towards Ken Winshin. For an air-suppressing genius, they stood at the foremost of the era in this incomparably vast royal sacred region. How could they be someone ordinary? They simply weren't something normal geniuses could be compared to. Although his temperament was insufferably arrogant, his combat prowess was redoubtable. If not, he wouldn't have been awarded the title era suppressing genius. Truly powerful, the spectators all sighed in their hearts, this was the reason why the eight of them became known as the era suppressing geniuses. Before this, because Dishu was ousted from the top ten in the Immortal Martial Realm rankings, there were some that started to doubt him, saying that he wasn't worthy of the title. However, the vast majority understood that even though he was ranked number 11 in the Immortal Martial Realm, Dishu was still Dishu, as powerful as before. Are you even worthy? Ken Winchin stared at Dishu. Abruptly. A formless sword might envelop this entire space as a third eye opened in the center of his brows. Even his great dream astral soul appeared behind his back. Stomping down, the heaven and earth cried out as the formless sword might condensed into true substance, penetrating past the body of Ishii. At this instant, Ishii groaned in misery, his flight upwards towards Ken Winshin abruptly slowed down. Boom! An unparalleled burst of strength gushed forth. Despite the powerful and terrifying binding effect on him, Ken Winshin forcibly stomped down once more. At this moment, Daishi felt as though he was mired in an illusion. He was no longer on the sacred battle platform, but was in a separate dimension instead. Ken Winshin brought him to this dimension, this was his dreamscape. Dreamscape. Daishi turned ashen as he stared at that great dream astral soul. Although he knew this was a dreamscape. He discovered that despite his powerful strength of will, he was still unable to extricate himself from this dream Keen Winshin created for him. I won't be fooled. Dishi howled in madness. The azure rock roared, intensifying the binding effect on Ken Winshin. His bloodline thrummed even more violently, the power from the blood of an ancient primordial azure rock granted him a unique strength. I don't need to fool you. This is my dream. A dream that will reap your life away. Enjoy this, Ken Winshin's voice sounded out as he stomped down again. Dishi discovered several gigantic silhouettes appearing beside him. These were monsters formed from the stuff of nightmares, sealing his path away. They each wielded a large devilish halberd in their hands as they all pierced out at the same instant towards Dishi. All of these are mere illusions. Dishi's eyes flickered with an incomparable sharpness. Poochie. A crisp sound rang out as the halberds pieced into Dishi's body. Ugh! A violent cry wrecked with pain echoed out, Dishi's countenance instantly paled as his entire body trembled, in the throes of excruciating pain. Boom! Ken Winchin stomped again as a formless sword slashed towards Dishi, causing Dishi to groan in misery as blood leaked from the corners of his lips. Such a scene caused all the hearts of the spectators to be filled extreme bewilderment. What happened to Dishi? They couldn't see the dreamscape Ken Winchin created. They only saw Dishi's body trembling violently of its own accord before he coughed out blood. They were unable to feel the pain Dishi felt, they didn't understand how real and how terrifying this dreamscape really was. Dream first, he has entered a dreamscape. Someone exclaimed in wonder. The faces of those from the Supreme D clan all drastically changed. Although Dishi knew that he was in a dream, he was still stuck inside it. The dreamscape Ken Winchin created was simply too tyrannical. Only Ken Winchin understood that the dream he created wasn't powerful enough to be termed as tyrannical. Back then, the lifetime he had experienced in the royal tomb of Grand Shia, 
that life which filled him with endless despair, that was what tyrannical truly meant. This art was a technique he learned from the great dream immortal art which he obtained from the royal tomb of Grand Shia. In this dreamscape, he could make one feel agony, make one feel despair. Dishi, your death date has arrived, Ken Wenshin coldly spoke. His words causing the countenance of Dishi to turn incredibly unsightly. His death date? The numerous devilish halberds stirred in his flesh, causing him to feel an agony even worse than death. Ken Wenshin is similarly so powerful as well. The spectators were all shocked. In this grand battle of nine experts, each of them all possessed unimaginably powerful trump cards. The intensity of their battles had far surpassed the scale of their imaginations. Ken Wenchen walked towards Di Shi, his palm glowing with terrifying runic lights. Astral light flashed as a fierce and destructive power drifted over. Abruptly, his silhouette flickered as he slammed a palm towards the forehead of Ishi. In that instant, a wave of star-seizing palm imprints erupted forth, containing enough might to bury everything in this space. Go to hell! Ishi suddenly inclined his head, his eyes filled with an incomparable resolution. A blinding azure light exploded out from him as countless birds of prey directly bombarded into Ken Wenshin, their destructive talons ravaging Ken Wenshin's body. Die now! Dishi roared, the dreamscape broke and this sudden change caused everyone spectating to be thunderstruck with shock. Impudent! The human emperor Yi Kenny unstepped out as he hollered in rage. Resplendent light shone from him as he stated, Dishi borrowed the power of an external item, why did the administrator of the sacred battle platform not kill him immediately? That isn't an external item, it had already merged with Dishi as one. And even if that was an external item, it's not a divine weapon. An expert from the Supreme D clan smugly replied. His words causing the hearts of the crowd to pound violently. Only now did they understand that Dishi depended on an item for that final burst of strength which broke him out of a dreamscape. No wonder he was so confident, so it turned out that it was true he had become stronger. Those of the D clan said that this item had already fused with Dishi. But what exactly was it? Was Ken Wenchen going to die here? Mo Qingcheng's hands were tightly clenched as her countenance paled. The countenances of those from the Battle Sword sect also turned incredibly unsightly. It wasn't so easy for a character like Ken Wenchen to appear in their Battle Sword sect. How could they be willing to see him die in battle in such a manner? The hearts of everyone were tightly clenched, the power which Di Shi erupted with should have already reached the level of one at the supreme tier. No wonder he dared to challenge every Heavenly Dipper Sovereign in the Royal Sacred Region, aiming for the title of Unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. At this moment, on the sacred battle platform, Ken Wenshin executed the incarnation burst technique as resplendent runic light enveloped his body. He howled in rage as an overwhelming torrential might gushed out, negating the force Di Shi summoned. The runes then transformed into a singular gargantuan palm imprint blotting out the skies as it swept forth, destroying space, forcing the two of them apart. Chi. Ken Wenshin and Di Shi both coughed out blood. Ken Wenchen's countenance was currently incredibly unsightly to behold. His aura wavered, he was grievously injured. He looked at Di Shi as he stated, that power didn't belong to you. It has already fused with me completely. It's now a strength that belongs to me. Di Shi's gaze contained an incomparable balefulness as he stared back at Ken Wenchen. Also, this doesn't violate the rules, it isn't a divine weapon. And let me remind you Ken Wenchen. On this platform if I don't die, you cannot concede and get off it. You are dead for sure, nobody can stop me. Does the rules allow that? Ken Wenchen stared at the administrator. Yes, a voice replied. Seeing that Ken Wenchen still didn't die despite of that, the hearts of everyone trembled. Earlier, the force Ken Wenchen unleashed at that last moment was actually comparable to that ultimate strike of the Shi. In that case, Medicinal pills are also allowed since they aren't divine weapons. Ken Wenchen softly spoke as he took out several bottles of pills, causing the spectators to stare at him dumbfoundedly. Ken Wenchen chose a bottle and gulped down several medicinal pills in it. Very quickly, his aura started to surge once more, recovering to his peak. After that, under the thunderstruck gaze of the crowd, 
Ken Winchin chose another bottle and swallowed a few pills as his injuries began to recover at a blinding speed. Having a fifth-ranked alchemist as a girlfriend is simply too wonderful. The crowd perspired. Only now did they remember that the Holy Maiden of the Medicine Sovereign Valley was a fifth-ranked alchemist. And considering her relationship with Ken Winchin, how could she not give him valuable medicinal pills? In any case, if one couldn't finish Ken Winchin off in one shot, he could still recover even if he suffered the most grievous of injuries. However, the other participants didn't have such an advantage. This fight has not ended yet. The power D she exploded forth with earlier was simply too terrifying. He said that an item fused with him, but what exactly was it? It seemed to be the essence of a true ancient primordial rock. The hearts of the crowd shivered. It seemed that Ken Winshin was still in danger. Since this battle hasn't concluded and you have recovered to the peak through the aid of the medicinal pills, let me be the one to fight against you in the next battle. At this moment, Lu Lan stared at Ken Winshin, his countenance ice cold. Di Shi didn't say anything, he was similarly injured and needed a period of time to recuperate. Earlier, he too felt that at that final instant, Ken Winchin also exploded forth with a strength far stronger compared to his usual might. Ken Winchin had his own trump cards and let alone now that Ken Winchin's condition was restored to the peak, he might as well take the chance to recover first before he kill Ken Winchin. Oh? Taking turns to fight me? Wanting to be unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper? Just as well, I want to find out how strong exactly someone at the Supreme Tier is. Ken Winchin stared straight at Lu Lan. The battle intent radiating from his eyes towered at the heavens, showing no fear at all. Since he dared to accept the battle today, he clearly wanted to feel how strong the combat prowess of these individuals were. Only under such a pressure would he be able to force himself to the limits, improving from there. Only facing those who had comprehended a true intent on the sacred battle platform would be able to make him improve further. The stone platforms rotated. Dishi's platform moved away from the center while Lu Lan's moved up, facing directly against Ken Winchin. This is a battle fanatic, earlier when I saw him, he exuded a sunshine demeanor with a quiet temperament. Who would have imagined he would be this fierce when it comes to combat? No wonder he has such attainments, where exactly do the limits of this top ranker of the immortal martial realm lay? Many silently speculated in their hearts. At this moment, Lu Lan advanced towards Ken Winchin and instantly, Ken Winchin felt a wave of apocalyptic might enveloping this entire space, it even felt like his body was about to explode. Lightning containing a domineering killing intent blasted down repeatedly, unceasingly slamming into his body with devastating might. However, Ken Winchin was akin to a war divinity fiend good, his immense body standing upright in the middle of heaven and earth, unshakable and immovable. Chapter 624, Undefeatable Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash Right now, Ken Winchin appeared to be calmly standing there, but his heart was filled with boundless shock. That lightning bolt repeatedly slammed into his body, and the power of destruction and that terrifying electric web of paralysis around him were all derived from the mandate of lightning. Once one comprehended a true intent, their attacks would contain the entirety of their insights in their mandate. It was also unknown how much their attacks would be enhanced. Lu Lan just casually stood there, yet the pressure Ken Winchin was feeling now was already so overwhelming. If Ken Winchin was an ordinary 7th level Heavenly Dipper Sovereign, Lu Lan would already have effortlessly killed him with just this casual attack. At this moment, Ken Winchin only saw Lu Lan's hands shimmering with a terrifying purple light as lightning shrouded his person. The chaotic streams of lightning danced wildly in the air, causing thunderous rumbling sounds to echo incessantly. An extremely terrifying wave of destruction spiraled all about with Lu Lan right at the center of it. Right now, anything within a certain radius was obliterated. He who had comprehended the true intent of lightning didn't even need to train his defense. The lightning force field shrouding his body could simply act as a replacement for it. Boom! Lu Lan stepped out, resembling a lightning divinity as he walked towards Ken Winchin. Those violent pupils of his contained a fearsome killing intent. His palms blasted out as the force field around him expanded as well. 
Enormous lightning palm imprints slammed towards Ken Winchin's immense physique as they sparkled resplendently, their currents forming an electric web that directly bound Ken Winchin within the light. Ken Winchin could only wait to be destroyed. Is this the power of a true intent? There's even a restrictive effect within the true intent of the mandate of lightning? The spectators all stared at the battle platform with widened eyes. The magnitude of this fight had already exceeded their expectations. Ken Winchin, whose current body resembled a fiend stepped out as well. His entire body glimmered with a brilliant glow, akin to an armor formed of astral light. He lifted his palms and slammed outwards. The star-seizing palm imprint he unleashed contained a torrential, overwhelming might, slamming directly against that lightning palm imprints issued by Lu Lan. Crackling sounds rang out as Ken Winchin's palm imprints shattered under the might of the blows augmented by the true intent of lightning. The mandate of lightning had already contained a powerful lacerating component in its attacks. The effect was only magnified after one comprehended the true intent. Although the force Ken Winchin could generate now was pretty scary, how could Lu Lan's attacks be any weaker than his? Lu Lan's cultivation base was at the peak of Heavenly Dipper, as well as having comprehended the true intent of the Mandate of Lightning. He was a supreme expert of the Violet Thunder sect. Ken Winchin's eyes flickered with a terrifying glow. He transformed into thousands of incarnations that slammed out together, the force generated engulfing everything shattering the lightning palm imprints. However, by the time Ken Winchin had broken through that earlier attack, Lu Lan already appeared above Ken Winchin. The lightning force from his body congregated above him, forming a terrifying sword of light that slashed down with indomitable might. The light radiating forth was so blinding that the eyes of the spectators couldn't even open. This sword of light was akin to a bolt of lightning, arcing across the heavens. The speed with which it moved was so quick that people couldn't even respond to it. Boom! Astral light flooded the area, Ken Winchin executed stellar transposition as his body turned into shadowy afterimages. Yet that sword of light brought with it a current of warmth, matching Ken Winchin's speed as it slashed down right in front of Ken Winchin. That scorching temperature tore his skin apart, leaving a long and deep-looking wound. The power unleashed by the true intent of a mandate could completely break his defense apart and directly injure him. Is this the supreme tier? The difference in the strength of one who has comprehended a true intent and one that has not is simply too vast, Ken Winchin mused. That sword of light earlier could have easily slashed apart his defense, it wasn't even difficult for it to cut him and wane. Lu Lan didn't give Ken Winchin a chance to recover. He was also proficient in the Mandate of Wind, hence his speed was as fast as lightning. Yet another sword of light slashed out towards Ken Winchin, tearing through the skies. Ken Winchin explosively retreated once again, and as an explosive sound thundered out, the after-effects of the impact left a few wounds on his body. Do you think it would help if you evaded? Lu Lan stood in the air, staring at Ken Winchin. Right now, the lightning energy crackling around him grew even stronger, so powerful that it felt as though it could destroy anything. Ken Winchin split into many incarnations once more, each of them emanating an intense sword might. Ken Winchin's true body was in the center of this storm of sword might. In the immortal martial realm, there was one stone monument that emanated sword energy, and that was what Ken Winchin had comprehended. He stood there and although there were no swords nearby in the surroundings, the area around him felt saturated with an extremely strong killing intent born from sword might. Boom! All the incarnations stepped forth simultaneously. At that instant, streams of runic outlines formed, manifesting into countless resplendent sword-type inscriptions. MHM? Lu Lan frowned, these sword inscriptions were akin to divine weapons with all of them containing absolutely terrifying destructive energy. These inscriptions were all peak tier 4th rank divine inscriptions, refined by the spirit refinement method and contained a super strong destructive energy within. Earlier that overwhelming attack that had exploded with at the last instant when he had fought against Vishu was precisely due to him combusting these divine inscriptions, leading to both parties being injured. Lu Lan's attack was very strong, and if he wanted to kill him, Ken Winchin had to first negate the force of his attacks before breaking through his defense. Ken Winchin advanced again, 
causing the expression on Lu Lan's face to change. He felt the sword intent was truly about to penetrate him, aiming for his his heart. That sword intent seemed omnipresent. The numerous incarnations abruptly disappeared since such a technique couldn't be sustained for long. However to Ken Wenshin, it was already sufficient. Countless sword inscriptions appeared in the air, and that destructive energy when combined with the sword intent generated by Ken Wenshin, caused everyone's hearts to palpitate. Ken Wenshin took his third step forward. When his step landed on the ground, Lu Lan groaned, he was suddenly seized by a strong sense of surrealism. It felt as though Ken Wenshin borrowed the might of a mystical ability to link himself with him. It felt as though in this space, Ken Wenshin was the master and every step Ken Wenshin stepped out felt akin to sharp swords piercing into his heart. Ken Wenshin had this feeling as well. This, was the true essence of the seven annihilation sword play he learned from the sword forest back in the royal tomb of Grand Shia. When one was powerful enough, even blades of leaves or falling petals could be transformed into swords to kill others. A truly strong sword cultivator can control the formless sword chi and transform it into a corporeal sword. Right now, Ken Wenshin's perception was unleashed to its maximum. And just like what he had comprehended, as long as the sword was in his heart, every single thing in this world could become swords that he could control. Ken Wenshin suddenly realized that Lu Lang might have comprehended the true intent of lightning, yet his mandate of sword was still merely at the perfection boundary. In fact, his mastery of mandate of sword was inferior when compared to Ken Wenshin's. Maybe because the mandate of lightning was what Lu Lan wanted to pursue. If Lu Lan also gained comprehension of the true intent of sword, how powerful would that sword of light he executed be earlier? It should be so domineering that Ken Wenshin wouldn't even have a chance to evade. Lu Lan also sensed danger. He unleashed an attack towards Ken Wenshin once again as an incomparably huge sword formed of lightning and thunder arced through the skies. However, Ken Wenshin merely flicked his fingers outwards, his actions instantly causing the sword inscriptions to hum madly, all of them erupting forth and colliding with that gigantic sword using the power gained from their self-destruction to negate Lu Lan's attack. Ken Wenshin continued stepping out, causing Lu Lan to groan in misery as his heartbeat quickened. Although he was someone that had comprehended a true intent in his mandates, he didn't know how to resolve the situation when faced with such an attack. BZZ Lu Lan rushed forward, his astral nova appearing as the faint silhouette of a lightning divinity appeared behind his back. The wildly dancing arcs of lightning contained a tyrannical might enough to bury everything. He wanted to fight in close combat with Ken Wenshin. Ken Wenshin's physique was incomparably immense. He once again executed the incarnation burst technique as several incarnations with the body of a fiend had appeared in the air. Together as one, they slammed at a tidal wave of palm imprints imbued with the power of void vibration from his mandate of force, aiming straight at Lu Lan. Lu Lan's movement was forcibly halted, and he howled in rage as the lightning around him all condensed into the shape of swords. Ken Wenshin didn't want to give him any chance to react, he instantly sent forth gargantuan palm strikes akin to mountain peaks all slamming into Lu Lan. Thunderous explosions continued unceasingly, and although the force of these attacks were overwhelming, they couldn't break through the force field of lightning which also acted as Lu Lan's defense upon him comprehending the true intent of mandate of lightning. Ken Wenshin was unperturbed, he took yet another step forward as his sword intent raged on. When the seventh step landed, Lu Lan felt as though there were ten thousand swords piercing into his heart, causing blood to leak from his lips. Lu Lan had stepped into the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper, comprehending a true intent. However, his arsenal of techniques couldn't be compared to Rishi, who was one of the eight era-suppressing geniuses. This was the difference between a genius and an era-suppressing genius. If Rishi had also comprehended a true intent and his cultivation base were at the level of Lu Lan, Ken Wenshin would have been killed long ago. But despite this, although Ken Wenshin could injure his opponent, he had no way to kill Lu Lan at all. Ken Wenshin understood that he was still lacking. He had to take that step forward, comprehending a true intent before he could kill Lu Lan. Are they evenly matched? Ken Wenshin could actually injure Lu Lan. The spectators all exclaimed in wonder. 
the two of them continued their devastating battle and even more injuries appeared on both their bodies, yet neither was strong enough to really kill the other. At the end, they could only halt the battle. In fact, Ken Winshin was still the one with a weaker position. The only advantages he had was that he was well versed in a multitude of techniques and all of the techniques he used were of the higher level compared to Lu Lan. His cultivation base was obviously two levels lower, yet despite the high amount of consumption, he could still hold his own against Lu Lan. This truly made all the spectators taken aback. Ken Winchin understood that without his four yuan fus, it was completely impossible for him to afford such a high expenditure of astral energy and fight a prolonged battle with Lu Lan. I'm still not strong enough, this grand battle is a rare opportunity for me. I have to get stronger. Ken Winchin sat on his platform and closed his eyes, silently pondering over the experience he gained when fighting against Lu Lan earlier. The other eight opponents on this battlefield were all opponents whose combat prowesses were at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. Right now, this was an extremely rare opportunity for them to temper themselves. Naturally, it was important to seize it. Right now, the killing gaze of Li Shi was staring right at him, yet Ken Wenshin seemed to be totally oblivious to it. With so many pills given to him by Mo Qingchen, as long as he didn't die, he would be able to continue battling all the way to the end. The top ranker of the immortal martial realm Ken Wenshin, if he can survive the grand battle today, he would definitely create a brand new era. Many sighed in their hearts. To be able to fight against Vichy and Lulan at the seventh level of Heavenly Dipper was simply a completely inconceivable matter. Next, the Crown Prince of Radiant Girl challenged Li Tian. Even as one of the eight terror suppressing geniuses, Li Yan actually felt pressured. Not only was the strength of his opponent extraordinary, the crown prince had also comprehended the true intent of the Mandate of Gold. Li Yan himself was someone who pursued the peak of the Mandate of Gold and in this regard, he was sorely suppressed by his opponent. Yet even so, the crown prince had no way to defeat Li Yan. Their battle was eventually ruled a draw as both sides halted. After that, Ken Wenshin actually challenged the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold on his own accord. Their battle too, shook the heaven and earth and even though it was obvious Ken Wenshin's strength was a shade inferior, the Crown Prince also wasn't strong enough to utterly crush and kill him. What is he planning to do? Is he trying to use this opportunity to raise his own combat prowess? Some in the crowd seemed to have an inkling of what Ken Wenshin was thinking their hearts pounding even more intensely from the shock they felt upon this realization. Chapter 625, Epiphany Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash On the sacred battle platform, the battles between the combatants continued without pausing. Unknowingly, night had already descended. Today, Ken Wenshin had experienced a total of three battles. Against Vichy, Lu Lan, and the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold. In all these three battles, he was the one at a disadvantage, yet he couldn't be completely defeated. After that, Li Shi tried several times to challenge him, but Ken Wenshin rejected all his attempts. The reason he could reject was because this was a grand battle between nine participants, with the rules being in a round-robin fashion. If every member of the nine had fought before, he would have no choice but to accept the challenge. But as long as there was one combatant who hadn't fought yet, he had the right to temporarily reject the challenges. The reason why Ken Winchin didn't accept was because he was still in contemplation. With the experience gained from the earlier three battles, he had sensed for himself the true intent of the Mandate of Lightning from Lu Lan, and the true intent from the Mandate of Gold from the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold. Today, Li Yan fought against Dong Ayu Hanjian. Li Yan possessed the advantage, but he had no way to force Dong Ayu Hanjian to concede. The disparity between their strength wasn't that great. Fan Miu fought against the Chosen of War Country, Wu Tang. Initially, all the spectators thought that Fan Miu, who was at the ninth level of Heavenly Dipper, would definitely have a combat prowess above Wu Tang. Yet to their surprise, they discovered that Wu Tang wasn't in any way inferior to her at all. Not only that, with his wide strides and wild attacking method of using the Great Axe, Fan Miu even seemed to be the one suppressed. This made people sigh in amazement. 
this disciple of the heaven cleaving manner as well as chosen of the war country was simply so strong that it was unfathomable, he had totally exceeded the imagination of the spectators. Fan Miu also exchanged blows against the crown prince of radiant gold and Lu Lan. This caused people to understand that Fan Miu was infinitesimally close to comprehending the true intent of her mandates. She was the same as Ken Wenshin, borrowing this opportunity to break through and grow stronger. After a day, all nine of the combatants were still on the sacred battle platform. Although it was clear that there were differences in the tiers of their strength, nobody was overwhelming enough to force the others to concede yet. Rest for a night, the battle shall continue the moment the sun rises in the morning tomorrow, a voice echoed out. However, the entire sacred battle platform was still locked down, nobody could exit from there. The spectators all relaxed slightly, yet they found it hard to regain their calm. The battles earlier were all simply too awesome, and they were so shocked and surprised that many of them were still feeling numb. Father, what's your perspective on this battle? Yi Ling Shuang stood at the side of human emperor Yi Qinian and asked. Based on Yi Qinian's judgment, he should be able to see more clearly compared to her. All nine of them have their own thoughts and intentions. Many of them obviously could force their opponents to concede, yet they chose not to do so. This is especially so for Wu Tang and Fan Miu, they aren't simple at all, they were never even close to unleashing their full power. After all, Fan Miu is of the eight terrace suppressing geniuses and has a cultivation base at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. I don't believe she hasn't even comprehended a single true intent of her mandates yet. And as for Wu Tang, he's far more formidable than what was rumored, Yi Qini unexplained, causing the beautiful eyes of Yi Ling Shuang to stiffen. Father are you saying that Fan Miu intentionally held back? But why would she do such a thing? Even for Fan Miu, in normal times, how difficult must it be for someone at her level to find eight other opponents of this caliber? From what I see, Fan Miu might have already comprehended a mandate's true intent, but there's still room for her to improve. Hence, she wants to use this opportunity to perfect her control. If I were the one facing such rare opponents, I would definitely want to fight more than a few rounds, Yi Qini unspoke. In that case, for Wenshin, Yi Ling Shuang was more than a little worried. Honestly, Wenshin is one of the weaker combatants up there. After all, he has a big disadvantage considering the level of his cultivation base. What's fortunate is that he has a multitude of techniques to depend on, and if we are talking about overall combat strength, he might even be above Qi Lian, Dong Ayu Hanjiang, and Li Tian. However, Di Shi also possesses many powerful techniques, and Lu Lan, who has comprehended the true intent of lightning, is a very hard opponent to deal with. But we don't need to worry about that too much. Those two are the ones who really want to kill Wenshin, but it isn't going to be so easy for them. And as for Fan Miu and Wu Tang, they are the only ones truly with the capabilities to pose a threat to Wenshin, yet they have no killing intent towards him, Yi Qini unanalyzed, as Yi Ling Shuang nodded her head quietly. The spectators were all quietly discussing and analyzing the grand battle. Who among the nine of these characters would truly be able to earn the name of Unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper? Dash. The next morning, Dong Ayu Hanjiang was the first to step out. His gaze was riveted on to Wu Tang of War Country as he spoke, Wu Tang, how about the two of us fight for this round? Wu Tang opened his eyes as he calmly replied, You are not strong enough to be my opponent. His tone was calm. Yet that calmness contained an absolute self-confidence that made Dong Ayu Hanjiang feel humiliated. His countenance turned unsightly as he stared at Wu Tang, I really want to see, what qualifications do you have to be this brazen? Since you want to be eliminated so badly, let me grant your wish then. Wu Tang stood up. Instantly, the stone platforms the two of them were on started to spin and came to the center of the sacred battle platform. Dong Ayu Hanjiang stepped out, the instant he lifted his bombs, a terrifying suppression energy could be felt pressing down from the heavens. Yet Wu Tang merely casually raised his hand as the outline of a great axe appeared in the sky, cleaving outwards. Instantly, Dong Ayu Hanjiang's attack was severed into two. It couldn't even withstand a single strike. True Intent of Mandate of Axe 
the great axe in Wu Tang's hands, seems to even have a spirit within it. Dong Ayu Hanjiang unleashed yet another attack as his astral nova erupted into being. An immense energy of suppression madly lashed out. Yet Wu Tang merely stood there free and at ease, and waved the axe in his hands. His motion was simple, yet it gave people a feeling of returning from complexity to simplicity. Each and every axe strike he made seemed to contain a power that could turn the toughest of things into rotting wood, directly and easily severing them in twain. Simple, direct. Not wasting an iota of energy. Although the true intent of Axe Wu Tang comprehended wasn't as fanciful as the true intent of Lightning which Lu Feng comprehended, it was much more practical in comparison. Dong Ayu Hanjiang went mad with fury. He frantically continued his attacks, yet Wu Tang seemed as at ease as ever. He continued to casually cleave down left and right, shooting out beams of Axe Light. His motions seemed simple and ordinary, they were even somewhat slow. But in reality, each of the axe slides he shot out instantly severed Dong Ayu Hanjiang's attempts to attack with extreme precision. The axe light grew stronger and stronger, and the spectators discovered that a terrifying gigantic silhouette wielding a great axe had suddenly appeared behind Wu Tang, mirroring each of his actions. The sounds of cleaving rang out and even before Dong Ayu Hanjiang had the chance to concede, one of his arms was already severed away. The act of doing so is as simple as chopping down a defenseless tree. I admit defeat. Dong Ayu Hanjiang had cold sweat all over his body. As long as Wu Tang willed it, that axe could have already taken his life. How powerful! The hearts of the crowd trembled. Wu Tang had finally shown his true strength. He could have obviously killed Dong Ayu Hanjiang in that battle, yet he held back from doing so. What a reclusive, demon level character! Although Wu Tang's age was older than the others, he was a great talent that had matured slowly. Such combat prowess truly caused the hearts of people to shiver in fear. The true intent of martial mandates. The truth, maybe it's really a kind of returning to simplicity from complexity, Ken Wenchen mused. Wu Tang's axe light acted like a reminder to him. Before this, he experienced the true intent of lightning and the true intent of gold. Their attacks were all incomparably fanciful. The true intent of lightning contained the multitude of insights of the mandate of lightning within it, yet why did it feel that Lu Lan was inferior to Wu Tang? This was similar to someone comprehending a mandate. The level of their comprehension differed, hence their strength would differ as well. Wu Tang's comprehension towards his true intent was obviously deeper in comparison. Qian Wenchen thought back to the time when he was at the grass hut, from the 15th to 21st sword strike, the true intents within the essences of those seven sword strikes were all reverting from complexity back to simplicity. When the true intent of wind was present, one couldn't tell there was any trace of the wind in the sword play. The true intents on the path of the grass hut were at a level even higher compared to Wu Tang. As for Lu Lan and the crown prince of radiant gold, they should be among the weakest of those at the supreme tier. When they attacked, Traces of their mandates were evident and easily recognizable. At this instant, Ken Wenchen suddenly had an epiphany. Yesterday after the experiences he gained, he was deep in contemplation, but still couldn't understand. But right now, as he saw the axe light of Wu Tang, as well as thinking back to the experiences he had on the path of the grass hut, he suddenly had a spark of insight. However, this spark of insight didn't mean that he had truly comprehended his own true intent. That would still have to depend upon his own perception. Since he could gain an epiphany upon watching the battles of others, this indicated that Ken Wenchen's perception was off the charts. After all, it was unknown how many disciples there were in the major powers who had comprehended a true intent, but who could say that they would be able to gain an epiphany just from watching a battle and who could guarantee that even though they had an epiphany, they would be able to build upon it and comprehend their own true intent out of it. Everything depended on the individual. At this moment, it all depended on Keen Wenshin himself to see if he was able to grab hold and make use of this spark of insight, this sudden epiphany, and take the next step onwards. Keen Wenshin closed his eyes once more, entering into a state of self-immersion. Everyone has already fought around. You can no longer dodge me, it's time for you to die, Di Shi spoke. Who? 
Qian Wenshin drew in a deep breath. Li Shi's voice was akin to thunderclap sounding off in his mind, this caused him to be completely unable to quietly focus on his comprehension. That was how much Di Shi wanted his life. When Qian Wenshin opened his eyes, an extremely cold light flickered within. As he stood up, the power in his blood thrummed as his physique grew larger. His entire body was glowing with resplendent light, the Yuanfus in his body were all humming with power. Boom! Several manifestations of ferocious birds of prey manifested around Li Shi as the faint image of an azure rock appeared behind him. That wasn't an astral soul nor astral nova. Li Shi's entire body was enveloped by azure light as terrifying runic glow illuminated the area around him. A raging wind gusted as Di Shi completely vanished. The faint image of that azure rock howled in anger as a terrifying restrictive force bound Ken Wenshin. The spectators only saw that there were numerous runes being cast on Ken Wenshin, all of them birthing tiny azure rocks that were grabbing onto him. Do you even think you still can live? Di Shi roared, stretching his arms out as the runes on Ken Wenshin started to explode. Ken Wenshin blasted out a terrifying attack. Yet the force of his attacks were all negated. The runic lights on his body all exploded, breaking through his defense, leaving behind bloody wounds. Borrowing the strength of the azure rock? Qian Wenchen murmured. Li Shi must have used some secret art to link himself with a true azure rock or cause some transformation to occur in his body. This was how he could depend on the strength of the azure rock. Force, the omnipresent force, Qian Wenchen mumbled. Di Shi stood high up in the air, looking down on him with eyes filled with murder. I shall kill you slowly, letting you enjoy the process bit by bit. A malevolent look flashed on Di Shi's face. He actually needed to resort to his ultimate trump card before he could kill Ken Wenchen. Yet another attack blasted out as an incomparably terrifying manifestation of an azure rock slaughtering its way to him. The runic light illuminated the skies as that attack instantly landed. There didn't seem to be any aura emanating from Qin Wenchen at all, the spectators only saw him lifting his palms and blasting it outwards, boom! A resounding thunderous explosive sound echoed out. Although this attack by Di Shi blasted Qin Wenchen back, it didn't achieve the desired effect. Not only that, it seemed as though Qin Wenchen was no longer being binded. He soared into the air, staring at Di Shi as a marvelous expression actually appeared in his eyes. MHM? Di Shi frowned, his killing intent rose up again. Useless struggle. As the sound of his voice faded, a formless energy surged up. He suddenly felt a terrifying force acting on his body, and after that, Ken Wenshin slammed out with a bomb. Di Shi hadn't even attacked, yet he already felt a torrential force capable of toppling mountains and overturning seas gushing right at him. With a rumbling echo, his attempts at attacking were instantly broken through as the torrential might slammed into him. Bang! Di Shi was directly forced backwards as he groaned in misery. An expression of bewilderment appeared on his face as he stared at Ken Wenshin before him. However right now, that expression of marvelousness was still flickering in Ken Wenshin's eyes. Not only that, when he stared at Di Shi, traces of a teasing expression could also be seen there. Chapter 626, Death of Di Shi Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash This attack woke Di Shi up. Staring at that teasing expression in Qin Wenshin's eyes, a feeling of bewilderment overwhelmed him. Did Qin Wenshin just comprehend the true intent of a mandate? Very swiftly, the expression of Di Shi's face turned wretched. The raging wind howled as his balefulness engulfed the air. He had to kill Ken Wenshin before the latter familiarized himself with the true intent he comprehended. Swish, swish. A cyclone gusted within the sacred battle platform, the azure light transformed into terrifying primordial birds of prey as they sliced through the air towards Ken Wenshin. Ken Wenshin stepped out, but this time around, the step he took was filled with so much additional force that even space itself trembled. His body felt even lighter. This was obviously an improvement in his application and usage of force. As for Di Shi, he felt the force acting on his body getting heavier and heavier. The palm imprints Ken Wenshin blasted out could shatter the void, he could already smash apart Di Shi's attack head on. True intent, although I understood the concept of reverting complexity into simplicity, 
My application towards true intent isn't as proficient as Wu Tang. Knowing about it is one thing, but applying it for myself is another. Ken Wenchen's heart was as clear as a mirror as he clashed repeatedly in the air against Vichy. The resulting shock waves from the impact of their clashes ravaged their surroundings. Ken Wenchen made full use of this opportunity during combat to familiarize himself more with his true intent. After a short period of time, Ken Wenchen's attacks were no longer as ferocious, he was getting better at his control and could use the appropriate amount of energy to handle Dishi. After another clash, their bodies separated. Dishi's countenance had turned incomparably unsightly to behold. Ken Wenchen stretched out his arm as a mortal ranked halberd appeared within. Ordinary weapons were allowed as they weren't considered divine weapons. The power of his blood seethed and surged, Ken Wenchen's physique resembled a fiend. With the halberd in his hand, he seemed to be the epitome of tyranny. A terrifying glow circulated around the halberd. Dishi unleashed an attack towards Ken Wenchen, the sharp talon of an azure rock slashed through the skies, the might contained within the strike could shake even the heavens. Yet before the attack arrived, the halberd in Ken Wenchen's hand suddenly struck towards the talon. An instant later, a thunderous sound erupted forth as the talon directly shattered into pieces. It only took a single instant. Dishi's countenance grew incredibly unsightly as he circled Ken Wenchen at an extreme speed, continuously blasting out attacks. Yet Ken Wenchen simply stood there, even closing his eyes, casually countering Dishi's attacks. No matter how fast Dishi attacked, he could easily negate it with a casual strike of his halberd. Ken Wenchen has comprehended a true intent of his mandates. To be able to achieve such a feat at the seventh level of Heavenly Dipper. What a monster! Is he using Vishi to temper himself? Although Dishi appeared to be the one taking the initiative, he couldn't threaten Ken Wenchen at all. Ken Wenchen was completely making use of him to train his own proficiency in using the true intent of his mandate to attack. The vast majority felt great shock in their hearts, even those older experts at the celestial phenomenon realm. Ken Wenchen's perception was simply too perverse. After comprehending the true intent, he was already at the initial stage of proficiency. Such speed was simply unbelievable. His attacks failing to break through made Nishi go mad. His countenance was extremely malevolent as he unleashed more attacks with even greater ferocity. However, Ken Wenchen didn't seem to be taking him seriously at all, casually answering his attacks with halberd strikes of his own. Dishi could feel that Ken Wenchen was simply treating him as a tool to sharpen his own proficiency and usage of true intent. This made Dishi feel an extreme humiliation. A stark naked humiliation. In reality, although Ken Wenchen was improving, he wasn't as strong as what the spectators thought. Right now, he was circulating the true intent of force, yet he had no way to completely infuse it into his attacks yet. In any case, it wasn't realistic for him to be able to instantly suppress Dishi the moment he comprehended a true intent. But as time went by, he discovered that it grew easier and easier to parry Dishi's attack, using it however his heart desired. True intent, complexity back to simplicity, according to one's desire, an absolute control. Ken Wenchen's comprehension on true intent grew clearer and clearer. The true intent of a martial mandate was actually a kind of controlling strength. A control that followed the desire of one's heart, an absolutely powerful control. Just like Wu Tang's true intent of the mandate of axe. Him cleaving down with an axe felt as though he was cleaving lumber apart. It would break into two as long as he willed it cloven. His true intent of the mandate of force was the application of strength. The absolute control of this true intent even surpassed that of the true intent of the mandate of axe. After comprehending a true intent, my perception seems to have grown even stronger. This is especially so for my perception towards force, it feels as though I can clearly control any form of force around me. I can even clearly feel every iota of force my opponent imbues into their attacks. Ken Wenchen unceasingly familiarized himself with this kind of absolute control. As to why he could easily parry Dishi's attack, it was because his perception had improved yet another level. He could feel every ounce of force in Dishi's attacks. And just at this moment, Ken Wenchen's halberd concentrated his strength and collided right with Dishi's palm. 
he could sense the exact amount of force used, hence he applied a similar amount and negated Ishii's attack. Although it looked from the outside to be extremely casual and easy to pull off, one wouldn't be able to accomplish it unless they gained insight into that absolute control after comprehending a true intent. Ken Wenchen believed that whenever Wu Tang cleaved down with his axe, he too felt a similar sensation. Ishii finally halted his attacks. He floated in the air and coldly stared at the person in front of him. He knew he could no longer continue this battle. He could sense that Ken Wenchen's proficiency with the true intent of force was getting stronger and stronger. Don't you want to kill me? Ken Wenchen's eyes bored right into Dishi's as he asked. Dishi's countenance turned ashen as he icily replied, Cease fire. Cease fire? Ken Wenchen was somewhat taken aback as a bizarre expression appeared on his face. You want to fight and you fight and you want to stop and you stop? Who do you think you are? Was this Dishi a joker? What do you want then? Dishi's voice turned ice cold. Ken Wenchen frostily smiled, he didn't reply but the halberd in his hands inched towards Dishi as he walked forward. The light enveloping the halberd grew even more intense as the astral energy in his Yuan Fu rumbled. His entire body was covered in astral armor, flowing with runic light. Ken Wenchen at this instant seemed incomparably similar to a fiend god, unexcelled in this world. BZZ Several incarnations of Ken Wenchen appeared and all of them advanced forward together. The force of the steps which they took seemed as though they landed directly on the heart of Dishi. I want your life, Ken Wenchen replied with a glacial tone in his voice. He took another step out as his incarnations rushed over, appearing in front of Dishi. Numerous ancient halberds exploded forth, each of them containing the power to annihilate the heavens and earth within. The sensation of such might erupted to the maximum, causing the spectators to be stifled into breathlessness. A terrifying blood-colored glow covered Dishi, as the aura of a true azure rock erupted outwards. After which, the sight of a real azure rock can actually be seen zooming through the air towards Ken Wenchen, flaring with brilliant light, containing an indomitable strength. It felt as though it was a strike that would make the one at the receiving end feel nothing but despair. Countless ancient halberds penetrated the height of the azure rock, causing its body to explode from the force infused. At this moment, several incarnations also appeared around Ishii. He seemed like the king of the ferocious primordial birds of prey as they guarded him, blocking the attacks. At the same time, Ishii retreated, he wanted to lengthen the distance between him and Ken Wenchen. Damn! Ishii abruptly felt an intense destructive power coming right at him. He mustered the entirety of his strength to defend, yet he only saw the third eye of Ken Wenchen opening and staring right at him. Right now, countless silhouettes of Ken Wenchen appeared around Dei Shi, the ancient halberds in their hands all seeking to penetrate his flesh. Impossible! Dei Shi felt his eyes spinning, he discovered that there were countless Ken Wenchens all around him. Which of them were real? Which of them were false? At this instant, his mind was incomparably confused. After he was pulled into Ken Wenchen's dreamscape, there was no longer a way for him to differentiate reality from illusions. Chi. An ancient halberd penetrated right through the center of Ishii's brow. This halberd had no sound nor presence, it erupted straight out from the void. When he was trying to differentiate what was real and what was not, the true killing move was already hidden inside the void. The instant the halberd penetrated, it felt as though everything in his mind exploded. Dishi instantly stopped thinking and died on the spot. The other combatants on the sacred battle platform all felt their hearts stop for an instant when they saw what happened. They didn't believe their eyes. Although Dishi and Keen Wenshin fought before, there was a rule laid down that stated only one of them could only leave the platform after the other died, indicating that one of them had to die for sure in this grand battle. When Di Shi actually died, they didn't dare to believe that it actually happened. Not only them, each and every one of the spectators felt the same as well. Who were these two people? One was a young man that was rising up in the royal sacred region, the top ranker of the immortal martial realm. The halo around him was even brighter compared to that of Gulufan. Another one was Di Shi, one of the eight absolute terrorist suppressing geniuses, Di Shi of the Supreme D Clan. 
although they knew that the fight between them would result in one dead, when reality happened, the shock of impact to all of them was simply too great, so great that it caused the entire sacred battle platform to go silent. The gazes of everyone were focused on to Ken Winchen. This fiendishly handsome young man amazed the world with a single feat. He was placed the top ranker of the Immortal Martial Realm, but what the Immortal Martial Realm tested for was one's innate potential. But today, in front of everyone, he slew the Ishii on the sacred battle platform. Right now, nobody could disagree that no one could stop him from rising up. Not even the eight era suppressing geniuses could block his path. This time around, Daishi's purpose for coming here was precisely to hunt down Ken Winchin. He had even prepared an extremely powerful trump card, yet who would have thought that he would be the first to die? It felt as though he was answering Ken Winchin's words. How arrogant was Daishi back then when they first crossed paths? Yet at the very end, the one who died was him. He who was an era suppressing genius only shone brightly for a few short moments in the royal sacred region before his corpse was trampled upon by another even more outstanding demon-level genius on his way to the peak. In this era, Ken Winchin became the first person to kill an era-suppressing genius. This indicated that Ken Winchin was a character even more outstanding compared to the eight. Maybe, he would be the only one who could achieve this among the younger generation. As one of the seven supreme clans, the eyes of those from the Supreme D clan now all turned red as their killing intents towered at the sky. Both the duo geniuses, the D brothers, had died by the hands of a single man. D she had fallen. Even now, they couldn't accept this cruel reality. Standing not far away from the Supreme D clan were those from the Divine Weapon Academy. Moon, Shen Jing, and the others all felt their hearts convulsing from indescribable emotions as they stared at the magnificent figure. He, had actually slain the Shi of the Supreme D Clan. Chapter 627, Dominance Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash On the sacred battle platform, Ken Winchin's halberd shifted as he pointed the tip of his weapon straight at Lu Lan. Upon seeing how Di Shi died, Lu Lan's heart couldn't help but tremble. And when he realized Ken Winchin was pointing his weapon at him, his countenance involuntarily turned incredibly unsightly. Defeating someone and killing someone were two entirely different concepts. The people here all had trump cards of their own and unless the disparity in strength was quite large, it wouldn't be possible for one of the combatants to kill the other. When Lu Lan fought Ken Wenchen yesterday, although he had the advantage, he couldn't kill his opponent. But right now, Ken Wenchen who was originally in the weaker position had actually managed to comprehend a true intent and slain the Shi in an overwhelming manner. This indicated that right now Ken Winchin was already a character strong enough to pose a threat to his life. The spectators from the Violet Thunder sect all had ugly expressions on their faces. It was they who had arranged for Lu Lan to participate in this grand battle. Originally they wanted to kill Ken Winchin before he rose up. Lu Lan, who had a cultivation base at the peak of Heavenly Dipper and had even comprehended a true intent of a mandate would definitely have no problem when fighting against Ken Winchin. But reality turned out differently, Ken Winchin's godly perception allowed him to comprehend a true intent in the midst of the grand battle, and he who was originally one of the weakest combatants instantly leveled up to the extent where his combat prowess was higher compared to Lu Lan. Come out, Ken Winchin pointed at Lu Lan as he spoke. Lu Lan was the same as Di Shi, they had an agreement with Ken Winchin. Only one among them would be able to walk out alive. Initially, this rule was set to prevent Ken Winchin from fleeing with his life, but right now, it became nothing but a noose around his own neck. It was useless to concede. It was either he died or Ken Winchin died. We have both comprehended a true intent, what's there to fear? Lu Lan encouraged himself, trying his best to suppress the terror that had bloomed earlier when Di Shi died. A character at his level. How could he bear to die? But one of the eight era suppressing geniuses, Di Shi, had died right in front of his very eyes. This made him understand that this was a true life and death battle, and how could Ken Winchin ever spare someone that wanted his life? Lu Lan, who was shrouded in lightning, finally stepped out. However, his presence seemed to weaken, no longer as imposing and tyrannical as their first fight. 
he was no longer as confident in his own abilities. The two of them stood facing each other. A destructive lightning energy and an overwhelming pressure permeated the air. The lightning was targeting Qin Wenshin while the pressure bore down on Lu Lan. This pressure seemed to be present everywhere in the air, weighing down on him and causing him to feel extremely uncomfortable. Right now, Lu Lan didn't dare to hold back any longer. He released his astral souls, causing them out of his lightning to kick up another notch. A lightning sword manifested in his hand as he slashed it outwards, causing a bolt of lightning to streak through the skies, slicing its path towards Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen moved the instant the lightning sword in Lu Lan's hand slashed out. He could feel every iota of force in the air clearly. Hence, he sensed the instant Lu Lan moved. He reacted by sending out his ancient hellbird. This strike of his was incomparably precise, and the terrifying might packed within this strike caused the hearts of spectators to shiver. Bang! The tip of the ancient halberd smashed right through the lightning bolt, splitting it apart. What a terrifying perception, Ken Wenchen's proficiency with his true intent has already exceeded Lu Lan's. Many felt as though thunderbolts were going off in their minds. Ken Wenchen had just comprehended his true intent, yet he was now already stronger than Lu Lan. Other than explaining it with the virtue of his talent, there was no other possible explanation. A pair of golden wings took form behind Ken Wenchen as golden-colored armor enveloped his body. He transformed into a beam of light and shot forwards, causing this entire space to be filled with afterimages. Chi. The ancient halberd in his hands smashed out directly speeding towards Lu Lan's head. Even before the halberd arrived, that surge of terrifying force had already landed, causing Lu Lan to sense an extremely strange feeling. It was as though force was boundless, every iota of force in this world was gathered onto the tip of the ancient halberd. As long as that strike landed, he would die without a doubt. Regardless of which part of his body was hit, as long as he failed to evade that strike, the strength would ravage through his entire body reaping away his life. A raging wind billowed, Lu Lan explosively retreated as the lightning force field around him concentrated with frantic speed. An immense ball of lightning was formed and he blasted it with all his might towards Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen's silhouette instantly flickered as he leaned to the side, his beautiful golden wings sliced through the air in a graceful arc, dodging the attack. At the same time, another immense amount of pressure bore down upon Lu Lan affecting his speed. Die! Lu Lan roared as the lightning sword in his hands slashed out once again. Lightning-based attacks were naturally the fastest. Not only that, the might packed within was tyrannical and terrifying. Ken Wenchen slammed out with his star-seizing bomb, this time around powered by divine energy from his Yuan Fu instead as he shattered the entire space in front of him. BZZ. A shadow flashed before Lu Lan's eyes. Lu Lan didn't halt his attacks, yet Ken Wenchen didn't seem to mind colliding directly with him. The monumental pressure he felt was getting increasingly intense, Ken Wenchen chased him around the platform moving at such speeds that the airspace above was covered by golden silhouettes. Lu Lan is definitely in a disadvantageous position, just look at how is he defending. His manner of blasting out that ball of lightning in defense undoubtedly consumed a large amount of astral energy while Ken Wenchen is using only his true intent during his attacks. His energy consumption is by far a lot lower compared to Lu Lan. Not only that, Lu Lan's heart is already shaken. If this continues, he will die for sure, the spectators all mumbled. At this moment, Lu Lan once again blasted out another destructive attack towards Ken Wenchen, and just as he thought Ken Wenchen would evade as usual, numerous Ken Wenchen's incarnations suddenly surrounded him, blasting out with their palms and shattering the void. At the same time, an ancient halberd grew larger and larger in his field of vision as Ken Wenchen's true body rushed him. Lu Lan's heart violently pounded as he hurriedly slammed his palms together, hoping to stop Ken Wenchen's attack. And just as his palms closed around the ancient halberd, Halting Keen Wenchen's momentum, terrifying lightning crackled around him. After being imbued by lightning, his palms were even sharper than the edges of a blade. Arcs of electricity directly slashed against the halberd, actually severing it into two. Courting death, Ken Wenchen spat out. 
he directly relinquished the halberd and slammed forth with both his palms. Instantly, a sword she engulfed this entire space, sweeping across everything as numerous streams of sword inscriptions containing a startling energy of annihilation shot towards Lulan. At such a close distance, how could Lulan dodge? He could only depend on the destructive power of his true intent of lightning to clash head-on with Ken Winchen. And just when he was about to counter-attack, at this same instant, the countless number of sword inscriptions erupted forth earlier from Ken Winchen's palms superimposed on each other, combining their power together. Each of these sword inscriptions contained an inconceivably formidable destructive energy packed within, intent on slaughtering everything. The crowd only saw beams of sword light flashing past, blasting towards Lu Lan, manifesting tens of thousands of swords that penetrated through his heart. Lu Lan's body that was floating in the air trembled violently, as he stared at Ken Winchen with a venomous light in his eyes. He was somebody at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper, with a foot in the celestial phenomenon realm. Yet today, he died on the sacred battle platform. Where did all that sword inscriptions suddenly came from? Many of the spectators felt their hearts shaking. From that number of terrifying sword inscriptions bursting out at the last moment, one could well imagine how dangerous it was to fight Ken Winchen in close combat. Impossible. In the direction of the Divine Weapon Academy, Wang Yunfei's countenance turned pale white. Even the elders from the academy were all taken aback. Each and every sword inscription was akin to what Ken Winchen had unleashed before once in their Divine Weapon Academy. Birthing powerful fourth rank inscriptions with every step he took. Not only that, the inscriptions birthed today were all sword type inscriptions, containing an overwhelming killing power. This indicated that in that attack of Ken Winchin's earlier, over thousands of fourth ranked inscriptions exploded forth at that moment. How terrifying was that? And at such a close distance, how could his opponent still avoid death? That's the second one. The spectators were all still numb from shock. The first to die was Nishi of the Eight Era suppressing geniuses. The second to die was Lulan, someone who had comprehended a true intent. At this instant, the faces of all those from the Violet Thunder sect were flushed red with shame. When they saw the gazes of the crowd shifting towards them, they felt as though they were sitting on pins and needles. This time around, not only did they lose a genius like Lulan, they had even completely threw away their face. Why did Lu Lan want a life and death battle with Ken Winchen? This was undoubtedly because behind the scenes, the Violet Thunder sect wanted it. But right now, reality was such, Lu Lan died at the hands of the person he was supposed to kill. This resounding smack to their faces made many mock the violent sacred sect. Yi Kong Fen of their sect died and Yi, so did a number of their celestial phenomenon ascendants. And today, they sought humiliation of their own accord once more. It was highly likely that from now on, the reputation of the Violent Thunder sect would be ranked the last out of the nine great sects. After Ken Winshin killed Lu Lan, he calmly returned to his stone platform and sat down. Out of the nine original participants, there were two of the eight terror suppressing geniuses that had already been eliminated. Dishi had fallen, while one of Dong Ayu Hanjiang's arms was severed. Adding Lu Lan, there were already three combatants who were ousted, leaving behind six. In fact, at this moment everyone already understood that although Li Tian and Shi Lian were era suppressing geniuses, since they hadn't comprehended a true intent it was impossible for them to fight against Ken Wenchen or Wu Tang. They were even weaker compared to the crown prince from Radiant Gold. As for Fan Miu, nobody even knew her level of power yet. However very quickly, the spectators soon saw that when Chi Lian challenged Fan Miu, and he was effortlessly defeated. Fan Miu revealed that she had comprehended a true intent, the true intent of the Mandate of Sound. Right from the start of the battle, Chi Lian had no way to even defend. Fan Miu's cultivation base was higher than his and she had even comprehended a true intent. Both of them were era suppressing geniuses, hence Chi Lian had no way to battle her at all. This battle made everybody realize that Fan Miu was truly the strongest among the eight era suppressing geniuses. Li Tian stared at the four participants, feeling extremely depressed in his heart. He then spoke, There's no more meaning even if I refuse to concede. 
I shall fight against all of you after I comprehended my true intent. I admit my defeat here today. The screen of light opened, allowing Chi Lian and Li Yan to leave. Although the two of them were defeated, nobody doubted their strength. As heirs suppressing geniuses, their combat prowess would immediately skyrocket the instant they comprehended a true intent. In the blink of an eye, only four remain on the sacred battle platform. Qian Wenxian, Wu Tang, Fan Miu, and the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold. Among these four, the strongest should be Fan Miu and the weakest, maybe the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold? As for Qian Wenxian and Wu Tang, it's hard to say who was stronger between them. These were the perspectives from the vast majority of the spectators. Fan Miu and Wu Tang had the same level of cultivation and both of them comprehended a true intent. But as an heiress suppressing genius, she should be the strongest out of the four. How about sparring a little? Wu Tang stared at Ken Wenxin as he spoke. He was very impressed by Ken Wenxin. At the start of the Immortal Martial Realm, Ken Wenxin was merely an unknown, yet in the short span of a few months, his name resounded through the royal sacred region and had even climbed up to such a height. Such a character was truly worthy of respect. This was why he wanted to spar with Ken Wenxin, and he had no malicious intentions. Sure, after my condition is restored to the peak, I will spar with you then, Ken Wenxin smiled, he could sense the respect Wu Tang had for him. MHM, right. After all, your cultivation base is slightly lower than mine. Let's wait till you are fully recovered before we spar against each other, Wu Tang laughed, he didn't insist as he too, didn't want an unfair fight. Qian Wenxin smiled as he closed his eyes, focusing on restoring his condition. Chapter 628, I'll Have to Disappoint You Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash The sacred battle platform regained its silence. The remaining four combatants weren't in a hurry to start their battles, they were all closing their eyes in meditation. And after a period of time, the Crown Prince of Radiant Girl challenged Fan Miu, and Fan Miu agreed, causing their stone platforms to move towards the center. Resplendent light flashed as a radiant gold glow illuminated the skies. Sharp and extremely eye-piercing, this golden glow then cascaded down on the crown prince, forming into golden fragments that slowly enveloped his entire body. An instant later, a golden long spear appeared in his hands as an incomparably terrifying sharpness gushed forth from him. At this instant, the crown prince who was clad in golden armor seemed to be cast from divine metal. His defense was unparalleled, it was impossible to break through it. Seeing how strong he was at this moment, the spectators couldn't help but to question their earlier judgment. Was he really the weakest out of the four remaining combatants? For those who cultivated the Mandate of Gold, regardless of attack or defense, they excelled in both aspects. Chi, Chi. An ear-piercing sound directly echoed in the eardrums of the combatants. The golden fragments actually sealed off the ears of the crown prince directly. After all, his opponent was Fan Miu who had comprehended the true intent of sound. Sound waves were a very rarely seen form of mandate, she could use it to disrupt the minds of her opponent and even slaughter them using sound. Fan Miu merely stood there quietly, yet the spectators noticed that the crown prince of radiant gold was frowning. He seemed to be extremely uncomfortable. However, since he had no way to seal of all his six senses, how could he completely block off sound? Right now, an ear-jarring sound relentlessly rang out in his mind. The harsh and discordant noises could even drive people crazy. Sound waves were formless and invisible, nobody could sense that Fan Miu was already attacking. The crown prince could hear nothing else, his heart became frustrated as his senses became weak. Although he sealed his ears, he was still disturbed by the attack. Right now, he could only blast out attacks continuously. If not, he would soon go mad if he allowed Fan Miu to continue what she was doing. It was unknown when Ken Wenshin opened his eyes, he was also spectating this battle. The golden long spear in the hands of the crown prince stabbed forth with indomitable force, piercing towards Fan Miu. Fan Miu moved, she waved her palms as musical notes appeared in the air. Each of these manifested notes trembled violently as they smashed onto that golden spear. Sounds of collisions unceasingly rang out, 
alongside with a sound similar to the twinkling of bells. An instant later, that golden long spear was shattered into pieces. Fan Miu then swept her hands forwards as the formless sound waves engulfed the crown prince in a gigantic web of music. Qin Wenshin's eyes gleamed with sharpness. The energy from sound was formless and invisible, it was exceedingly tough to defend against. Yet another spear appeared in the crown prince's hands, he repeatedly stabbed out, and although he managed to destroy a large portion of the sound waves, it was useless, he was eventually still trapped within the web. Boom, boom, boom. His body was completely enveloped despite his struggle. The golden armor enveloping him had thousands of dents all over it. Although the attacking power of formless sound waves couldn't be compared to other attacks, it was still extremely terrifying. If it wasn't for the fact that the crown prince's defense was so perverse, he would have already died to Fan Miu. Although the two of them had not completely unleashed all their strength yet, the outcome of this battle could already be predicted. When the crown prince of radiant gold replied with even stronger attacks, Fan Miu unceasingly adjusted her level of power and ultimately, the crown prince could only choose to concede. After witnessing such a battle, Ken Wenshin was thinking about what would happen if he was the one facing against Fan Miu. The proficiency Fan Miu had over her true insight of sound wasn't any weaker in comparison to his control over the true intent of force. If he was the opponent, he would probably be defeated as well. After the Crown Prince of Radiant Gold was eliminated, only three combatants remained. Qin Wenshin, Wu Tang, Fan Miu. Wu Tang. Qin Wenshin suddenly spoke. Wu Tang looked at him as both of them stood out. I really wish to see if my true intent of acts or your true intent of force is stronger, Wu Tang smiled. In that case, let's fight first just using our true intent, Qin Wenshin replied as an ancient halberd appeared in his hands. Sure. Wu Tang took out an ordinary axe as both of them walked towards each other. An instant later, the two of them erupted forth in attack. Wu Tang chopped down with his axe, his actions as casual and as ordinary as they can be. Yet this simple looking strike contained a grandeur to it. It seemed as though he was chopping down a tree, easily and effortlessly. Qin Wenshin's ancient halberd smashed against the axe. And in that instant, he felt a surge of energy from Wu Tang's axe that directly passed through his ancient halberd, about to gush into his body and wanting to split him into two. At that very instant, Ken Wenshin relinquished his hold on his halberd and right after that, his halberd was instantly severed into two pieces, akin to a piece of firewood chopped into two. Even though Ken Wenshin's halberd was severed, Wu Tang's axe also shattered. At the instant of their collision, Wu Tang felt a mighty force directly infusing his axe that was also about to travel into his body. If he didn't let go of his axe, his body would undoubtedly be ravaged by that force. That exchange between them looked simple to the spectators, yet only the two of them knew of the dangers within. Awesome! Wu Tang was truly impressed with Ken Wenshin. He had only just comprehended his true intent, yet he had already reached such a level. Come again, Wu Tang smiled. This time, he formed an axe from astral energy as the two of them rushed at each other, unleashing their respective true intents. True intent of martial mandates. Truth. Control. Qin Wenshin was still gaining insights as he battled. But as they fought with their true intent, neither of them had a way to gain victory over the other. How about halting our battle first, wait for me I want to go try out her true intent of sound. Wu Tang seemed to be somewhat excited and was preparing himself to fight against Fan Miu. Right, Ken Wenshin nodded and returned to his stone platform, closing his eyes once again in contemplation. Such a scenario caused the spectators to be somewhat speechless. Yet right now, the atmosphere on the sacred battle platform was no longer as tense as before. This Wu Tang seemed like a martial fanatic, wanting to test out his strength against various kinds of true intent simply because he liked fighting and not for any other reason. In fact, this point of him being such a free spirit resembled Ken Wenshin slightly. However, when he fought against Fan Miu, his carefree attitude was gone. He had no choice but to unleash all the strength he was capable of under the power disruption of the sound waves. 
the battle between two of them was no longer a spar to test their true intents, but rather, a real one where one party might die. This caused the blood of the audience to boil and their spirits soared high in excitement once more. This battle between them was the battle between the two strongest participants. Fan Miu's strength was formidable, and Wu Tang once again exceeded the expectations of others. Other than comprehending a true intent, he had already reached the level where he could infuse his true intent completely with his innate techniques, resulting in terrifying might. The two of them frantically fought for one hour and the battle still showed no signs of ending. How powerful! The spectators were truly shocked. Right now, Wu Tang seemed to have an amenor akin to a war god. His axe arts contained enough power to even split apart the heavens. In fact, the faint silhouette of a war divinity could even be seen behind his back, further augmenting his strength. Too powerful, Wu Tang can even suppress Fan Miu. Gleams of excitement appeared in the eyes of the crowd. They finally understood why Wu Tang only used true intent to fight against Qin Wenshin and didn't go all out. It turns out that Wu Tang didn't wish to bully Qin Wenshin. Qin Wenshin's cultivation base was lower compared to his, and if he really erupted forth with his true strength Qin Wenshin definitely wouldn't be able to defend against him. Would Wu Tang become the number one of this grand battle? How surprising! Although Wu Tang is powerful, his fame is simply far from the eight era suppressing geniuses. Wu Tang sent Fan Miu flying away with a strike, causing the hearts of the spectators to tremble slightly. You are very strong, but you are still a little inferior. Just concede, Wu Tang stared at Fan Miu as he spoke. Wu Tang of War Country, everyone in the Royal Sacred Region has truly underestimated you. But today, you will be the one defeated for sure. Fan Miu's voice was exceedingly calm. Wu Tang had a look of bewilderment on his face as he stared at her. After which, he felt another surge of terrifying energy permeating the air. After he sensed that, Wu Tang stood there dumbstruck. However, Wu Tang could also be considered an extraordinary character. He quickly adjusted his mental state and bitterly smiled, Since you have already comprehended two kinds of true intent, it's clear I won't be your match. I'll admit defeat then. Wu Tang, you are a great talent that matured slowly and your usage and control of strength is already at the peak. With such a solid foundation, when you break through to celestial phenomenon in the future you would definitely be able to condense an extraordinary constellation. Fan Miu then asked, Do you know who Wu Miu is? Wu Tang stared at Fan Miu as he smiled, If it wasn't for Senior Wu Miu's guidance. I would never have been able to defeat you earlier when we were fighting with just one true intent. After speaking, Wu Tang calmly exited the sacred battle platform. After staying low profile for so many years and with the guidance of the Realm Lord of the Immortal Martial Realm, his name could explode forth into prominence today. Although he was defeated today, everyone on the scene understood that Wu Tang's name would soon circulate throughout the Royal Sacred Region henceforth. After all, he was someone who could suppress Fan Miu when they fought under the situation of each using only one true intent. It was already a very admirable achievement. The strongest among the nine combatants is still Fan Miu. She has already comprehended two kinds of true intent. The spectators sighed in their hearts. This grand battle was finally concluded. Fan Miu's reputation as one of the eight terrorist suppressing geniuses was truly well deserved. Fan Miu stared at her last opponent, a person whom she truly admired. Back then in the immortal martial realm, he once said the era was changing as he defeated her, causing her to feel a sense of having passed her prime. Qin Wenchen felt Fan Miu's gaze. He opened his eyes and smiled in greeting. Although the era is changing, I don't wish to be replaced so soon. Even if you wish to step upon me to rise up, that day is not today it will still be something in the future. You should already be proud. On the sacred battle platform, your battle achievements can already be considered extremely remarkable. Fan Miu slowly continued, however the position of honor and glory still belongs to me today. Qin Wenchen stared at Fan Miu as a smile flashed on his face. I'm afraid, I'll have to disappoint you. Chapter 629, Command Issued by the Royal Sacred Sect Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash. 
Ken Winchin's calm voice caused Fan Miu to start as she stared bewildered at Ken Winchin. Ken Winchin's countenance was serene and there was even the hint of a smile flickering in his eyes. You comprehend it again? Fan Miu asked in astonishment. In such a short time, Ken Winchin comprehended two kinds of true intent? Fan Miu didn't dare to believe it. If it was one kind of true intent, there was indeed the possibility of suddenly comprehending it. Many geniuses including herself had encountered that spark of insight needed randomly. But continuously comprehending two true intents? That was simply way beyond shocking. Not only that, even if Ken Winshin had comprehended two true intents, he was merely on her current level. However, her cultivation base was at the peak of ninth level of Heavenly Dipper, and she was absolutely much stronger compared to Lu Lan. Why was it that Ken Winshin's tone brimmed with so much confidence? Ken Winshin didn't reply, silently admitting to the fact that she was right. Fan Miu controlled her shock. She stared at Ken Winshin and spoke, Even if you comprehend the two kinds of true intent, I am the same as well. If you wish to defeat me here, I'm afraid that's impossible. Let's try it out, then, Ken Winshin replied. Okay, but you had best be careful. Fan Miu nodded, a heavy expression could be seen on her countenance. As her voice faded, water moisture permeated the air. And very swiftly, the entire platform was covered in foggy mist. Ken Winchin's vision was hindered, he actually could no longer see Fan Miu. True intent of water? Ken Winchin's perception stretched out. However at this moment, a loud discordant noise caused his heart to pound. And just when he wanted to seal his hearing. The formless sound waves had already rushed into his sea of consciousness. When the frequency of sound reached a certain level, it would become extremely disruptive to humans. If an ordinary human were to hear this sound wave, they would instantly clutch their head in agony as they rolled on the floor, shrieking in misery. It was simply unendurable and even for someone like Ken Winshin, his perception was cut off. Right now, there was only chaos in his mind. And what's more terrifying was that right now, he was simply like a blind man. He couldn't see, he couldn't hear, his perception was blocked. In a sense, he had been truly blinded. No wonder Wu Tang directly conceded, Ken Wenshin mused. If there was an opponent with merely two true intents, Wu Tang would have fought valiantly for sure. But for Fan Miu, her true intents can actually complement each other in such a way, bringing out a despair to her opponents. This was why Wu Tang decided not to battle. Force. Qin Wenshin could still control a trace of his perception and sense the presence of force in the surroundings. At the same time, he also unleashed his true intent. The sound waves came in waves, Qin Wenshin lifted his palms and directly blasted them apart. After which, terrifying ice lances rained down upon him like a waterfall designed for killing. Ken Winchin brandished his ancient halberd as the demonic chi radiating from him surged, completely breaking apart the waterfall of ice. Fan Miu had a thunderstruck expression on her face, her true intent of sound actually had no way to completely block Ken Winchin's perception. He used his absolute control of force to sense where her attacks would come from. What a terrifying judgment he had. However, there was a still look of confidence in Fan Miu's eyes. This was the confidence in her own strength. Under such circumstances, even though Ken Winshin could still put up a struggle, he was after all just akin to a blind man. She was already in an undefeatable position. Right now, he could defend against ordinary attacks of hers that used her true intent. But what would happen if she used her innate techniques that were infused with her true intent? How long could Ken Winshin hold out for? As she thought of this, Fan Miu's silhouette flickered, disappearing completely in the mist. Ken Winchin was blind, but she wasn't. Her perception was as clear as ever, and she could sense everything that happened in the mist she created. The runic light in her palms towered up the sky, Fan Miu instantly rushed into the mist as a freezing cold permeated the atmosphere, even causing the spectators to shiver. She witnessed Ken Winchin's body being frozen solid. The runic light glowing in her palm transformed into an ice lance that erupted outwards with explosive might, like a gigantic glacier. Bang! Ken Winshin's body was directly struck by it, 
the ice lance buried itself deep within Ken Winchin's body. Fresh blood splattered as Ken Winchin opened his eyes, staring at her as an expression of rancor flickered within them. This scene caused Fan Miu to be dumbstruck. Ken Winchin was killed so easily by her? This is impossible, right? Fan Miu didn't even dare to believe that this was true. She had no killing intent towards Ken Winchin. Although she was slightly jealous of his talent, that reason wasn't strong enough for her to want his life. However the scene before her was so clear. Ken Winchin had truly fallen. Is this the true intent of dreams? Fan Miu's countenance changed as she explosively retreated. However, she swiftly discovered that behind her, two incarnations of Ken Winchin had appeared, eyeing her like a tiger eyeing its prey. Waving her palms, sound waves blasted out. The discordant sounds forming a cacophony in the air, slaying the two incarnations instantaneously. Blood flooded the ground, everything seemed so real. Dream first. Fan Miu's countenance turned incredibly unsightly, she had never imagined that the true intent of dreams would be like this. However today, she had experienced it, dreams were also in reality. Only maybe after Ken Winchin retracted his dream for switch she awaken. Those incarnations of Ken Winchin she killed had already disappeared. She was now in a dreamscape Ken Winchin had created, her perception of reality was blurred. Fan Miu continued retreating. Countless incarnations of Ken Winchin unceasingly appeared, but they were all killed by her. After she retreated for a long period of time, she discovered that all those Ken Winchins she killed appeared once again and were moving in her direction. This scene caused Fan Miu to stand there stunned. The true intent of dreams was much more fearsome than what she expected. Ken Winchin was the ruler of this reality. Unless she could shatter his dream, she was doomed to remain stuck in here. A struggle flashed in Fan Miu's eyes. A moment later, she stated, You've won. As the sound of her voice faded, those incarnations of Ken Winchin all vanished. At this instant, Fan Miu discovered that although she was sure she had retreated a very far distance, she was actually still standing at her original spot. This meant that right from the very start, she had already been drawn into Ken Winchin's dreamscape. Fan Miu felt her entire body perspiring cold sweat as she shuddered involuntarily. The true intent of dreams could even influence her perception? She thought she had moved, yet she remained motionless. She realized to her shock that she wasn't merely in Ken Winchin's dreamscape, she was in a dream of her own as well. The dream first in the air dissipated into the wind. Fan Miu understood at that moment where Ken Winchin's confidence came from. He possessed an extremely rare true intent. What a terrifying experience. Fan Miu also understood why she couldn't break free of the dream. Because she didn't even know when she entered the dream, how could she break free? Thinking that she was moving, but yet, in reality, she was not. Unless somebody attacked her and agitated her nerves and subconsciousness, there was no way she could awaken with her own will without an external stimulus. I've lost, you are right. The era is already changing, and you are already the brand new era. I hope you can last as long as possible, until you become a legend. Fan Miu swiftly adjusted her mood from being defeated as she smiled at Ken Winchin. You are very strong as well. If I were proficient in some other true intent, it would truly be very difficult to defeat you, Ken Winchin seriously stated. Fan Miu's true intents complemented each other perfectly, robbing others of their senses. The two of them conversed like friends, yet the hearts of the spectators below the platform were all rumbling with great shock. Ken Winchin actually won, he became the sole victor today. Even such a powerful opponent like Wu Tang had to concede in the face of Fan Miu, yet Ken Winchin could actually force Fan Miu to concede. As one of the heirs suppressing geniuses, Fan Miu had a cultivation base at the ninth level of Heavenly Dipper, as well as having comprehended two true intents. Yet such a character also fell to best Ken Winchin? In the Heavenly Dipper realm, there are truly too few characters left that could be a match for Ken Winchin. You don't need to be so humble. After all your cultivation base is only at the seventh level of Heavenly Dipper. When you break through to the ninth level, how terrifying will you be? By that time I believe you will have already comprehended four kinds of true intents. With those, 
In addition to your innate techniques and various powerful methods, I believe that you would even be able to jump an entire realm and fight against a celestial phenomenon ascendance. After Fan Miu spoke, the screen of light parted. The two of them exchanged smiles and stepped out. I've lost. Maybe there's still a distance between his current abilities to the so-called title of Unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper, but I believe that the title would belong to him sooner or later, Fan Miu laughed as she spoke to the crowd. There would only be a single person who could truly have the title of being unrivaled in the Heavenly Dipper realm. It wasn't realistic to assume that Ken Wenshin had the capability right now to assume this title, there were still other opponents out there who had comprehended four kinds of intent. For those characters, there was no way for Ken Wenshin to defeat them right now. But he would definitely be able to do so in the future. After speaking, Fan Miu departed. The gazes of the other spectators all landed on Ken Wenshin. Who would have thought that Ken Wenshin, who only had a cultivation base at the seventh level of Heavenly Dipper, would be the sole victor of the grand battle? And just like what Fan Miu has said, the era really was changing. Staring at that magnificent figure, many were looking forward to his future. There were people who were anticipating it, there were those who were happy, yet there were nationally those who wanted nothing more than for Ken Wenshin to die. For example, those from Grand Shang, from the Supreme D Clan, from the Violent Thunder Sect. They all hoped that Ken Wenshin would die on the sacred battle platform, yet the reality was that the experts they sent up were the one who died instead. Not only did Ken Wenshin not die, he became even stronger and grew more dazzling than before. Ken Wenshin. Yet another amazing character is born in the Battle Sword sect, the spectators mused. Through these few years, first there was Lin Shuai who shook the world with his name, and after that, there was Ji Fiaixu of the Eight Terra suppressing geniuses. Right now, there was another, Ken Wenshin. What a terrifying sect the Battle Sword sect was. At this moment, a powerful aura suddenly gushed forth. The spectators soon discovered there was a man standing right in the air, above everyone's heads. This person seemed incomparably solemn. Both his eyes were like lightning, and a fearsome strength could be felt exuding from him. His gaze swept past the crowd, akin to sharp swords that could pierce the hearts of people. He then glanced at Ken Wenshin as he spoke, the nine great sects, heed my command. Summon the Heavenly Dipper Sovereigns with the strongest combat prowess in your sex, and have them gathered at the Royal Sacred Sect three days from now. Also for the other major powers, if you have any outstanding disciples, you can send them along as well. The tone of this person was beyond imposing, even when he was speaking to the nine great sects. Comparatively, he was much more relaxed when speaking to the other major powers in the Royal Sacred Region. After all, the nine great sects were factions under the royal sacred sect. But even considering this, the status of the speaker was definitely extraordinary and was sufficient to shock the hearts of the crowd. Chapter 630 The Purpose of the Royal Sacred Sect Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash This person was an expert from the core faction of the royal sacred sect. Those from this faction were the true controllers of the royal sacred sect and only people from this faction could command the nine great sects, hence the tone of his voice used. However, the spectators were all taken aback. This battle on the sacred battle platform shocked the entire royal sacred region, and there were several reclusive sects and ancient clans all gathered here. Why did the Royal Sacred Sect choose to make such an announcement in a place where the vast majority of geniuses was gathered? With regards to the absolute hegemon of the Royal Sacred Region, the common populace didn't really understand it. After several geniuses of the Royal Sacred Region entered the Royal Sacred Sect, the things they did within were essentially unknown to the others. Now, they were thinking what sort of achievements Ken Wenshin would have if he entered the Royal Sacred Sect. Not only that, for those truly powerful characters within the Royal Sacred Sect, how powerful were they exactly? If Ken Wenshin, this heaven chosen who exuded unmatched magnificence, were to be compared to the core disciples of the Royal Sacred Sect that had been specially nurtured, who would be more outstanding? This question was something they would likely never know. After entering the Royal Sacred Sect, those characters would only be within the sect 
and no longer show their faces by combating on a public stage. The Battle Sword sect, as well as the other great sects, also had their suspicions. Why would the Royal Sacred Sect suddenly summon such a large number of geniuses? Amongst the crowd from the Battle Sword sect, there were two sword sovereigns who had arrived. They were the Flame Mountain Sword Sovereign, as well as the Desolate Mountain Sword Sovereign. The two of them sat on the same row, yet there was a middle-aged expert sitting right between them. When this middle-aged expert heard the words of the Royal Sacred Sex representative, his expression turned incredibly solemn as his brows twitched. An expression of unhappiness could be seen flickering in his eyes and both sword sovereigns were staring at him. It appeared as though they were conversing via voice transmissions. May we inquire what is this about? An expert from an ancient sect asked. You don't need to ask too many details now. Make your own decision whether to send your geniuses or not, the representative stated emotionlessly, as though he didn't really care about the other major powers that were not of the nine great sects at all. This made the others from major powers all gain an expression of contemplation on their faces. Three days later, we will bring our disciples there, an expert from the violent thunder sect spoke. After which, the others of the nine great sects all mirrored his attitude and expressed that they would head over to the Royal Sacred Sect in three days' time. The Royal Sacred Sect is summoning so many geniuses, it shouldn't be a bad thing, the major powers all speculated, as decisiveness filled their hearts. Fine, three days later I will wait for all of you outside the Royal Sacred Sect, the representative spoke again. After which, his silhouette flickered as he soared through the air and vanished. Is there anyone who still wishes to step on the sacred battle platform? The administrator of the sacred battle platform suddenly spoke. No one replied. For the battle today, Ken Wenshin had swept through all the heaven chosen who participated. Fan Miu and Wu Tang both similarly exuded extraordinary brilliance. If one really wanted to challenge any of the three of them, they would have to have comprehended at least two true intents. For these kind of characters, it would be extremely rare as the majority of them would have already chosen to break through to celestial phenomenon. June your brother Ken. At this moment, Lin Shuai suddenly called out. Ken Wenchen turned his gaze in that direction as Lin Shuai nodded his head, beckoning him to come over. After arriving beside Lin Shuai, he only saw Lin Shuai shifting his gaze to the character between the two sword sovereigns as he stated solemnly, June your brother Ken, this man is our master uncle the junior apprentice brother of the ancestor of our battle sword sect. He is the representative of the battle sword faction of the royal sacred sect and wishes to invite you to take a look around the royal sacred sect. Are you interested? Ken Winchin stared at the middle-aged man as he bowed, I shall naturally listen to the wishes of senior. After this matter, he was simply too dazzling with too many pairs of eyes all riveted on him. There were also quite a few people who wanted to kill him, and although his strength had almost reached the peak, he was still insufficient to challenge any of the great sex. Right now, this senior was inviting him so as to protect him, why would he reject the battle sword sex kind intentions? In that case, let's move out, the middle-aged man nodded and smiled at Ken Winchen. Today he finally met Ken Winchen and indeed this young man before him was just as rumored, exuding unmatched magnificence throughout his generation. He was truly a good seedling and in the future, he would definitely be one of the characters at the peak of the Royal Sacred Region. MHM, can I bring my friends along as well? Ken Winchin inquired. Naturally. The middle-aged man nodded his head. He then smiled when he looked in Mo King Chung's direction. These two juniors were truly a compatible match. Ken Winchin slowly walked to the side of Mo King Chung. The two of them locked their gazes and shared a smile. Ken Wenchen then held her hand only to find that Mo King Chung's hands were icy cold. Traces of guilt filled his heart, he had made her worry again. In actuality, the grand battle on the sacred battle platform was extremely dangerous. If it wasn't for him having that sudden spark of insight, how could it be so easy for him to kill Yi Shi and Lu Lan? Ken Wenchen then started, he saw a figure in the crowd that silently turned, preparing to depart. He involuntarily called out, Kinger. That figure halted, before slowly turning back as she saw Keen Wenchen holding Mo King Chung's hand, moving towards her direction. What's wrong? 
Qian Wenchen asked. I will return to the battle sword sect first, King Er hugged little rascal in her arms and spoke in a low voice. Qian Wenchen stared at King Er, feeling pain in his heart. He also didn't know where this feeling came from. When he saw King Er back then, she told him that he no longer needed her. At that time, he thought that she would leave, disappearing forever. For some reason, an incomparable sorrow weighed down in his heart. It was only when Kinger informed him of her decision not to leave that he finally felt better. After that, Kinger came with him to the sacred battle platform. But now, she actually said she wanted to leave? However right now, Ken Wenchen was holding on to Mo King Jing's hand and he didn't know how to stop her. I'm leaving, Kinger softly stated as she turned away once more. Kinger at this moment, a gentle and melodious voice drifted over. King Er once again stopped her steps, as she turned and stared at Mo King Jin. She only saw Mo King Jin walking up and smiling sweetly at her. King Er, why don't we go together? I have no companion, can you accompany me? A startled expression flashed through King Er's emotionless eyes. She stared at Mo King Jin, only to see a smile flickering in her eyes. King Er didn't know how to reject her and after a moment, she found herself replying, Okay. Thank you, Kinger. Mo King Jin took a step forward, her eyes filled with gratitude. She knew everything Kinger had done for Ken Wenchen. Things that she never had a chance to do. Both of them were women. Maybe Mo King Jin's understanding of Kinger was deeper even when compared to Ken Wenchen's. The originally ice cold Kinger was actually in a panic now. Right now, there was some intent to dodge in her eyes, containing traces of confusion. Two celestial beauties. Little Rascal returned to his original form and whined in a baby voice. It stretched out its paw, swiping down Kinger's veil and at this moment, everyone in the surroundings were all stunned by her beauty. Only then did they understand why that little demon said that there were two celestial beauties. What an apt description. Mo King Jing alone was already incomparably gorgeous. And this woman who wore the veil, her beauty was an otherworldly one, comparable to fairies. Her ice-cold demeanor was akin to the purest snow lotus, pure and untainted. How beautiful, many sighed in their hearts. Yet another beauty on the same level as Mo Qingjing and Lin Zianer. Even Lin Zianer was stunned as an astonished expression flashed across her face. After which, a light smile flickered in her eyes. This fellow was truly awesome, beyond her expectations. However right now. The ones who were shocked the most was undoubtedly Wang Yunfei, Shen Jing, Rong Yen, Moon, and the others. For Shen Jing and Rong Yen, they treated the veiled woman just like how they treated Ken Wenshin, kicking both of them away and sending them to Moon. They had never even looked straight at Ken Wenshin as well as this woman, yet the beauty of this woman was so radiant that even if Shen Jing were to stand beside her, Shen Jing's beauty would dim and lose all its luster. Kinger smacked down, aiming for Little Rascal's head while Cold lay staring at it. That little puppy let out whimpering noises. After this Ken Wenchen, Mo King Jin, and Kinger walked back to those from the battle sword sect as all of them soared into the air and departed. He left. Fan Miu, Wu Tang, as well as the experts from the other major powers stared at the departing back of Ken Wenchen, feeling a myriad of emotions in their hearts. The Royal Sacred Sect the hegemony of this era. The vast palaces were so tall that it seemed their peaks could touch the sky. At the entrance of the sect, countless bodies clad in armor stood around. The experts here were as common as clouds, protecting the royal sacred sect. Inside here, there was a cloud heaven ladder that was over hundred feet tall. Slowly walking up, one could reach the interior of the royal sacred sect. Ken Wenchen and the others ascended up it before moving in a certain direction, entering another vast palace. This was none other than the palace occupied by the Battle Sword faction. Wenchen, come with me, that senior from the Battle Sword sect smiled at Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen nodded, he brought Mo Qingcheng and Kinger together as he followed after. Not long later, they came to a certain location. He only saw there was an old man standing with his hands folded behind his back who was currently staring at him with a playful expression in his eyes. That shameless smile brought back memories of a time long ago. A. Ken Wenchen and Kinger both stood there stunned. 
they had actually seen this old man before. Back then when they encountered danger in the Zhuang King city and were pursued by the various major powers into the mountains, they met a strange old man there that wanted to accept Ken Wenshin and Kinger as his disciples. But eventually, he was rejected by them. Little bastard, you still can't escape from my bombs, muahaha. The old man stared at Ken Wenshin, laughing shamelessly with his hands behind his back. You undying old fart. Don't tell me you are the ancestor of the battle sword sect? Ken Wenshin cursed in a low voice. He suddenly understood many things. Back then, why did his senior brother Lin Shuai appear in Zhuang King City, and why was there a rumor stating that the upper echelons of the battle sword sect started the whole disciple recruitment event with the location designated at Zhuang King City? Looking at this old man now, how could Ken Wenshin still not understand? The others in the surroundings all perspired madly, badly shocked by Ken Wenshin's words. Their esteemed, lofty ancestor was actually called an undying old fart by a junior. The old man also stood there stunned. He blew air through his beard and glared at Ken Wenshin, mm, you have guts indeed. Old fart, just tell me what's the purpose of the royal sacred sect this time around. Ken Wenshin didn't give him any face at all. At the very end. He discovered that him entering the battle sword sect was part of the plan machinated by this old fart. How could he still be civil with his words? Who? The old man glared at Ken Wenshin, his eyes widening as he scolded in a low voice, Consider yourself ruthless. Little breath, the reason why the royal sacred sect is summoning so many geniuses of the other powers is because there's an immortal palace and it needs you all to explore it. It's extremely dangerous to enter this immortal palace. The royal sacred sect has probed it for many years, but they still hadn't discovered many of its secrets. This time, they are planning to gather all the terrifying characters of the Heavenly Dipper realm and send them in to investigate. You must be careful not to let yourself be buried within it, and must absolutely not underestimate the strength of these people. Some of these were heaven chosen nurtured from the core faction of the royal sacred sect. There are many people at the Heavenly Dipper Realm still stronger compared to you. Immortal Palace? Ken Wenshin's eyes flashed sharply. Yes, an Immortal Palace. The Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace. This should be something left behind by an extremely terrifying character. Even the sect leader of the Royal Sacred Sect, an Immortal, has no way to forcibly barge into it. You can very well imagine how powerful the master of the Immortal Palace was back in the past. As the sound of the old man faded, Ken Wenshin's heart violently pounded. The Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace Chapter 631, Rejection of Invitation Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash The Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace, how could Ken Wenshin forget it? His other true self, Deep Yon, had obtained the inheritance from the founding emperor of Grand Xia when in the royal tomb. The Xia emperor passed him a key, and that key had always been in Deep Yon's possession since then. How ancient was the founding emperor of Grand Xia, the Xia emperor? Back then he barged into the immortal palace, one could only venture a guess as to how ancient that immortal palace already was back then. He still remembered that the Xia emperor told Deep Yon that the great dream immortal art, along with several other treasures, was obtained from that place. The Xia Emperor didn't really venture into the core of that immortal palace, and his level of strength back then wasn't sufficient to fully grasp the secrets of that place. He was only someone who took a risk, and that risk eventually allowed him to build an entire empire. This was the reason why the Grand Xia Empire had the Vermilion Bird as its totem beast. Right now, Ken Wenshin actually learned that the reason why the Royal Sacred Sect was summoning so many heaven chosen from all the major powers of the Royal Sacred Region was because they wanted to explore the Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace. How could he not be surprised? Seems like it's about time for Li Dian to exit the Royal Tomb of Grand Xia. Ken Wenshin's eyes flashed with sharpness. Since he was about to venture into the Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace, he would naturally need the key in Li Dian's hand. Although he still didn't know how to use the key, it was always better to be prepared. That key, not even the royal sacred sect might have a similar one. You have a plan? 
The old ancestor smiled as he noticed the light sparkling in Keen Wenshin's eyes. Will the royal sacred sect use us as mere cannon fodder? Qin Wenshin asked. I don't know about that, but I wouldn't exclude that possibility. A similar bright glow flashed in the eyes of the old man. The core faction was the faction in control of the royal sacred sect and among them there were some extremely terrifying characters in the heavenly dipper realm. As to what the royal sacred sect really wanted to do, those not of the core faction could only speculate. Upon hearing the words of the old man, Ken Wenjin understood that the old man was reminding him. As to whether or not one would be a cannon fighter, that ultimately depended on one's strength. Are these two your little girlfriends? The old man stared at Mo Qingjing and Kinger as a sneaky smile appeared on his face. For some reason, even that smile looked quite shameless when on the face of this old man. Mo Qingjing and Kinger's gaze landed on Qin Wenchen at the same time. Qin Wenchen silently cursed this old man for being a bastard and after which, he only heard little rascal speaking in a baby voice, that's right. Bang. King arraign another slap over. Little Rascal was directly smashed into the crowd as whimpering sounds echoed out. It stared at Kinger with an aggrieved expression as it spoke, You bully me. Wenchen, in the future after you marry her, you have to help me bully her back. Ken Wenchen's face was completely filled with black lines, and as he saw Kinger's cold gaze turning in his direction, he couldn't help but to shiver while silently cursing Little Rascal in his heart. When he returned, he would definitely teach Little Rascal a lesson it would never forget. Hey hey, are you interested in becoming my disciple? The old man asked as he stared at Kinger. Nope, Kinger icily replied, causing a stunned look to appear on the face of the old man. When he saw how the other members of the Battle Sword sect gazed at him, his heart exploded in sweat. All his face today was completely thrown away by these two little dolls in front of him. This lord is only joking around with you. Yup, just joking around, the old man stated with a straight face after coughing a couple times okay go, just go. With your little bitch of talent, I can't even be bothered to provide guidance to you all. Okay, Ken Wenchen wasn't polite, he instantly turned and departed. The others stared at him as a look of comprehension filled their eyes. Why are the whole lot of you still not scramming yet? The old man violently cursed, and a moment later, everyone ran away with their tails between their legs. Such speed was truly admirable. The period of three days flowed by very quickly. There were many peak-tier Heavenly Dipper Sovereigns who arrived at the Royal Sacred Sect. There were young cultivators among these groups of sovereigns, and there were also middle-aged cultivators over a hundred years old. They came from the various major powers and were now all gathered here. Although the vast majority of the major powers had no idea what the royal sacred sect was planning, they didn't wish to miss an opportunity. It was extremely rare for the royal sacred sect to issue such a command, and since they wanted to gather so many experts, there must be a very important event coming up. After entering the gates of the royal sacred sect, climbing the over a hundred feet ladder, and passing by the various palaces of the factions within, the experts from the major powers gathered at an extremely vast training field. Qin Wenchen also arrived, and as his perception swept out, he actually felt a faint sense of pressure. All these characters that came here, although they might not be as famous as an heiress suppressing genius, the auras they exuded were all at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. Evidently, these people had all comprehended at least one kind of true intent. And among the crowd, Ken Wenchen also saw Fan Miu and Wu Tang. Ken Wenchen, you came too. Wu Tang and Fan Miu smiled when they noticed Ken Wenchen walking over. Although they were opponents on the sacred battle platform, they were all extremely impressed by each other. Especially towards Ken Wenchen, such an opponent was truly worthy of respect. MHM, Ken Wenchen nodded and smiled in response. The gazes of several people turned in this direction looking at Ken Wenchen. Soon, there were even whispers as they started discussing him. Recently, Ken Wenchen's name shook the world again. In fact, in these few months, there were no other characters in the Heavenly Dipper realm who were as famous as him in the Royal Sacred Region. Top Ranker of the Immortal Martial Realm, The Killing of the Crown Prince of Grand Shang, 
causing of death of one of the elders of the royal sacred sect, and three days ago, he fought a grand battle against heroes of the younger generation, killing Rishi of the Supreme D clan and eventually, becoming the sole victor. However, the eyes of many in the crowd was filled with cold intent. An example were those heaven chosen from Grand Shang Empire as well as the Violent Thunder sect, they were all filled with maliciousness towards him. Other than this, because Ken Wenchen indirectly caused the death of the Royal Sacred Sect Elder, there were many disciples of the Royal Sacred Sect who didn't really like Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen. At this moment a voice drifted over. Ken Wenchen shifted his gaze in the direction and realized that it was none other than that imposing figure who had appeared at the sacred battle platform three days ago. He spoke to Ken Wenchen, come with me. After speaking, he turned and soared away. Ken Wenchen walked out of the crowd and followed the person. After soaring away for some time, that person halted and turned to face Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen asked, Senior, what can I do for you? I'm someone from the core faction of the Royal Sacred Sect. I'm sure that you already know this faction is the true controller of the Royal Sacred Sect. I wish to extend an invitation for you to join our core faction, that person spoke to Ken Wenchen, formerly issuing an invitation to him. Before this, they had already invited Hua Taixu. They didn't act to invite Ken Wenchen then because they were in consideration of the feelings of the Grand Shang faction. But after Ken Wenchen's extraordinary performance on the sacred battle platform, they decided to formally invite Ken Wenchen. Senior, as for joining the Royal Sacred Sect, isn't it the same if I continue cultivating with the seniors of the Battle Sword Sect since they are a faction of the Royal Sacred Sect as well? Ken Wenchen probed. Although he knew he was tricked by the ancestor of the Battle Sword Sect, he was still grateful in his heart. Now that there was an invitation for him to join the core faction, he naturally had to understand things more clearly. Not the same. That person shook his head. If you joined us, you will belong to the core faction. And even though this matter might cause those from the Grand Shang faction to be unhappy, you can just ignore them. We will settle them for you, concluding the matter once and for all. In addition to that, if you choose to join us, you will also enjoy an advantage with regards to this trip to the Immortal Palace. That person leaked some info, yet he didn't make things completely clear. Even so, they were willing to not pursue and settle the grudge formed because of the death of the Elder from the Grand Shang faction back then. From this, one could see how important they considered Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen also naturally understood this point. However, wanting him to join the core faction? Ken Wenchen couldn't help but feel disloyal if he joined them. Although the Battle Sword Sect was part of the Royal Sacred Sect, there were still differences, after all. If he, who originated from the Battle Sword Sect, joined the core faction like this instead of staying with the Battle Sword faction, how could he face himself? Senior, Junior wishes to have more time to carefully consider this, Ken Wenchen replied, rejecting the invitation in a covert manner. That person started, but recovered immediately as he continued, We will move out soon. Think carefully before confirming your decision. This is an extremely important matter. Ken Wenchen muttered to himself. Eventually he inclined his head and stared at the other party, My apologies, at least as of now, I still wish to remain in the Battle Sword sect. Such a reply evidently caused the man to be taken aback. An expression of astonishment flashed on his face before he nodded his head, Sure, you can go back then. Junior takes his leave then. Ken Wenchen couldn't tell if the other party was happy or angry. The eyes of that person were calm with no fluctuations within. He was certainly a character that was even more terrifying compared to that elder from the royal sacred sect in the past. Ken Wenchen walked towards the crowd as many pair of eyes turned to him. He heard one person whispering, This man is none other than Keen Wenchen, the top ranker of the immortal martial realm and people even claim that he is unrivaled in the heavenly dipper realm. Unrivaled in heavenly dipper? One of the females from the royal sacred sect glanced at Ken Wenchen as she emotionlessly continued, These people not from our sect simply doesn't know how vast the earth is and how high the heavens are. Do they really understand what the so-called unrivaled in heavenly dipper means? What a joke. That's right. 
even if he is the top ranker of the immortal martial realm, that's only because we didn't participate, another person added in a low voice. Although the voices of these people were all low, but since they didn't intentionally mask their words Ken Wenshin naturally heard them. There was disdain and suspicion in their eyes when they glanced at Ken Wenshin. Naturally, there were also those whose eyes gleamed with interest. Chapter 632, Immortal Palace Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash As the hegemony of the Royal Sacred Region, the geniuses within the Royal Sacred Sect hailed from all over the world. The ones present here today were all heaven chosen. This time, the selection was only those at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper, all of them were experts that had comprehended a true intent, with extremely strong combat prowess. Although they rarely shows themselves in the outside world after joining the Royal Sacred Sect, who dared say that these geniuses were weak? Any one of them would be able to shake the world if they appeared outside. Although they weren't as dazzling as the eight era suppressing geniuses, they were not too far away in comparison. Considering that, and the fact that right now a young external heaven chosen whose name was renowned in the entire royal sacred region appeared in front of them, and there was even an elder who died because of him, how could any of these geniuses from the royal sacred sect be on friendly terms with Ken Wenshin? Would they even feel that they were inferior compared to him? Ken Wenshin swept a glance at the crowd, his countenance as calm as ever as he walked past them. These heaven chosen all belong to different camps. They must be people from the various major powers. Ken Wenshin. At this moment a voice rang out as Ken Wenshin halted his steps. Turning towards the direction of the voice, he discovered that the speaker was a female with a tall and willowy figure, both her legs were slim and sleek, giving a sense of strength and flexibility. Her beautiful eyes regarded Ken Wenshin as she crossed her arms in front of her chest. Her eyes sparkled with a smile as she spoke. I have heard that you are very powerful, actually comprehending two true intents on the battle sacred platform, defeating ninth level heavenly dipper sovereigns with the cultivation base at the seventh level. Ken Wenshin calmly regarded the woman, he didn't bother replying. The smile in her eyes was replaced by a teasing look, maybe you are really very powerful, but those ninth level heaven chosen you defeated cannot even be called heaven chosen from my perspective let alone being termed as an air suppressing genius. Utterly laughable. Over here, there are many from my royal sacred sect. Out of my apprentice brothers and sisters, there are several who have already comprehended two true intents, or three, or even four. If you fight against them, what do you think your chances of victory would be? Not even 10%. You will lose for sure. A cold smile hung on the face of the woman as she answered her own question. Ken Wenshin's brows furrowed slightly. Fan Miu was among the crowd, and the words this woman spoke were not only a provocation to him, they were also a humiliation to Fan Miu. Ken Wenshin remained silent. He noticed that there were around four to five others around the woman. And the eyes which they used to stare at Ken Wenshin with were all incomparably cold. Among this group of people, there were a few who exuded auras of high arrogance. They were undoubtedly nobility from the Royal Shang clan, experts from the Grand Shang faction of the Royal Sacred Sect. The elder who died back then was their senior. Just from the aura exuded from these people, Ken Wenshin could already surmise this point. So, Ken Wenshin finally spoke, in an icy manner. Retract your arrogant gaze. In here, there are many whom you have to look up to. The woman's eyes got even colder when she heard Ken Wenshin's response. A faint killing intent also emanated forth from her. Your cultivation base now is at the ninth level of Heavenly Dipper, not bad at all. How many true intents have you comprehended? Ken Wenshin casually asked. A look of puzzlement flashed on the woman's face before she proudly replied, three kinds. Wow. Ken Wenshin nodded his head and asked again. Then in that case when you were at the seventh level of Heavenly Dipper, how many true intents did you comprehend? The eyes of the woman instantly stiffened, as she suddenly understood Ken Wenshin's meaning. She coldly laughed, comprehension of a true intent depends on luck and circumstances. It doesn't mean that one would be more powerful even if they comprehended a true intent earlier. Oh, I see. Ken Wenshin nodded. 
After speaking he continued forward as a languid sounding voice echoed out in the air. Back when your cultivation was at the same level as me, maybe I would only need a single slap to kill you. If that's the case, would you have said what you said to me just now? It doesn't mean that one would be more powerful even if they comprehended a true intent earlier. After which, Ken Winchin shook his head as though feeling sorry for her idiocy. After she heard that, a murderous look flashed in the woman's eyes as she glared hatefully at Ken Winchin. Senior sister, he's only a small-time character, why allow his words to bother you? A young man standing at the side gently smiled. Although his words were far from a consolation, the woman still nodded her head. But still, her cold gaze was still riveted on Ken Winchin. Ken Winchin walked to the side of Fan Miu and Wu Tang, nodding his head to them as he asked, Do you all want to form an alliance? I have two more seniors from the Battle Sword faction over there. After speaking, Ken Winchin pointed to a random direction where his two senior apprentice brothers were. Sure, Fan Miu smiled and nodded. Wu Tang naturally had no objections as well. They all could tell that the people here were all in their own small groups, based on their sex and clans. The core faction was one group, the nine great sects were nine other groups, the two empires were also two other groups respectively. The core faction was the core of the royal sacred sect, acting as the leader while the other groups would compete against each other, survival of the fittest. At this moment, several people walked over. There were seven people in that group and they were following the person who offered an invitation to Ken Winchin to join the core faction earlier. These seven all gave Ken Winchin an extraordinary feeling. Their cultivation bases were all either at the eighth or ninth level of Heavenly Dipper and they radiated with vitality, yet kept their auras retracted. Their expressions were as calm as water, but occasionally there would flicker of a light that could stir the souls of others. Huate Aixu Ken Winchin saw a familiar figure amongst the seven. It was none other than Hu Wataxu, who was also invited to join the core faction. In the immortal martial realm, he, Hu Wataxu, and Gulufin were the only three that completed the path of monuments, all of them had a great harvest. After which, Hu Wataxu chose to join the royal sacred sect and evidently, he should have already comprehended a true intent or he wouldn't have appeared here today. The Royal Sacred Sect issued a summons to all of you talented geniuses of our Royal Sacred Region because we want to bring you to a very unique place. This place is exceptionally dangerous, but there is plenty of great fortune and opportunities within it. From now onwards, all of you are to obey the commands of Xia Sheng. These seven will guide you all on what to do. Understood? That imposing figure who invited Ken Wenshin earlier spoke to everyone his words causing Keen Winshin to think back to what that man had told him before. Of course, the things he told the others now was different. For those from the core faction, they could command the others. This indicated to Ken Winshin that if they obtained any benefits after entering the Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace, everything would benefit these seven first. If he had agreed to join the core faction earlier, he too would be one of the leaders, enjoying preferential treatment. However, the geniuses that gathered here are all exceedingly arrogant figures. It wasn't going to be so easy to command them unless these seven were all extremely powerful individuals. Especially for the Xia Xing whose name was mentioned earlier, he should be one of those monstrous existences in the Heavenly Dipper realm that had already comprehended a total of four kinds of true intent. He is Xia Xing. At this moment Fan Miu by the side of Ken Wenshin exclaimed. Ken Winchin glanced at her as he transmitted his voice back, you know of him? Naturally. Back then Xia Xing was extremely famous in the royal sacred region, he made his name earlier compared to Gulufan. Now the people don't know of him because he joined the royal sacred sect very early on, and remained within for his cultivation. Who would have thought that he still hasn't broken through to celestial phenomenon yet in other words? Since he has chosen to remain at the Heavenly Dipper realm to consolidate his foundation, this means that his strength now must certainly be at an unfathomably monstrous level, Fan Miu replied. Qian Wenchen nodded his head in agreement. It was evident that Xia Xing would be very strong. If not, how could he be the leader out of these seven from the core faction? Understood. We will listen to the command of Senior Xia Xing. 
The experts from the various powers all spoke. They were all filled with respect for those whose talent was high enough to be in the core faction. And with the strength of Xia Xing, it was only natural that he would be the leader. Since this is the case, all of you make sure your preparations are ready. We are moving out right now, that expert spoke. The others all nodded as they soared into the air, leaving the royal sacred sect. Xia Xing's group, which consisted of the core disciples, had a total of seven. As to the other groups, some had more people in them and some had less. They totaled around a hundred, and there would be a core member which was the leader of each group. For example, the leader of the group which were made of up those from the Grand Shang Empire was a white-haired young man which gave people a strange feeling. One couldn't tell his age, and the girl who wanted to humiliate Ken Wenshin earlier was currently standing quietly by his side. Other than this, for those like Fan Miu or Wu Tang, and those who had no relations with the major powers, all of them formed a group or randomly joined the groups of others. The group that made up of those from the Battle Sword sect had the least number of people. If Fan Miu and Wu Tang were discounted, there would only be three people, Ken Wenshin, as well as two disciples from the Battle Sword faction, Quinn, and Psycho. Quinn had a scholarly bearing and radiated justice. His cultivation base was at the ninth level of Heavenly Dipper. Psycho's bearing was completely different, a faint evil air exuded from him, giving off an ammonic aura. The two of them walking together made it seem as though they weren't members of the same sect. Just one glance was sufficient to tell that the personalities of these two were extremely different. Fame's strength is extremely high, his cultivation base is at the ninth level and he has comprehended a total of four kinds of true intent. Tu Ling is the leader of the group from the Violet Thunder sect, his strength is similar to Bame. We have to be careful of the two of them. Quinn wasn't really acquainted with Ken Wenshin, he only sought to remind this junior brother of his. Bame was none other than that white-haired young man, while Tu Ling was a short and muscular-looking man. He stood at the forefront of those from the Violet Thunder sect, while others respectfully stood behind him. He was most definitely a core member of the Violet Thunder sect. Ken Wenchin silently memorized these characters. All of these people were stronger than him. The ancestor of the Battle Sword sect wasn't trying to frighten him. The leaders of these groups were truly extremely terrifying characters. They moved for a period of two days before they arrived at their destination. They were now actually at the borders of the Royal Sacred Region, in a location near the Illusion Mountain of Grand Zhu Empire. The expert from the Royal Sacred Sect that led them here halted and took out a resplendent compass-looking object to orientate himself before leading them deep into the Illusion Mountain Range in search of the Vermilion Bird Immortal Palace. The various mountains here were akin to snakes and dragons, horizontally piling up on the earth. After some time, they entered a secret realm and when they looked up, they could see that above the misty clouds there was an incomparably vast immortal palace floating there. Back then in the royal tomb of Grand Shia, Ken Wenshin had already seen this place before. Now that he was here in his true body, he discovered that he couldn't even see the end of this immortal palace with a single glance. This seemed to be a palace that drifted over to this place from an outside world. The hearts of the crowd were all numb with shock, and they had no way to describe the majesty of this sight. What sort of place is this? Fan Miu's heart was pounding. This floating palace that was so vast that it seemed to have no boundaries, it was almost inconceivable to imagine how powerful the character who had constructed it was. Not only Fan Miu, everyone present here all felt a tremor from their soul as they inclined their heads and stared at this magnificent sight. Chapter 633, Burying Immortals Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash that person of the royal sacred sect who spoke to Ken Wenshin earlier stood in front of the crowd, pointing to the immortal palace and spoke to them, this immortal palace has a very high probability that it was constructed by a true transcendent powerhouse. As for how powerful that senior was, I have no idea. But I can tell you all for sure that he was truly very strong, so strong that it exceeds the boundaries of your, and even my, imagination. In the palace, there's no need to doubt that there will be many treasures such as immortal arts and immortal ranked weapons within. For generations, there were too many people of my royal sacred sect that have entered it. 
The conclusion we eventually obtained is that celestial phenomenon ascendants will all definitely die if they step within the immortal palace. The probability of survival is the highest for people at the supreme tier of heavenly dipper that have comprehended a true intent. Hence, we summoned all of you to this place. The immortal palace is extremely dangerous, and I have told everything of importance to Xia Xing and the other six. They are the clearest regarding the situation and circumstances within the palace and hence, you all need to obey all of their orders. If Xia Xing dies within, Zai Qing is the second in command. The seven of them will be the core of this operation. For those who defy their orders, even if you survive and exit the palace, you will all still be executed. The countenance of this man was incomparably solemn. But it was evident that the royal sacred sect had already made ample preparations regarding this trip within the immortal palace. The others all felt their hearts trembling upon hearing his words. There were actually immortal arts and immortal weapons within? In that case, how powerful would the master of this palace be? They had no way to imagine that at all. Qin Wenshin was also aware that this vermilion bird immortal palace spoken by the Xia Emperor was many times more dangerous and mysterious than what he had imagined. Not only that, back then when the Xia Emperor entered it via a stroke of good fortune, his cultivation was just so coincidentally also at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. He also didn't know that celestial phenomenon ascendants couldn't enter it. If not, the Xia Emperor would have surely warned him back then. Okay. You all can enter now. Xia Xing will direct this operation. And if you really discover immortal arts or immortal weapons, pass it all to us when you exit. I can vow that the royal sacred sect would definitely not mistreat you all. You all are allowed to cultivate the immortal art if you find one. At the same time, try your best to uncover more secrets within and report to me when you are out. That person spoke again. Xia Xing stood at the forefront of the crowd. And at this moment he turned and said, follow closely behind me, there's another world within this immortal palace. Nobody knows all the secrets hidden in the palace. If you move a step wrongly, you may very well end up dying there. Move out. Xia Xing swept his gaze onto everyone, at this instant, his eyes suddenly erupted forth with an extremely cold and imposing light that struck fear in the hearts of people. As the sound of his voice faded, he led the way and moved towards the entrance of the immortal palace. Let's go, Quinn stated. Ken Winchin and his group moved forwards as well. The hundred over people all stepped upon the stairs towards the entrance of the immortal palace and advanced upward step by step. Every step they took made them feel so tiny and inconsequential in the face of the palace's majesty. Cloud and loneliness, the two of you go on ahead. Watch out for the divine inscriptions and as for the others, guard them. After they arrived at the entrance, there was a passageway with a mist akin to celestial chi permeating the air within. Even their sense of perception was severely hampered, only able to extend a very short distance ahead of them. In this passageway, other than the mist, there should be other traps and formations of divine inscriptions. The level of difficulty to counter these isn't really high, but they are all exceedingly dangerous. The instant we take a wrong step, the power packed within is sufficient to annihilate all of us. Cloud and Loneliness were two extremely famous divine inscriptionist grandmasters that were chosen for this occasion. They explained the matters to the crowd and soon after, all of them entered the passageway. Indeed, their perception could only stretch outwards to a maximum of 10 meters. In the royal tomb of Grand Shia, at the location where the Shia Emperor was buried, there was a golden pathway that didn't allow one to advance forth to obtain the key if they couldn't negate the divine inscriptions. Could it be that it was a preparation for this place? Qian Wenchen silently speculated. He had very high attainments in the field of divine inscriptions, he naturally could sense the divine inscription traps layered here. Indeed, these divine inscriptions could be negated using a peak tier 4th rank divine inscription. It wasn't really that difficult to resolve them. Cloud and Loneliness were truly exceptional in terms of their attainments and divine inscriptions as well. Evidently, they were grandmasters nurtured by the royal sacred sect. And although their speed of leading everyone forward was slow, they were extremely steady and stable. In this passageway, not a single mistake could be allowed to happen. 
Qian Wenqin was paying attention to the divine inscriptions here. In this passageway, the runic outlines of divine inscriptions here weren't a single unit but rather, they work together as a whole. As long as one disturbed a single one, a chain reaction would occur, and the following results would be extremely terrifying. Finally, they took a total of three days before finally passing through the passageway of divine inscriptions with no casualties. While on the other hand in the outside world, Deet Yan had arrived. In the mountain range of the Illusion Mountains, it was very hard for outsiders to orientate themselves. Even the experts from the Royal Sacred Sect needed that compass treasure to do so. However, Deet Yan had no need for such measures. Because since Ken Wenshin was here, he could naturally sense him. When the experts of the Royal Sacred Region standing on guard outside saw the silhouette of Deet Yan, they couldn't help but feel bewildered. A terrifying aura directly bore down on Deet Yan as one of them inquired, Who are you? Junior is from the Grand Zhu Empire, I came to the Illusion Mountains hoping to risk my life to find rare treasures, eventually discovering this place by accident. I hope that Elder can forgive my intrusion, Deet Yan politely replied. After which, he purposely shifted his gaze onto the floating immortal palace as an expression of awe and shock appeared on his face as though this was the first time he saw something this majestic and magnificent. You wish to enter? That expert earlier coldly laughed. If a seventh-level Heavenly Dipper Sovereign were to enter, he would die for sure. Such a magnificent palace, there must be countless amazing treasures within. But since this place is found by Senior first, this junior dared not enter without permission, Deep Yan bowed as he replied. No worries, if you want to enter, just enter. But don't blame me for not reminding you, this is an extremely dangerous place. With your cultivation level, you will die without a doubt, that person emotionlessly stated. Deet Yan grit his teeth as an expression of a struggle flashed on his face. But still, he opened his mouth and replied, this junior still wishes to give it a try. Fine, in that case, just go in if you want to. That expert waved his hands. Deet Yan bowed again. Many thanks to Senior. After speaking, Deet Yan continued on his path and soared upwards, stepping into the immortal palace. Reckless fool! The other experts outside remarked in disdain. While right now, Ken Wenshin and the others had already arrived at another location. This was a passageway, but there was no fog in it, nor any divine inscriptions. However, they could sense a formless energy that was unfathomably fearsome within it. Shi Hsing stared at the others. Everyone was still present, so he then spoke, In the next passageway you have to depend on yourself if you want to pass through it, others won't be able to help. The streams of light in this passageway will target one's will. You all have to be careful. Only by passing through this can we be considered to have truly entered the interior of this immortal palace. The others nodded as they entered the passageway one by one. Be careful. Qian Wenchen spoke in a low voice, Fan Mi U and Wu Tang nodded, you too. After stepping into the passageway, Qian Wenchen felt a formless energy directly rushing into his mind. It felt like there was an invisible attack trying to collapse his will. Bang, bang. Qian Wenchen instantly paled as his heart pounded. With such a sudden rush of impact, none of them were feeling good. He felt as though his head was about to explode. Clutching his head with both his hands, an expression of extreme agony flashed on his face. Even with his will, he couldn't help but to falter. What a terrifying power! Ken Wenchen's countenance turned incredibly unsightly. He grit his teeth as he continued forwards, yet he had no way to increase his speed. It was simply too painful. Right now, he could only grit his teeth and endure it. Kaka! A violet stream of light shot into him. Ken Wenshin only felt a destructive lightning energy exploding in his brain. Chi. Instantly, Ken Wenshin coughed out fresh blood as his countenance turned as pale as paper. It's actually so terrifying to such an extent. What sort of existence is the master of this immortal palace exactly? Ken Wenshin mused. Shi Hsing and the other six of the core faction walked ahead. Although they too were feeling the pain, their steps were steady. Like Ken Wenshin, they came here well prepared, it was not so easy for them to waver. We can't wait. If we delay here, 
the attacks will continue unceasingly. If we stop here, we are merely courting death, Ken Winchin mused, as he continued advancing to, trying his best to hasten his pace. The lightning unceasingly blasted into him, generating an explosive might in his sea of consciousness, threatening to wipe away his mind. Ken Winchin and the others were all geniuses from the royal sacred region. They endured through it based on their own powerful wills and determination. However for those that lagged behind, they could no longer even see the shadows of those walking ahead. The distance between these two groups had been gradually lengthened. What's this? Ken Winchin stared at the stream of light before him, it was actually a blood-colored lightning and just the sight of it filled one's heart with shivers. Who? Drawing in a deep breath, Ken Winchin didn't hesitate and continued forward, coming into contact with that stream of blood-colored lightning. The glow from it enveloped his body, Ken Winchin's sea of consciousness transformed into a sea of blood. Countless thunder blasted down from the skies, slamming into the sea, causing the waves to churn violently as the entire sea turned topsy-turvy. It was simply too terrifying. I can't stop here. Ken Winchin had already endured this on the passageway for two days, his entire person was burning with fatigue. This passageway seemed to be like a bottomless pit, it was too tormenting. Ken Winchin's blood was thrumming, he stared at the incomparably intense light as he clenched his fist. He still had many things he needed to do, how could he be forced to stop here? Didn't the Shia Emperor also pass this trial back then? Since he could do it, why can't he? As he thought of this, his will grew even firmer and he advanced forwards. This time, five days passed, but Ken Wenshin could no longer sense the flow of time. The seven days felt as long as a lifetime, he was fighting for his life at every single second. Such a torture simply filled one with endless despair, causing them to involuntarily want to give up. Ken Wenshin was exhausted, but the light that glimmered in his eyes could still stir the souls of others. What made people despair was that this was merely only the beginning. Ken Winchin walked another month on this passageway and at the very end when he exited, he came to a boundlessly vast world. The first thing he did was to collapse on the ground and close his eyes. Right now, he wanted nothing more than a bout of good sleep. After a long period of time, Ken Winchin finally opened his eyes and stared at this vast world. Ahead of him. He could see many resplendent points of light floating above the ground in this world. Each and every point of light contained a brilliance so bright that it could pierce the eyes of people looking at it. It felt that every point of light was in the form of an object floating in the air. The light from them illuminated this entire world. Some of the points of light were swords, some were ancient text akin to an immortal book. And below them, there were actually tombs. There were so many tombs with no gravestone or anything to indicate the name of the character buried underneath. Ken Winchin trembled, this was a fear born from the depths of his soul. Was this boundlessly vast world a graveyard? Those points of light, they were all tombs. But such tombs, what sort of existences were buried within them? Could it be that, this vermilion bird immortal palace, actually buried immortals? Rumble Tilda. From afar. A supreme transcendent might gushed out, so powerful that even the skies changed color. Ken Winchin only felt this entire space vibrating as though it was about to break apart as a thunderously explosive sound resounded through the air. Let me out. A voice filled with bitter rage and resentment rocked the heavens and earth. After which, a number of towering oars engulfed the entire space and each of them were so powerful that it caused Ken Winchin to tremble. Finally, there's people here again. Another bolt flashed from the blue. Not only Ken Winchin, everyone who arrived at this passageway all felt their hearts shivering. Even Xia Sheng, who knew of the circumstances within, couldn't help but to tremble at the power of those auras. Chapter 634, 80,000 Years Translator, Lord Blue Fire Xia Sheng arrived, Zai King arrived, Quinn and Psycho of the Battle Sword Sect arrived, Bame. Tuling, as well as the other leaders of their respective groups, had all also arrived. Their wills were resisting the overwhelming pressure from those towering auras. The elites chosen as the leaders of their groups were all individuals with exceptional combat prowess and people with iron wills. But not only the leaders, 
there were some other characters who also had the strength of will to resist. Shia Shang, can you tell us now? What exactly is this place? And those floating items, are they immortal ranked weapons? Those ancient texts must be immortal arts right? Bame's white hair fluttered in the wind as he asked Shia Shang. Not all of them are, but I can say for sure that the vast majority of those points of lights are immortal ranked weapons or immortal arts. Shia Shang's words caused the hearts of those here to tremble. There were actually so many? However, do not touch any of them. All of you bear this in mind, you must never ever touch those items or a calamity will descend upon us. Those immortal weapons and immortal arts are all suppressing the immortal tomb. If we touch any of them, the seal over the tombs would break and the immortals buried within would be able to come out. Are you joking? There are immortals underneath the tombs? Then why did we come here? Are you leading us to our death? Tu Ling had an extremely violent personality, a blood-colored glow flickered in his eyes as he harshly questioned. The immortals within the tombs all have their cultivations sealed. Shi Hsing drew in a deep breath as a terrifying light gleamed in his eyes. Upon hearing his words, everyone present was taken aback. Burying immortals? Sealing immortals? Who would be so terrifying? What level is their seals at? Quinn asked. No idea. Shi Hsing shook his head. All of you had better listen carefully. In this place, do not ever use fifth rank divine weapons. The instant you do, those immortals that come out of the tomb would have their cultivation base raised to the peak of celestial phenomenon and if that happens, we will all die here. As long as we don't bring out a fifth ranked weapon, the seal on them will restrict their cultivation bases to the peak of heavenly dipper. How can this be? The seal can adjust itself according to our cultivation? Is this the reason why those at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper Realm are the most suitable candidates to explore this immortal palace? Someone inquired. Yes. I can tell you for sure that even if these immortals cultivation bases are restricted to the peak of Heavenly Dipper, they can still kill us effortlessly. If it were celestial phenomenon ascendants who entered this place instead, their cultivation bases would be restricted to the peak of celestial phenomenon. Up until now. There hasn't been a single celestial phenomenon ascendant in our royal sacred region that could stand up to their strength. In the past, no matter how many peak level celestial phenomenon ascendants entered here, that many would die. Shi Hsing's words caused the hearts of everyone to be filled with trepidation. What a terrifying place. Those rowers, who are they? They are actually still alive. Someone asked. No idea. Shi Hsing shook his head. This immortal palace is simply too vast and every time our royal sacred sect sent people here, they would try to probe the secret of a single location. In any case we will wait for more people to gather before we start seizing the immortal arts. The sect has already promised us that if we obtain any, we would be allowed to cultivate it. Now, you all can roam this place. But without my orders, do not act recklessly. We have to wait for everyone to gather before we make a move. If not, don't blame me for showing no mercy. A terrifying aura suddenly gushed forth from Shia Shane, thick with killing intent as though he was warning the people present here. Ken Wenshin stood up, after which he walked about. In this boundlessly vast land of desolation, there were many tombs situated. Right now, he came before an extremely ancient looking tomb. Before him, there was a page from a book filled with ancient text floating there. Several runic words could be seen shimmering, yet his perception had no way to see through it. Somehow, an intense desire bloomed in Keen Wenshin's heart, he wanted nothing more than to step forth and grab that page away. Ridding himself of that desire, Ken Wenshin's silhouette flickered as he moved about the landscape. Right now in front of him was an ancient blood-colored long spear that radiated a towering heavenly might so powerful that it could rend this world asunder. In fact, Ken Wenshin felt his body was about to break down just by standing next to it. The blood in his body was seething and surging, totally out of his control, extremely terrifying. Not only Ken Wenshin, those who were already present all felt the temptation when they stared at the objects floating above the tombs. They all felt a rush of impulse, wanting nothing more than to grab those immortal arts and weapons away. Despite their strong wills, it was exceedingly hard to rid themselves of the temptation. 
BZZZ. Finally, in this graveyard, a terrifying whistling sound echoed through the air. In a certain direction, a beam of light broke the dome of heavens, grabbing the attention of all who ventured here. Shi He Xing's countenance grew incredibly unsightly as killing intent flashed in his eyes. Mo Yang, you are courting death. Shi He Xing roared in rage. Everyone return here and gather by my side immediately. Several figures flashed, returning to the side of Shi Xing. Qian Wenchen returned as well, his gaze now fixed on Mo Yang. Mo Yang was a heaven chosen of the Great Earth Sect. He had discovered an extremely terrifying immortal weapon that contained an overwhelming amount of earth elemental energy floating atop a tomb. Mo Yang nationally wanted to seize the item for his own. However, the instant he touched it, the tomb beneath broke apart and over there, a figure could suddenly be seen standing there. This man had a mnemonic looking countenance and his yellow hair were dancing wildly in the wind. He was clad in a brown colored long robe and his eyes were staring straight at Mo Yang. The depthless eyes of his caused the souls of everyone present to shiver. Who are you? The face of the yellow haired man was wan and swallow, yet he exuded a boundless sharpness. His eyes were locked on to Mo Yang, causing Mo Yang's entire body to involuntarily tremble from fear and terror. Are you the one who buried me in here? Stealing my treasure? Sealing my destiny? His voice seemed to came from ages long past, and as he stepped out, Mo Yang felt an incomparably heavy pressure boring down on him. His countenance pale as he repeatedly shaking his head, I'm not the one. You steal my treasure, seal my destiny, bury my soul. You should die, die. The yellow hair figure took another step forwards, as Mo Yang retreated with explosive speed. However, that figure merely stretched his palms out and grabbed the air. With an explosive sound, the earth on the ground flew up, forming a prison around Mo Yang instantly, restricting his movements and pressing down on him with enough force to bury him. You should die. A fearsome killing intent flashed in the eyes of that man. Strands of his yellow hair transformed into countless sharp swords that exploded outwards. No save me. Mo Yang's countenance flashed with despair. After which, a sharp sword penetrated through Mo Yang's head pinning him onto the ground. At this moment, Xie Xing and the others all arrived somewhere near that yellow-haired figure. Their footsteps abruptly stopped, only to see the yellow-haired figure pulling out the sword, which turned back into a strand of his yellow hair. That strand of hair glistened with blood, shining in an extremely blinding manner, yet also exuding a sense of incredible power. How powerful! The expressions of Xie Xing and the rest were all incredibly grim. The aura exuded from this man was merely at the peak of Heavenly Dipper, similar to all of them. Mo Yang wasn't an ordinary person, his combat prowess could be considered very strong as well. However, in front of this yellow-haired figure, he didn't even have the strength to resist. The eyes of the person shifted onto Xia Xing and the rest. His eyes glimmered with yellow light and just a single gaze caused everyone to perspire profusely as their souls quavered in terror. Are all of you the ones who sealed my destiny, buried my soul, stealing my treasure? That figure stared wildly at Xia Xing and the rest. After which, he mumbled to himself as he stared at the sky, and as for me, who am I? Prepare to join hands, use all our strength to kill him. Xia Xing spoke in a low voice. Everyone started to blast out their oars causing this entire space to tremble. Who, am I? That person seemed not to be aware that Xie Xing and the rest were already preparing to attack him. He was still staring at the sky when Xie Xing issued the order to surround him. Bring him under our control first. Act now. Xie Xing roared. As the sound of his voice faded, there were ancient vines, iron chains, the power of space all acting in accord, erupting forth at the same moment, trying to lock that yellow-haired figure down. Boom. The figure retracted his gaze, shifting it onto Xia Xing. The earth trembled violently as it suddenly rose up, forming a protective dome enveloping the figure within. At the same time, the attacks of Xia Xing and the rest arrived, furiously slamming onto that earth and dome, trying to break it apart. The dome broke apart, the yellow-haired figure appeared once more. However, the restrictions binding him had all already been struggled free of. Boom. 
the figure slowly step out. Just this single step caused a random opponent to be swallowed up by the great earth. He lifted his palms and slammed it forward. That casual palm strike shattered the earth, alongside with the poor victim trapped within it earlier. At the same time, the experts under Xia Xing unleashed another bout of attacks. Xia Xing's hair fluttered wildly in the wind as he punched out. Brilliant fist light flashed, even the void was trembling as the force of his punch lashed out. However, that yellow haired figure merely lifted his hands. A golden screen of light manifested before him as Xia Xing's attack landed. Rumbling sounds echoed out as cracks spread like spider webs across the golden screen of light. However, Xia Xing's attack wasn't powerful enough to shatter the defense mounted by the yellow haired figure. Is that infused with true intent? That energy seemed to resemble the ones I saw before on the path of the grass hut. It must be a fusion of true intent, yet nobody can tell which mandates are being used. This is simply too powerful. When that yellow haired figure shouted out who sealed my destiny, buried my soul, could it be that he is already dead? Or is he really an immortal whose cultivation base has been sealed? Qian Wenchen was deeply shocked. Shi Xing wasn't exaggerating facts to scare them earlier. Just any random expert that broke free of their tomb, even though his cultivation base was restricted, he could still effortlessly kill anyone among them, including Shi Xing. This yellow haired figure was an immortal. Even if his cultivation base was sealed, in the same realm, he's an unrivaled existence the owner of the true title unrivaled in Heavenly Dipper. If Ken Wenshin was as strong as him, he would definitely be the strongest in the royal sacred region. All of you get lost for me. From the void, an incomparably demonic voice echoed out, cold, sharp, his voice ringing with a tone of command. Instantly, those towering auras from before, those powerful streams of perception, completely vanished without a trace. Even Xia Xing who was currently in combat felt his heart violently pounding, although the voice was not directed at them who was the owner of that voice earlier. How powerful was he? At this moment, in a certain place inside this boundlessly vast immortal palace, two pairs of eyes penetrated through the void, staring at the scene in the graveyard. One among them was clad in black, exuding an incomparably demonic aura. His eyes were beyond sharp and his cold eyes were currently emotionlessly staring at the figures in combat. He spoke in a low voice, yet another bunch of reckless idiots who don't know the value of their lives. With such pathetic combat prowess, they can't even get through the immortal graveyard. Are you holding hope that these people would be able to acquire this immortal palace and the ultimate inheritance within this place? It has already been 80,000 years, have you not awakened from your foolish fantasy yet? Chapter 635, Burying Ten Million Immortals and Demons Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash Xia Xing and the others were all badly startled by the sounds resounding through the air, however they didn't dare to delay any longer. The yellow-haired figure which they had surrounded was simply too terrifying. Just lifting his hand was sufficient to cause an expert at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper who had comprehended a true intent to die. Fan Miu, use your sound waves to attack. At this moment, a woman's voice rang out. She was none other than an expert from the Forgotten Immortal Tower. Fan Miu nodded as a blast of formless sound waves violently gushed out, causing the eyes of the yellow haired figure to gleam with a terrifyingly cold light. He turned his gaze in the direction of Fan Miu, and Fan Miu instantly felt as though her entire body was frozen solid. After which, the yellow-haired figure waved his palms, causing a gigantic palm imprint manifested from Earth Essence to directly pin her down. Bind him! Shi Xing roared. Ancient vines manifested, restricting the yellow-haired figure once again. Cleave! Wu Tang soared up into the skies and cleaved down with indomitable might. Yet, the yellow-haired figure merely lifted his palms once more as that golden screen of light manifested transforming into a shield of great earth. Although the axe strike caused cracks to appear in it, it failed to shatter it. Qian Wenchen also advanced forward, his true intent of dreams gushing out. The yellow-haired figure halted for a moment, standing there as his hair danced in the wind. BZZ. All of a sudden, that yellow-haired figure gave a roar as he stretched his hand out towards Qian Wenchen. 
the true intent of dreams actually couldn't affect him. Ken Winchin had no way to pull him into a dreamscape. Too powerful, he was so powerful that he could break through any kind of true intent. Rumble. A terrifying whistling sound rang out as Sword Chi slashed through the sky. Quinn's white robed figure appeared, flying upon his sword akin to an immortal being descending from the heavens. Instantly, Several illusory figures could be seen in the area as streams of fearsome sword she directly slashed at the yellow-haired figure. All of you use your strongest techniques to kill him. She hushing roared in rage. The short-statured two links step out, and a demon subduing lightning divine pole appeared behind him. That was his astral nova, the lightning energy contained within had an explosive effect that could cause pure destruction. He stomped on the ground and that short stature of his suddenly expanded together with that divine pole as he smashed the pole down from the sky. Thousands of arcs of electricity sparkled, tearing apart everything as it blasted into the yellow-haired figure. The attack was so powerful that even the immortal was trembling from the after-effect. K. The yellow-haired figure lifted his head and drew in a deep breath. He opened his mouth wide and actually began to devour all the destructive energy. Even the earth trembled violently as a result of his devouring. Die! An expert brandished a gigantic blood halberd, smashing it down on the yellow-haired figure. That gigantic blood halberd actually managed to impale the target. However, the yellow-haired figure merely stood there and moving, allowing that expert to attack him. He then took a step forward and slammed a punch outwards. With a deafening boom, the hearts of everyone pounded. The next instant, a large cavity appeared in the place where the heart of the halberd-wielding expert was. His heart had been totally crushed into nothingness. At this moment, the blood halberd impaled in the figure suddenly dissolved, as numerous poisoned scorpions appeared, infesting his bloodstream and feasting upon his flesh. This caused the countenance of the yellow-haired figure to turn black as his vitality rapidly declined. He is poisoned by the blood halberd, in that case he will definitely die for sure. The hearts of everyone bloomed with joy when they saw this. Xukan was a leading character of the Sky Poison Valley, his proficiency in the poisoning arts was at an extremely high level. As long as he successfully administered the poison, no one at the Heavenly Dipper Realm would be able to survive. However, everyone discovered that the eyes of the yellow-haired figure were still as sharp as ever. He swept a glance over them before lifting his head and stared at the sky, exuding an intense feeling of desolate loneliness. Burial Immortal, Burial Immortal, you are so ruthless. So many immortals came to this place to seek your inheritance yet you buried all of them. Why did you bury over 10 million immortals and demons? Why? A spark of intelligence flashed in the eyes of the yellow-haired figure as though he remembered something of his past. His words? deeply stirred the hearts of everyone present. Burial Immortal? Was that a title of a certain powerhouse? Why did he bury over 10 million immortals and demons? These immortals were also here to seek the inheritance? If even immortals lusted over the inheritance, how strong was the master of this palace exactly? Being able to bury over 10 million of them? How powerful was he? No wonder even the sect leader of the royal sacred sect didn't dare to enter here recklessly. Right now everyone discovered that, although they already felt that this was an extraordinary place, it turned out that they had still underestimated this immortal palace. Attack! Shi Hsing's heart was like steel, he maintained a clear head and issued the command. He leaned the experts and slammed out with his fist. Momentarily, a trillion beams of fist light slammed out, smashing everything, unceasingly ramming into the body of the yellow-haired figure. The others also frenziedly unleashed attacks yet despite doing so, the yellow-haired figure didn't seem to be affected. A terrifying earth and yellow light spiraled around him. That person shifted his gaze staring at those leading the attack. He stood upright and tall, exuding an imposing presence akin to an absolute fiend. Ants of the Heavenly Dipper Realm, ridiculous too ridiculous. You buried all of us yet allowed a bunch of ANTS to come to this place? Could it be that the reason for the burial was because you wished to nurture these ants from the heavenly dipper realm to the point where they could inherit your legacy? The yellow-haired figure bursted out into a crazy laughter, as a deranged light flashed in his eyes. 
he wasn't willing to believe that back then so many immortals came to this place to contend for the inheritance, yet it was all a trap. Most of them were buried here with their cultivation sealed while the others died. Was it really for the sake of these ants at the heavenly dipper realm? Too ridiculous, an existence like himself actually became a test for these ants? Sealing his cultivation base to this level just to become sparring partners to temper these ants in combat? Since you want this, let me grant it to you. I don't know how many years have you waited for, but I hope that the one you are waiting for will appear. I want to see if these ants nurtured by your burial of 10 million immortals would be able to inherit your boundless magnificence. The yellow-haired figure howled as a beam of yellowish-brown light erupted forth from him. His body exploded and actually transformed into the earth, completely vanishing from this spot. A terrifying formless energy forced everyone to retreat. Several people coughed out blood from the after-impact as their countenances turned as pale as paper. Ken Wenshin was similarly forced back as he coughed out two mouthful of blood. He climbed his way back up, as his countenance flickered, his heart shaking violently as he thought back to the words the yellow-haired figure had spoken. Burying ten million immortals and demons just to nurture ants at the heavenly dipper realm, hoping to find a successor? These immortals and demons were a test prepared by the master of the immortal palace, Ten million terrifying existences came here to contend for the inheritance, yet all of them were either annihilated or buried. What level of cultivation had the master of this palace reached exactly? Was he someone at the same level as the sect leader of the royal sacred sect? Surely not, that level was simply too low. All of the immortals and demons buried here should all be much stronger than the sect leader of the royal sacred sect. Swish, swish tilde. Several figures flickered as they dashed towards an ancient rune shimmering in the skies. Get lost! Yet another figure descended and grabbed the ancient rune floating in the sky. Upon seeing who the person was, the gazes of the others stiffened. It was Zaiku, nobody dared to act recklessly when they saw it was a member of the core faction. That ancient rune shall belong to Zaiku, Shia Xing faintly spoke, causing ugly looks to appear on the faces of everyone. That ancient rune was an immortal item, yet now that Zaiku had it in his possession, they would certainly not be able to get a share of it. Was there something wrong earlier? Why did that sealed immortal have intelligence? He actually had memories of the past. Shia Sheng frowned as he shook his head. Shia Sheng, is that something unique? The sect told us that these buried immortals have already forgotten everything. Yet that yellow-haired figure earlier seemed to be awake. Shia Xing's heart pounded slightly as he continued, Never mind, even if we failed to obtain any more treasures, just this information uncovered made it so that this trip in here wasn't wasted. Everyone was silent. Just as what Shia Xing said, if they reported this to the sect, news may leak and even people from outside the royal sacred region might descend. Since we are already here, how can we go back empty handed? With so many people, how can we not seize the opportunity to obtain some immortal treasures? Zaiku's voice rang out, causing many to look at him. Some of the experts then nodded, Zaiku is right. Since we are already here, how can we return empty-handed? Shia Xing glanced at Zaiku before nodding his head. Okay, let's wait here for the others first. I'm sure there are others that still haven't arrived yet. None of us must do what Mo Yang did earlier. If someone does so, even if he doesn't die in the hands of the buried immortals, I shall personally kill him for sure. MHM, let's wait for Cloud and Loneliness to come out. We will work together with them and take these immortal ranked items. Even if those buried here are immortals, as long as their cultivation base is restricted to Heavenly Dipper, we will kill them all the same. Cloud and Loneliness were Divine Inscriptionist Grandmasters. They were extremely crucial to this operation. Without them, it was exceedingly difficult for them to slay the buried immortals. Fan Miu, Wu Tang, both of you have arrived. Qian Wenchen nodded his head to both of them. The two of them came here slightly later than him, but since they could make it out of that passageway with their own power, it was already something very impressive. Fan Miu, you follow me. At this moment, the expert from the Forgotten Immortal faction of the Royal Sacred Sect who spoke earlier stated, 
Fan Miu was a core disciple of their Forgotten Immortal Tower, although she wasn't really very familiar with this expert of the Forgotten Immortal faction, they shared the same roots. Fan Miu could only glance apologetically at Ken Wenchen with a smile, after which she turned and nodded to the woman who spoke, I would have to trouble Senior to take care of me then. After that, everyone closed their eyes in mediation and as time passed, the people exiting from the passageway got more and more and the instant they exited, there would be someone telling them of the scenario that happened earlier. Cloud and loneliness had also finally arrived, and they immediately started to prepare divine inscription formation in front of an immortal tomb. Ken Winchin stared at the two of them preparing the formation. They seemed to be creating an extremely complex, support type grade formation. It could be seen that their attainments in the field of divine inscriptions were both extraordinary. After an entire day, the divine inscription formation was finally finished. This formation was in the shape of a huge golden rock and was directly facing that immortal tomb. This formation is named the Great Golden Rock Formation, it contains boundless might and can pool our strength together as long as all of us stand at the designated locations. Those in charge of the attack can adjust and borrow the strength of all others in the formation. No matter how strong the buried immortals are, they would surely die when faced against the might of our formation, Cloud explained, he was filled with confidence regarding this formation which he inscribed. Ken Winchen also knew that this formation was truly terrifying, especially so when everyone in the formation was at the supreme tier of Heavenly Dipper. I will arrange your positions. Shi Hsing spoke. Quinn and Saku, both of you are known for your powerful attacks. Bring Ken Winchen along and the three of you will be at the forefront of this formation. Zaiku, bring people and stand at the wings, I will be at the Talon and Fan Miu's group will be at the tail. Shi Hsing commanded. Ken Winchen frowned, maybe the others couldn't tell what Shi Hsing's intentions were. But for him, who was also proficient in divine inscriptions, he knew what Shi Hsing was planning just from his words. Those at the forefront would have to directly face off against the immortals' attacks. That was an incredibly dangerous position. The wings were the most nimble, while the talons, which was the position Shi Hsing was at, were most suited for attack. Those at the tail were supposed to launch unexpected attacks. However, the true controller of this formation would be those who stood at the wings. If we succeed, who does the immortal treasure belong to? Ken Winchin asked. He wasn't a member of the royal sacred sect. Naturally, he was unwilling to be placed at the position with the most danger if there was wasn't going to be any benefit. MHM? Zaiq frowned. He glared at Ken Winchin and replied. Cut the crap, just follow the orders. Chapter 636 The Powerful Buried Immortal. Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash. As the sound of Zaiq's words faded, a cold light flickered in Keen Winchin's eyes. There was no need to doubt that the status of this Zaiq must be extraordinary in the royal sacred sect. Although Shia Xing was the leader, the one who grabbed the ancient drone earlier was Zaiq. Not only that, Nobody had dared to protest. Just obey orders? Ken Winchin coldly laughed. Earlier when Zaiq seized the treasure he already knew that Zaiq would definitely treat all of them as cannon fodder, placing them in the most dangerous situations to get the benefits for himself. Ken Winchin wasn't such a selfless person that he would sacrifice himself for Zaiq. You better make that clear. If not, doesn't it mean that we would die for nothing? Ken Winchin spoke causing many to be in silent contemplation. This was also something they wanted to ask. Although that expert from the royal sacred sect had promised that they would be able to cultivate an immortal art if they obtained one. But were his promises real? And also, what about immortal treasures? There was no way to share in immortal treasures and earlier when Zaiq took that ancient rune, he hadn't consulted the rest of the group. Although they didn't dare to ask the question, it didn't mean that they had no thoughts on it. Ken Winchin. Zaiq glared at Ken Winchin with a cold light flashing past his eyes. I've long heard of you. You are very famous and have outstanding talent, but you have to be clear on one thing in this place, we of the core faction are the leaders. In here, put aside your arrogance, you don't have the capabilities to be impudent in here. If you don't wish to participate, 
you can scram the fuck off right now. It's not that I want to be here, but rather, the royal sacred sect invited me. Ken Wenchen locked gazes with Li Shi as he coldly replied. If you don't wish for me to participate, I don't mind at all, but you better mind your words. So what if you are from the core faction? I'm not from the royal sacred sect and have no connections with you. He <laughs> he. A light laughter rang out, it was none other than the woman earlier from the Grand Chain faction. How could she forget to throw stones at someone who is down? She added in a glacial tone, how arrogant, our royal sacred sect invited him to be here. He <laughs> he. Zaiku, this Ken Wenshin is really self-centered. This woman was very clear on who Zaiku was, she naturally wouldn't miss the chance to cause the conflict between Zaiku and Ken Wenshin to deepen. Zaiku's expression turned heavy and just when he was about to reply, Quinn interjected. No matter what, it's best to make things clear first. The majority of the people here are from the royal sacred sect, I have no objections if we face the danger together. However, if you want us to face danger yet not receive any of the benefits, there's no meaning to it at all. Quinn's words still had some weight to them, as he was also a disciple of the Royal Sacred Sect from the Battle Sword faction. He had overwhelming combat strength and it was evident that he was on the side of Ken Winchin. In that case Quinn, what do you think we should do? A young man beside Zaiq spoke. This person had a face full of pride and seemed a little younger than Zaiku. He was San Jing, someone of the core faction, and also the junior apprentice brother of Xia Xing and Zaiku. San Jing had very close relationship with Zaiku and Xia Xing, and now, an expression of unhappiness could be seen on his face when Quinn rebutted Zaiku. Quinn was from the battle sword faction of the royal sacred sect and people from that faction were all very prideful and extremely tough to control. If we obtain an immortal art, the person who sees it shall be its keeper. Once the immortal art is acquired by someone, the others are not allowed to seize it. The possessor can read through the immortal art and pass it over to Senior Lee when we exit this place. If we obtain an immortal treasure, we will follow the same rules. The person who acquired it shall be the one to hand over to Senior Lee so that due credit can be given. Quinn's voice was very calm, neither servile nor overbearing as he stated. Impudent, Senior Lee has already stated very clearly. Everything in here has to follow the order of Senior Xia Xing. Quinn, are you deaf? Sun King berated. I'm only judging the matter where it stands. Since everyone has differences in opinion when we entered here, I'm sure I did not overstep my bounds by just giving a suggestion. Naturally, if everyone present is agreeable to follow the commands of Xia Xing no matter how unfair they sound, I shall do the same as well. Quinn faintly spoke. Sun King then turned his gaze onto the others, only to realize that many in the crowd were avoiding his gaze. Evidently, they all felt that Quinn's words made sense. And since someone was willing to take the lead and step out, they were naturally willing to sit there and do nothing until a consensus was passed. After all, if the suggestion failed, the one who took the heat wouldn't be them. Zaiq's eyes flashed with coldness as he stared at Quinn. Fine, we will follow your suggestion. But in order to avoid us fighting over the treasures, I will have to modify your suggestion a little. Whoever was the one who last hit the buried immortal, the treasure shall temporarily belong to that last hitter. Does anyone have disagreement with that? We are agreeable. MHM, since it's this way, we will just follow this new rule, the crowd all agreed, causing Zaiq's lips to curl in a cold and unpleasant smile. But because of how he stood, nobody in the crowd could see that smile. Enough, we are all of the royal sacred region, and shouldn't be overly bothered by such a small matter. Since Zaiq has already agreed to do so, we will all just follow. Everyone, let's put in your utmost effort here, and we will nationally obtain many immortal treasures. Shi Hsing spoke as he continued, Quinn and Zaiq's suggestion was so that everyone would work harder to kill the buried immortals. I hope that all of us can remain united and act as one. You all have already seen for yourself how dangerous things could be. Naturally, we must work together to minimize the danger. Quinn nodded, radiating a sense of justice. Psycho glanced at Quinn, his expression was filled with disdain. 
he understood the personality of Quinn very well, an honest goody two-shoes who wanted fairness and justice for everyone. However, these people of the core faction, it was obvious that they didn't have the same intentions as him. Let's act, Shia Shin ordered. Instantly, a runic glow flashed as the formation started to exude an intense light. A raging wind kicked up, as though the golden rock was flapping its wings and floating up to the sky. Quinn, Psycho, Ken Wenshin, and Wu Tang were at the forefront position, the beak of the golden rock. And at this moment, Xia Xing standing at the position of the talon stretched his arms out and grabbed the air, causing a rumbling sound to echo as the floating sword above the tomb roared. A moment later, the tomb crumbled as a terrifying sword intent that seemed as though it came from the primordial era, engulfed this entire space. The biting cold wind gusted, blowing onto the bodies of everyone. Above the tomb, a white-robed figure appeared. His eyes stared vacantly at everyone as he stretched out his hands, as though he was sensing his own strength level. Why so weak? A harsh-sounding voice echoed out, containing hints of contempt within. His eyes suddenly flashed with sharpness as everyone felt as though a beam of sword light pierced through their heart when he stared at them. Are you all the ones who buried me in here? That person slowly walked forward as a towering sword she filled the sky. In that instant, an overwhelming sword mud enveloped everyone present. Attack now! She hushing roared. Quinn nodded, the runic inscriptions that made up the golden rock shone brilliantly. A beam of sword light tore through space, shooting right towards the white-robed figure. Why so weak? That white-robed figure pointed his finger as millions of pinpoints of light gathered there spiraling madly. BZZ. The wind intensified, Zaiku, as well as the others located at the wings, made their move. The manifestation of the golden rock rushed towards the buried immortal as a corroding palm strike smashed right towards the white-robed figure. The palms of the white-robed figure slashed through space, resembling a sword slashing down from the sky, lacerating everything. The sharp talons of the golden rock shot out as well. Xia Xing and the others channeled all their strength into this attack, wanting to annihilate everything. That white-robed figure drew in a deep breath as he soared into the air. Brilliant sword lights concentrated around him as they erupted forth in a frenzy. It was like tens of thousands of sword all shooting out at the same time. He slowly advanced forward, staring at the manifestation of the golden rock before him as his sword chi ravaged the area shredding everything it came into contact with into nothingness. Rumble exclamation mark tilde. The wings of the golden rock flapped as it rushed straight out. Everyone inside the formation was channeling attacks and Ken Winchin and the other three at the forefront directly landed before the white-robed figure. He did this on purpose, the movement of the golden rock is controlled by those at the wings. Ken Winchin stated to Quinn and the others. Right now, the left wing was controlled by Zaiq while the right wing was controlled by Sun King. It's fine, let's go all out in our attacks, Quinn calmly spoke. Thousand Massacre Sword Art As the sound of his voice faded, his sword chi bombarded the area ahead as millions of rays of light shot out, augmented by the power of the formation. Psycho also issued his attack, yet his sword style was completely different from Quinn. Quinn's swordplay was straightforward, packed with speed and power while Psycho's swordplay was sinister and crafty. The evil dragon sword art, the defying dragon slash, each of his attacks were also exceedingly dangerous. All in all, everyone inside the formation was frenziedly attacking. That white-robed figure calmly stood in front of the golden rock, and his tiny inconsequential figure erupted forth with a power that was unfathomably overwhelming. Each of his swords contained a sure kill might, yet the strength of his attack was cut in half by the defense of the Great Rock Formation. Even so, Ken Winshin felt the sense of death looming in more than once. Rush him, position him at the center of the Golden Rock Formation, we will be able to kill him easier than, Ken Winshin spoke. At the same time, the two wings flapped as the Golden Rock shot forward, appearing above the white-robed figure. Boundless light cascaded downwards, Yet the white-robed figure didn't bother to dodge at all. The him now was in a blank state, vacantly staring at the golden rock. He only wanted to attack. Combine our attacks, everyone kill him. 
the wings of the golden rock closed as it smashed downwards, burying the white-robed figure underneath. The eyes of the white-robed figure shone with a towering sword light. He rode his sword and flew upwards to meet the golden rock, his palms pressing forward in space. A boundlessly vast killing intent exploded out from him, as a blinding light covered the entire sky. Sword Chi lacerated the formation, and terrifying rumbling sounds rang out when the destructive energy ripped into it. Everyone was forced back, great clouds of dust rose from the ground as the white-robed figure stood there imposingly, bathed in his own blood, exuding the aura of a hero past his prime. Despite using an extremely powerful peak tier 4th ranked battle formation with supreme tier Heavenly Dipper Sovereigns controlling it, we are all actually still forced into such a miserable state? The hearts of the crowd pounded violently. The white-robed man then shifted his gaze in the direction of Quinn and the rest. He coldly added, your swords are too weak. As the sound of his voice faded, his fingers stabbed out into the air. Instantly, a supreme tyrannical sword might controlled everything. Quinn and Psycho brandished their swords only to discover that even their sword intent was under the control of the white-robed figure. The white-robed figure was bleeding, yet he was still advancing forward. Quinn, Psycho, endure it first. Everyone else waited for the instant the immortal launches his attack. At that split second after, immediately follow up with your attacks, Zaiq spoke causing the expressions of everyone to turn stiff. Zaiq was so ruthless, wanting Quinn and the others to be the cannon fodder. Even if the latter attacks ended up killing the immortal, it was highly likely that Quinn and his party would end up as a sacrifice. Ken Winchin stared at the white-robed figure as he activated the true intent of dreams. However, that formless sword she tore apart his true intent, he had no way to bring the immortal into his dreamscape. BZZZ A number of water screens manifested protectively while a sonic wave blasted towards the white-robed figure. Fan Miu had made her move. Leave. Quinn and the other three immediately fled towards the left and right. A beam of sword she resembled a rainbow, lacerating the sonic wave. The white-robed figure appeared once again. Although he was injured, the sword might of his attacks wasn't influenced at all. Right now, he turned and shifted his attention onto Fan Miu. Damn! Sun King was extremely depressed, their plan was actually foiled. The killing move he prepared erupted outwards, as a huge volume of burning lava gushed towards the immortal. Poochie! A beam of sword light split it into two while a part of the lava landed on the white-robed figure, instantly burning him. Such a scene caused Sun King to be extremely excited. Quickly kill him, he can't endure IT for much longer. As the sound of his voice faded, an incomparably cold pair of eyes locked onto him. After which, the white-robed figure stepped out. Sun King's position was not far away from Fan Miu. Both of them felt a monstrous killing intent locking down on them. Every step the white-robed figure took caused them to feel that they were a step nearer to death. That figure immersed in the burning flames wanted to kill them even if he died. Swish! The white-robed figure rushed out, akin to a bolt of lightning. Quinn saved Sun King. Zaiki roared. After the four of them dodged earlier, they were the ones nearest to Sun King and Fan Miu. It was too late. The white-robed figure transformed into two beams of sword light, shooting forth with blinding speed towards Sun King and Fan Miu. Die! Ken Winchin howled, his palms blasting into the void while Quinn moved as well, his sword slashing through the sky. Bang! The sword light shooting towards Fan Miu was delayed by a grand nihility palm imprint before burrowing through it. The next instant, Quinn arrived. His sword was forcibly resisting the beam of sword light and the impact from the collision caused him and Fan Miu to be flung through the air. However, Sun King wasn't that lucky. The other beam of sword light penetrated his throat despite him using the entirety of his strength to block that beam of light. Chapter 637, Breakthrough in Battle Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash Sun King Shi Hishing and Zaiki shouted in shock their countenances instantly turning pale. Sun King was their junior apprentice brother and the relationship between the three of them were extremely close. Shi Hishing and Zaiq both treated Sun King as their blood brother. 
Sun King's talent was also extremely high and would definitely have had great accomplishments in their core faction in the future. He was in the prime of his youth and Xia Xing would often accommodate him. And as for Zaiq, Sun King would always listen to him, the three of them were as close as real brothers. But now, Sun King had fallen. He died in front of their eyes. Why didn't you save him? Zaiq's eyes flashed with a terrifying killing intent as he stared at Quinn and Ken Wenchen. They had the opportunity to save Sun King, yet they actually chose to save Fan Miu. Ken Wenchen frowned. Earlier when they sensed the attack, Zaiq shouted out for them to endure it. Only Fan Miu acted to reduce the pressure for them. And even if Ken Wenchen wasn't so calculative regarding Zaiq's sinister schemes, when danger befall on both Fan Miu and Sun King, he would still have chosen to save Fan Miu. I regret Sun King's death. But in that circumstances, we only had the time to save one, Quinn calmly replied. I thought I said to save Sun King? Zaiq radiated coldness as he spoke. Yes but at that moment, there was no time to even think, we could only act based on our natural instinct. Quinn's tone of voice had no anger in it at all. Zaiq's countenance grew extremely heavy, but at that very instant, the sword light from the buried immortal concentrated into a ball as it exploded outwards. The sword might permeated this entire region causing harsh whistling sounds to echo out as clouds of dust rose from the ground. With a deafening blast, a number of immortal items suppressing the ancient tombs were moved, resulting in the tombs crumbling. And within every tomb, a powerful primordial aura could be felt emanating forth at full blast. Zaiq! Xia Xing shouted. His countenance grew incredibly unsightly. There were now a number of figures standing at the spot where those ancient tombs crumbled apart. Their eyes stared vacantly at their surroundings, but an instant later, a fiery bout of anger ravaged this entire space as they started roaring unceasingly. It's over. The countenances of everyone all turned white as their hearts pounded in terror. Just a single buried immortal was already so inconceivably strong. And now, as the ancient tombs crumbled apart, so many buried immortals actually appeared. How could they even resist? Run. At this moment only a notion appear in the minds of everyone. They had to flee this area. Escape separately in different directions, or we will all be caught in one fell swoop. She Xing roared. Those immortals from afar slowly advanced forwards, as the experts of the royal sacred region instantly bolted towards different directions. Qin Wenxin, Psycho, Quinn, Wu Tang, and Fen Miu ran off together in the direction of the passageway. Not only them, many of the others also ran in that way, preparing to exit this space. A terrifying raging wind gusted in the air, a shadowy image flashed through the sky instantly appearing at the entrance of the passageway. This figure was clad in green robes and he stood there with hands held behind his back. The aura emanating from him was incredibly fierce, and contained hints of ancientness within. We can no longer get out. Psycho promptly made a decision and fled in another direction instead. The strength of these buried immortals was so strong that it was monstrous. Even if everyone attacked at the same time, they might have no way to kill him. Since the entrance was already blocked, if one continued in that direction, they would only find death waiting for them. There are quite a number of buried immortals, we will have a higher chance of survival if we flee separately, Quinn spoke in a low voice. Ken Wenchen nodded, in that case, everyone, take care. Take care, Wu Tang nodded. After which, they all chose a different direction and sped away. Unleashing the fiend transformation art, Ken Wenchen transformed into a golden wing rock. He arced through the skies in a graceful curve, speeding towards a random direction at blinding speed, akin to a golden streak of lightning. MHM? At this moment, there was a figure below who took note of that streak of lightning. A strange glow flashed in his eyes as a pair of wings took form behind him before he took off after Ken Wenchen with lightning speed. Ken Wenchen's speed was extremely fast, yet the speed of that figure was even faster. The two of them streaked through the skies and in the blink of an eye, they already traversed a great distance. Ken Wenchen soon discovered that someone was following him. His countenance grew extremely unsightly as he continued speeding his way forward. 
After a period of time, he halted and descended, transforming back into his human form. Turning, he stared at the figure who was following him. This was a man clad in gray with a mnemonic looking countenance. He was floating in the air and had a vacant look in his eyes as he stared at Ken Winchin. Senior, Ken Winchin spoke, yet he only saw the wings of the other figure flapping. A grayish shadow shot forth, Ken Winchin's blood thrummed as he blasted out furiously with his palms, unleashing an indomitable star-seizing palm imprint. However, that figure merely casually lifted his palm. A resplendent glow shimmered that as the manifestation of a celestial bird zoomed out in rage. With an explosive collision, Ken Winchin's imprint was shattered into pieces and the impact even knocked him back, causing him to cough out blood. His aura fluctuated, and just when he was about to stand up, the gust of the wind could be heard the grey-robed figure had already appeared right before him, lowering his head as he stared at Ken Winchin. Who are you, and who am I? That person spoke, even his voice was low and rumbling, resembling a demon. His countenance was like lightning, giving people a terrifying feeling when they looked at him. Junior is named Ken Winchin, but I have no idea who Senior is, Ken Winchin replied. The strength of this person was so strong that it struck fear in his heart. In that case, why did you appear here? And why is my cultivation base sealed? The clothes of the grey-robed figure fluttered in the wind, although there was still a blankness in his gaze. His demonic-looking sharp eyes seemed as though he could see through Ken Winchin. I only know this place seemed to be a burial ground for immortals, and it's within an immortal palace, Ken Winchin replied. Burying immortals, burying immortals. The grey-robed figure murmured as he felt a splitting pain in his head. He stared at the sky, burial immortal, why does this name sound so familiar? Who is the burial immortal, why did he seal me underneath the tomb? His voice gradually grew louder and louder, causing a raging wind to kick up. His demonic she was incredibly sharp, all of a sudden his wings flapped as he roared in anger and shot up into the sky, leaving so quickly with the speed of a lightning bolt, while exuding an incomparably tyrannical and baleful aura. Being sealed by someone underneath the tomb for countless years. No wonder these immortals were so enraged when they came out. Ken Winchin's entire body was soaked in sweat he sighed in his heart. Compared to these buried immortals, those termed unrivaled in heavenly dipper in the royal sacred region simply weren't even worthy of a mention. After consuming a medicinal pill, Ken Winchin continued on his way. Numerous ancient tombs could be seen dotting the land. Ken Winchin saw a sore tomb, and when he neared that place, he could feel a sword mutt radiating from the immortal sword hovering atop the tomb. He closed his eyes in mediation, sensing the aura of immortal chi. After a long period of time, he stood up and continued forward, occasionally coming across two ancient tombs in which he would sit before the tomb to mediate on the immortal aura of the items. Time flowed by, it has already been over a month since he entered here. This desolate ground was boundlessly vast, it was as though there was no end to it. The warnings he heard before weren't exaggerated. Buried immortals, buried immortals burying ten millions of immortals and demons. That supreme powerhouse who had done so, was it really because he wanted to choose a successor? What degree of talent would one need if they wished to become the successor of this immortal palace? That day, that booming voice that rang out in the air. Who was the owner of that voice? M.H.M.? At this moment, Ken Winchin felt someone staring at him. He coldly hollered come on out. As the sound of his voice faded, a silhouette appeared behind another immortal tomb, staring at Ken Winchin who was sitting before a tomb. This person had a short stature. It was none other than the leader of those from the Violet Thunder faction, Tu Ling. Tu Ling stared at Ken Winchin, his eyes flickering with a cold light. He then slowly walked towards Ken Winchin, yet giving Ken Winchin a dangerous feeling. Brother Winchin, why are you here as well? Tu Ling narrowed his eyes and smiled, acting as though he was very familiar with Ken Winchin. Is there something the matter? Ken Winchin asked in a detached tone of voice. I heard that you are well versed in a multitude of techniques and even have very powerful immortal arts. In this place, danger abounds everywhere, Brother Winchin might die at any moment. How about handing over your techniques to me? 
Chu Ling coldly laughed as he continued walking towards Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen had already stood up when he noticed Chu Ling. He then emotionlessly spoke, Oh, is that so? How about I pass them to you now? As the sound of his words faded, Ken Wenchen's blood started to thrum with power. His countenance grew incredibly demonic as resplendent astral light circulated around his body. Sure, I will come over and take them then. Chu Ling's silhouette flickered as blood-colored lightning covered him completely, radiating a sense of intense destructiveness and danger. Boom! Chu Ling's palm slammed out as the streaks of blood-colored lightning shot through the sky, directly blasting towards Ken Wenchen. Instantly, Ken Wenchen only felt a bloody calamity descending upon him. When those bolts of lightning hit him, Ken Wenchen felt his blood boiling as his body turned numb, trying to paralyze him. BZZ. Ken Wenchen abruptly turned and streaked away with blinding speed. Ha ha ha, brother Ken why are you in such a hurry to leave? Chu Ling continued advancing. Every step he took caused Ken Wenchen's entire body to shudder as an overwhelming pressure pressed down upon him. Chu Ling was a character that had comprehended four kinds of true intent. You won't be able to escape. Chu Ling's speed was as quick as Ken Wenchen. And every step he took, Ken Wenchen felt even more of those blood-colored lightning bolts slamming into him as the numbing effect grew even stronger. At this moment, a towering sword chi emanated forth from Ken Wenchen, permeating the air. Chu Ling furled his brows, and after that he actually saw Ken Wenchen turning about once again and rushing straight towards him. Every step he took generated a supreme sword might of annihilation that even made Chu Ling's heart go cold with fear. Chu Ling's countenance changed. He stomped the air as his terrifying true intent of Great Earth erupted forth, wanting to crush Ken Wenchen. The two of them were advancing towards each other. True intent of sword? You actually comprehended three kinds of true intent. Chu Ling stared at Ken Wenchen, the lightning gushing from him blotted out the sun, crackling with intense violence. Die! Chu Ling roared in rage, the blood-colored lightning zoomed forth. Ken Wenchen similarly roared, the humming of his sword and sword light converged together, tearing through the armor Chu Ling wore. The two of them rushed each other, instantly colliding with a thunderous impact. Sword-type inscriptions formed of divine energy concentrated on his palms. Ken Wenchen's physique grew increasingly larger and even his clothes were torn apart. An armor of astral light covered his body and with a roar, several incarnations of himself appeared as they directly slashed down with their swords. Chu Ling's body grew larger in size as well. He was bathed entirely in lightning and each of his strikes packed a destructive energy within causing Ken Wenchen to feel that even the circulation of his blood had been paralyzed. The feeling of numbness grew increasingly intense. What a powerful attack! Right now, Ken Wenchen could feel the arteries in his body already about to explode from the destructive energy channeled into him. However, the thrumming of his demonic bloodline grew increasingly violent as the faint image of an ancient primordial demon king appeared behind him causing his aura to grow even more tyrannical. Boom, boom, boom. The two of them fought in close combat, all the divine energy Ken Wenchen had stored up erupted forth at this moment, giving his all fighting with his back to the river. Both of their oars fluctuated wildly while blood could be seen leaking out from the corner of Ken Wenchen's mouth. Just die already! Chu Ling coldly roared, as a boundless amount of lightning blasted towards Ken Wenchen once more, wanting to shatter it into pieces. Ken Wenchen drew in a deep breath as blood continuously flowed out from his mouth. His eyes were incredibly fiend-like and gleamed with a mnemonic light. He then stared at Chu Ling and stated, thank you for this battle. As the sound of his voice faded, an even more overwhelming demonic she engulfed the area, shaking the heavens and earth. A crimson glow covered this entire space as Tu Ling's countenance grew incredibly ugly. He retreated with explosive speed. The true intent of the mandate of demons. Ken Wenchen had comprehended a total of four kinds of true intent and right now, his aura was still climbing upwards. Where are you going? A wraith-like voice echoed out. Chu Ling turned his head and saw a silhouette which he had never seen before. Terror quaked his heart as his entire being trembled involuntarily. Was this a buried immortal? Over here, 
as long as he saw someone he had never seen before earlier when they came in, Tu Ling naturally would assume that it was a buried immortal. However, this person was not. Chapter 638, Key Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash Tu Ling instantly turned about and moved in the direction of Ken Wenchen. Compared to Ken Wenchen, a buried immortal was simply too dangerous, he didn't have any way to defend against them. Let's join hands for now, or we will both die, Tu Ling stated to Ken Wenchen. At this moment, the demonic chi gushing forth from Ken Wenchen was akin to a demon king in recovery. His eyes were incomparably fiend-like as he stared at Tu Ling, and his countenance was exceedingly serene. Oh is that so? You will die, but I will definitely not die. Have you gone crazy? Tu Ling cursed. The silhouette from the back closed in, causing Tu Ling to be so struck by terror that his entire body turned cold. He isn't crazy, have you seen clearly who am I? A voice from behind him rang out. Tu Ling turned, he was now trapped between a rock and a hard place. He stared at the oncoming silhouette as he asked, Who are you? I am him, he is me, that person quietly replied. Crazy, all of you are crazy. The blood-colored lightning crackled fiercely around Tu Ling as he rushed towards Ken Wenchen with the lightning opening up the path. Ken Wenchen's body exploded directly with a thunderous boom, the blood lightning penetrated through him, creating a cavity in it. Yet Ken Wenchen's eyes hadn't lost its light, and was still boring into Tu Ling's. Something is wrong. Tu Ling suddenly sensed something weird. He recalled that it was rumored Ken Wenshin had comprehended the true intent of dreams, and was able to pull someone unconsciously into his dreamscape. Boom! A terrifying streak of lightning directly blasted into him. Tu Ling felt pain coursing through his entire body as the dreamscape broke. His entire body was soaked in cold sweat. As expected, it was a dream. Ken Wenshin was still alive and had no wounds on him at all let alone the huge cavity in his chest he thought he saw earlier. I want you to die. Tu Ling rushed Ken Wenchen again. Ken Wenchen merely stood there while coldly smiling at Tu Ling, allowing Tu Ling's attack to land on him again. Under the thunderstruck gaze of Tu Ling, a huge hole appeared once more on Ken Wenchen's body. But upon seeing the laughter flickering in Ken Wenchen's eyes, Tu Ling only felt he was trapped in a nightmare he had no way to escape from. Chi. A crisp sound echoed out, Tu Ling was forced awake from the dream. He had never even moved from his original spot at all. Right now, he lowered his head and stared at the sharp sword which had penetrated his heart. That sword then twisted, lacerating his organs. He turned his gaze onto Ken Wenshin as an expression of puzzlement flashed in his eyes. He wanted to see clearly who the silhouette behind him was, but he could no longer turn around. Double layer dreamscape. How can your true intent of dreams be this strong? Tu Ling stared at Ken Wenchen, he understood the true intent of dreams a little. This particular true intent was extremely unique, but there was also a flaw. One had to concentrate their will and spirit to bring others into their dreamscape. The rate of exhaustion on one's spirit was incredibly huge, and if the person creating the dreamscape were to attack, the dreamscape would become very unstable and easily broken through. Unless one fought against a much weaker opponent, the dreamscape creator would never initiate a physical attack. They would use mental attacks powered by their spirit and imagination to torment their opponents instead. Earlier, Tu Ling obviously already came out of the dreamscape, but why was he still stuck in it? The first time you broke through, that wasn't my dreamscape. When you turned and looked at him, you have already sunk into his dreams. As for the second time, that's actually the dreamscape of my creation. I didn't move to attack you, but he could do so. Ken Wenchen calmly explained. At this instant, Tu Ling only felt a chill so cold that it penetrated his bones. He stuttered in disbelief, that's your, true self-incarnation. Ken Wenchen didn't reply nor refute. Tu Ling's eyes flashed with regret despair and hatred after which, a sinister smile appeared in his eyes, an opponent of such caliber like yourself is truly terrifying. However, you will surely die. Definitely, he will never spare you. Poochie. Deet Yon's sword finished the strike. Tu Ling's cold laughter stopped as the expression on his face finally slackened in death. 
the one behind him was naturally none other than Vityan, a true incarnation of himself created by virtue of the great Nirvana immortal art. A true self-incarnation was the exact same as the original. Both were demon-level geniuses. Ken Wenchen Long had plans regarding this true incarnation of his. He would usually use Di Jian to contemplate on mandates while his original body roamed the world for experiences to temper himself. This way, his cultivation speed would naturally be faster and even if his original body were to die, he would still have a life left. Di Jian was like the shadow of Ken Wenchen. A shadow that almost never appeared in Ken Wenchen's life. He would only show up at crucial moments, and an example was this immortal palace. Di Yan wouldn't influence his life. Ken Wenchen wouldn't allow the true self incarnation to disrupt it. Di Yan was a trump card, a weapon hidden in the dark. And even though right now everything about them was the same, in the future when Di Yan broke through, he would choose a direction different compared to Ken Wenchen. Only then would he be able to achieve the greatest effect of the great Nirvana immortal art. By allowing Li Dian to grow together with himself, Li Dian would become the sharpest weapon he possessed. After Li Dian took away the items on Tu Ling's body, he flickered and went off in a random direction, opting not to stick together with Ken Wenchen. Ken Wenchen departed the area as well and soon after, the two of them found a quiet place for cultivation as they sat down and withdrew their Yuan meteor stones for cultivation. The astral energy within his body seethed and surged, cleansing his impurities as his meridians and energy channels expended. Even his astral novas were being tempered. An intense rumbling sound echoed out and in the short span of a day, Ken Wenchen and Li Yan both broke through, stepping into the eighth level of Heavenly Dipper. Before this, they had made use of the Grand Formation to fight against a buried immortal. The swordplay of that buried immortal actually gave Ken Wenchen a spark of insight. After that, he had comprehended the true intent of sword while he was roaming the burial grounds. His mandate of demons was also on the verge of breaking through to true intent, and just so nicely, Tu Ling appeared. In that savage battle between them, Ken Wenchen finally comprehended what the energy of demons should be. Savage violent, without fear, bloodthirsty, and killing in a frenzy. Ultimately, Ken Wenchen broke through when forced into a corner, allowing him to comprehend the true intent of demons. After he comprehended the true intent of demons, even his bloodline seemed to be undergoing a transformation, cleansing away the impurities of his body. A chain reaction then occurred, his cultivation base also soared to the point of breaking through. This was also the reason why Tu Ling chose to flee instead of continuing to battle. He could sense that Ken Wenchen was already on the verge, and combat against him would give Ken Wenchen the edge to do so. But even so, he eventually died and Ken Wenchen had now stepped into the 8th level of Heavenly Dipper while comprehending a total of 4 kinds of mandates, Force, Dream Sleep, Demon, and Sword. His combat prowess skyrocketed more than a tier upwards. If right now he fought on the sacred battle platform, he could even insta-kill Lu Lan and Yi Shi, they wouldn't even be able to defend themselves. He was also confident that he could easily suppress experts on Tu Ling's level. For his next step, Ken Wenchen had to pursue the unrivaled tier in Heavenly Dipper, to be truly unrivaled in this realm. When he saw the combat strength of those buried immortals, Ken Wenchen understood that even the him right now, still had an extremely far distance to go to reach that level. The strength of those buried immortals was simply too terrifying, even a character like Tu Ling who had comprehended four intents couldn't withstand a single strike. After breaking through, Ken Wenchen and Li Yan roamed around the place while consolidating their foundation and tempering the energy of their true intents. Only this way would they be able to freely control their degree of attacks during actual combat. Dash. More than 10 days had passed. Qian Wenchen and Li Yan continued advancing into the depths of this immortal burial ground. There were tens of millions of tombs in this space, so many that they were basically countless. By now, Qian Wenchen was already numb to the sight, he didn't dare to imagine the number of immortals buried here. But there was one thing he could be sure of. This immortal palace shouldn't be something of the royal sacred region. How could there be so many immortals here? Continuing on his way, Ken Wenchen would sit down to cultivate whenever he had a spark of insight. And today, 
Ken Winchin finally came to the end of this desolate burial ground of immortals. What appeared before Ken Winchin was a screen of light that connected the heaven and earth. It resembled a rainbow cascading downwards from the sky, standing between the two spaces. And in that shimmering screen of light, an illusory door could be seen. Key. Ken Winchin's expression hardened. From afar, a whistling sound rang out and an instant later, Deet Yan appeared with a key in his hands. This key directly transformed into an illusory state as it floated forwards, into the keyhole of the illusory door. An instant later, a small opening appeared there. Ken Winchin and Deet Yan both trembled slightly. The illusory door actually opened, the key Shia Emperor left behind was truly useful. In that case, what secrets would there be at the end of that illusory door? Streams of terrifying energy fluctuations from a number of ancient auras could be sensed from the other side of that door. Ken Wenchen glanced at Li Dian, his eyes flashed with the look of a struggle before gleaming with the light of determination. Since I've already made it all the way here, I would surely regret it if I don't enter, Ken Wenchen sighed in his heart. As the sound of his voice faded, he turned and decisively left this place. And after he departed, Deet Yan's figure flickered, entering through the illusory door to the next space within. A resplendent light flashed as that illusory door closed. The two spaces were separated once more. Dash. At this moment, Deet Yan stood at the other side of the doorway. The illusory door closed behind him and was sealed shut, and Deet Yan understood he no longer had a path of retreat. Deet Yan was thinking that back then the Shia Emperor didn't actually use this key. He didn't know how the Shia Emperor acquired this key. Maybe it was because of his strength? Or more likely, it was because of his luck. Finally, someone entered, a hoarse voice rang out. Deet Yan's countenance was calm and serene. Since he had already entered, no matter what he faced, he wouldn't flinch from it. Those that were able to enter here are all able to solo kill those buried immortals. This new person should have have some strength, right? Ha ha, I wonder if he will be able to obtain the inheritance of that old thief. If he really succeeded, this meant that all of us would regain our freedom. A number of voices rang out, as though they had been too lonely prior to his arrival. It had been too long since they saw someone new entering this space. This lonely world suddenly seemed to brighten up and became more lively with the arrival of Dutian. Only those who could solo kill the buried immortals would gain the qualifications to enter this space? Deet Yan's heart pounded when he heard that. How strong was a buried immortal? Those who could solo kill them, that meant that their strength had truly reached the unrivaled tier of Heavenly Dipper. Could it be that only those monstrous existences had the rights to enter this place? Old Thief? Inheritance? These people should hate the master of the immortal palace very much, right? They actually dare to refer to him as an old thief. In that case, it might be possible that the master of this immortal palace was already dead. Deet Yan quickly filtered out the useless info. He continued walking forward as their voices rang out in his ear. Only at the eighth level of Heavenly Dipper? How can this be? Someone questioned bewilderedly. There's no need for you all to continue dreaming. This old man has already been here for 80,000 years. Although the number of people that have entered here before was not that many, there were a few hundred of them through these years. Which one among them wasn't a character that exuded unmatched magnificence throughout his generation? But what was the result? All of them were played to death by you freaks. What nonsense are you talking about, this new arrival might be able to receive the inheritance. I curse that that old thief would never be able to find a successor for all eternity. Just look at how absurd the difficulty of the conditions he set is. Ha ha, all of you remember to be more lenient this time around, don't make this little fellow die too early. If not, it would really be too boring. Someone laughed uproariously, as though already treating Deet Yan as their plaything. Is this a nest of devils? Deet Yan started, his heart trembling involuntarily from their words. These people had actually been stuck with him for 80,000 years. After such a long time, even if they didn't go crazy, it was only expected that their personalities had turned twisted right? Chapter 639, Immortals as Sparring Partners Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash
step by step, Dit Yan slowly walked forward after stepping through the illusory door. He came to a place with mountains and waters. Compared to the desolate burial grounds earlier, this seemed more like an ordinary world. He could still hear those voices discussing him, but they seemed to be speaking from a location quite far away from him. Dit Yan walked for quite a long time before he finally saw a human silhouette. Not far away from him was an old man with red hair. His hair and beard looked extremely messy, his large eyes was silently regarding Dit Yan as a terrifying imposingness flashed within. Dit Yan stared at those eyes and saw a world filled with flames reflected within. Somehow, the tendrils of the flame in that world enveloped Dit Yan, causing him to feel a scorching heat burning his entire body. Damn! Dit Yan struggled, and only after a long moment did his eyes regain clarity. He stared at the red-haired old man while his heart pounded in shock. That old man was similarly also looking at him, but he didn't take any more actions. Dit Yan soon discovered that the body of this old man was tied to an incomparably huge ancient tree. A strange and marvelous energy of wounds circulated around this ancient tree, channeled into the body of this old man, forcefully binding him there and making it so that he had no way to move. Senior do you need Junior's help? Dit Yan asked. The red-haired old man started, he stared at Dit Yan in astonishment before he recovered with a grin. What an interesting little fellow. Help? Come and try first. Dit Yan walked up, a towering sword chi radiated from him as he slashed out with torrential might, targeting the ancient tree that bound the old man. His incomparably sharp sword slashed on the thick vines covering the tree and actually did not leave even a mark behind. How tough, no wonder Senior would be bound by it. Bound by this thing? Do you think that this is really a tree? The red-haired old man glanced at Ken Winshin before muttering, ignorant. A. Dit Yan felt extremely awkward. Go on ahead and take a look first, the red-haired old man spoke. Dit Yan nodded as he continued on the path forward. He noticed that not far away from him, there was another person being suppressed under a mountain that radiated intense spiritual chi. The hair of the silhouette suppressed underneath was so long and messy that it covered his features. That person lifted his head and grinned at Dit Yan. Hey, it has been really a long time since anyone came by. It's so lonely here. Little breath, you better be careful. Most of these people here have already gone crazy. They will play you to death. A voice directly sounded out in Dit Yan's mind, causing him to start. After which, he turned and glanced at the red-haired old man with gratitude in his eyes. Dit Yan continued on the path, he also saw a lake. In the lake, there was a long-haired lady with an absolutely stunning countenance. Her deep eyes were akin to the oceans, but she stared at Ken Winchin with cold eyes. He saw her wading slowly about in the lake, causing many ripples to form but it seemed as though that lady wasn't able to leave the lake. Such bearing, too perfect. Dit Yan stared at the lady in the lake. Although the countenance of this female couldn't be compared to Kinga or Mo Kingchen, her bearing was extremely striking and she seemed to be a real beauty from the celestial realm. However, her eyes had no light in them, Dit Yan felt as though he was looking at the eyes of a dead person. This made his heart tremble as his body stiffened. Reduced to such a state as an immortal, trapped here for 80,000 years. Such pain, who could endure this? He stepped onto the martial path at the age of 16 and pursued the very peak. This path was long and arduous, seemingly with no end to it. If one day, after so many tribulations, he finally broke through and became an immortal, yet was trapped under such circumstances, how much despair would he feel? Dit Yan's heart was stirred as he stared at the immortal lady with deep emotions in his eyes. However, the female immortal completely disregarded him, she merely stared at her surroundings with a blank look in her eyes. Turning back, Dit Yan walked back to the place where he encountered the red-haired old man. Senior, all of your movements and cultivation bases are sealed? MHM? The red-haired old man glanced at Dit Yan as a scorching heat erupted out. Yes. They are all sealed. How can I break the seal? Dit Yan inquired. Break the seal? An uproarious laughter suddenly echoed out. It was the immortal trapped underneath the mountain, he was laughing in a crazy manner as he spoke up, 
not knowing how high the heavens are and how vast the world is. Wanting to break the seal? You better defeat all of us first. You have to walk all the way till the end, defeating an immortal at every step before you can obtain the inheritance of that old thief and cultivate his art. You can talk about breaking the seals at that time. Senior, is there really a way to do so? Li Tian stared at the red-haired old man. The red-haired old man noted that Li Tian's eyes were clear and filled with sincerity. He replied, You really wish to help us break our seals? Yes. Li Tian calmly nodded. Regretfully, Junior's strength is still too weak. Why? That red-haired old man questioned. Since you were able to make it here, as long as you obtain the inheritance, you can control all of us. We would all become your strongest weapons. Why would you still want to break the seal? Li Tian's heart was somewhat tempted, yet he still shook his head and smiled. The path of cultivation is exceedingly difficult. This junior overcame so many hardships only to arrive at the level I am now. I even hope to become an immortal one day, carefree and free-spirited, to love and hate as I please, not restricted by anyone. Since all seniors here are immortals, by right you all should roam this world, going wherever, doing whatever your hearts desire. Yet, senior is being bound by a tree, that senior is suppressed by a mountain, and as for the fairy-like immortal inside the lake, she is an immortal, yet there is no light in her eyes at all. This junior has always clearly separated debts of gratitude and grudges, I have nothing against all the seniors here and even if I obtain the inheritance, why would I trap all of you here? This, isn't the Tao I'm seeking. Li Yan's eyes shone like brilliant torches as he stood with his hands clasped behind his back. He had started on this path when he was sixteen, how much contempt and hardship had he faced all the way till here? The Tao he saw it was a carefree one, roaming wherever, doing whatever he wanted to. My destiny is my own, not even the heavens and earth can restrict my freedom. The red-haired old man stared intently at Li Yan's eyes. He saw determination and stubbornness within them, with no traces of hypocrisy at all. That red-haired old man involuntarily started laughing uproariously, causing the entire space to shake. The earlier hundred-plus participants that made it to here, none of them were truthless characters. They had no qualms about stepping on our corpses to accomplish their goals, their hearts were all set upon obtaining the inheritance regardless of the costs. You are the first participant here who dared to say things like that, vilifying the actions of that old thief. How interesting would it be if you truly obtained his inheritance? At this moment, silence descended in this entire space. And an instant later, a voice boomed out, How do you know this person isn't an exceedingly scheming person? It isn't as though we haven't met such a character in the past. If he is really that scheming, just consider it that I'm blind. It has already been 80,000 years, if he could lie and influence my judgment, I have nothing to say as well. So what even if we went all the way to help him? Even if we wanted to aid him, it still ultimately depends on himself to see if he's capable enough. If he really isn't up to the mark, I shall personally slay him myself. The red-haired old man roared back. After which, he stared at Li Tian as he spoke. Although everyone here has their cultivation sealed to the peak of Heavenly Dipper, you still have to defeat each and every one of us, starting with me. You must accomplish this before you would have the opportunity to obtain the inheritance of that old thief. One thing to note, our memories and intelligence weren't sealed like those buried immortals in that graveyard. Hence, we are many times more powerful than those fellows out there. You can make your move now, and other than not killing you. We won't be going easy on you. That red-haired old man spoke. This junior shall do his utmost, Li Tian nodded. He stared at the red-haired old man as the true intent of his mandate gushed forth. With his eyes boring into his opponent, the true intent of dreams permeated air. Li Tian found himself transported into a fiery world, dropped into an ocean of fire. He was in a dreamscape. However in this dreamscape, Li Yan discovered that not only had he failed, he was drawn into a dream created by others instead. True intent of dreams? I comprehended that as well. The chains made from vines binding that red-haired old man in reality appeared in his dreams and bound Li Tian. After that, 
A flaming red halberd appeared in the hands of that old man as he drove it right through Dityan's body. ARGH! A scream of misery issued out from Dityan's mouth. His countenance paled as an expression of agony flashed on his face. He was brought into a world of purgatory by the true intent of dreams controlled by his opponent and not only that, he had no way to break out from it. After several moments, the red-haired old man retracted his true intent. Dityan found himself devoid of strength the sweat soaked his entire body. He was now weaker compared to if he had fought all out for a prolonged period of time. At this moment, any of these people could kill him with a flick of their finger, he had no way to resist at all. Go on ahead, your usage of true intent is simply too shallow, the red-haired old man spoke to Dityan. Dityan nodded in agreement, he knew that with his strength now, he could already be considered right at the peak if it was in the outside world. However, when in front of these people, he was so weak that he wasn't even worthy of a mention. After resting for a moment, he stabilized his heart and mind as Dityan walked towards the lake. He stared at the beautiful figure in it and bowed low, I humbly seek the guidance of the celestial maiden. Swish! The water in the lake started seething, instantly roiling towards Dityan as a bone-piercing cold corroded his body. Dityan soared up in the skies, yet the water was still able to reach him, spiraling around him at such a speed trying to envelop him, resembling a gel. Boom! Dityan's true intent erupted forth as he continued shooting up into the skies. The gigantic tidal waves shot up together with him but at this instant, the jowl formed of water solidified, becoming more corporeal. What he was facing now wasn't simply a kind of true intent, but was a fusion of intents instead. Dityan blasted out his towering aura as he climbed through the skies. Yet the lake water had no intentions of giving up. It wrapped around his body before grabbing and flinging him ruthlessly towards the lake shore, causing him to smash onto the ground. The celestial maiden was still waiting in the lake, as though nothing out of the ordinary had happened at all. Dityan then continued ahead, he discovered a person sitting atop a stone platform. This opponent wielded a long spear as his weapon and seemed to be using the true intent of lightning. Each of his strikes contained a terrifying burst of electricity that instantly caused Li Dian's entire body to turn numb. After which, the spear transformed into a bolt of tribulation lightning containing all the insights of the mandate of lightning that instantly thundered past Li Dian's head. If he had wished to slay Li Dian, Li Dian would have already died countless times. Too strong, simply too strong. Li Dian could clearly sense the disparity of strength between them. Yet he didn't feel any sense of disappointment. An immortal's control of true intent was nationally many times more terrifying compared to someone at the Heavenly Dipper realm. Also, this was just them casually attacking. If they truly wanted to fight, how much more fearsome would they be? Dityan then began a path of self abuse. However, it was evident that these people truly did show mercy. They didn't kill him at all. With immortals personally acting as his sparring partners and constantly facing different opponents, Dityan's rate of improvement was simply beyond belief. He accumulated experiences and tempered himself frenziedly every single day, contemplating the experiences he gained. And just a month from now, his proficiency and control towards his own true intent had also become many times more terrifying compared to the past. In the other space, Ken Wenshin was also closing his eyes in comprehension. When Li Dian battled, he was gaining insights. He and Li Dian were one person, after all. By doing this, one in constant combat while another mediated, his strength would nationally improve faster. Not only that, Ken Wenshin had already started to try out fusing true intents. Just like what he had comprehended on the path of the grass hut. Once a brand new type of power was formed from the perfect fusion of true intents, when that fused power was merged into innate techniques, the might that erupted forth would instantly explode with several times more power. Chapter 640, Fusion of True Intents Translator, Lord Bluefire Editor, Dash In fact, even before Ken Wenshin comprehended the true intents of mandates, he had already been experimenting with fusions. His Grand Nihility Palm imprint and his Void Halberd techniques were both examples of fusion between his Mandate of Dream Sleep and Mandate of Force. 
such a fusion was at the most elementary level, and because he had now comprehended the true intent of his mandates, there was a need for brand new fusions. In that land of desolation, Ken Winchin brandished an ancient halberd and was repeatedly striking out with it. Each of his halberd strikes contained terrifying might, as though there was boundless force being congregated into one point before exploding out with an unfathomable and astonishing strength. With his experience in fusions, Ken Winchin continuously tried to integrate two kinds of true intent into his innate techniques. True Intent What is a true intent? True intents are the purest incarnation of various mandates, Ken Winchin murmured. After countless tries, he closed his eyes and pondered over Didion's combat experiences. As Didion's strength grew, the immortals in that space started to apply fusion of true intents in their attacks against Didion. The generated forces formed from the fusions were a completely new kind that didn't belong to any mandate. Sometimes, it was simply too difficult to even tell what kind of true intents were used in the fusions. Time flowed by just like this, Li Yan was constantly in combat while Ken Wenshin was constantly in mediation. His proficiency and understanding towards true intent grew stronger and stronger as time passed. Today, Ken Wenshin was practicing with his halberd as usual. A thousand times, ten thousand times. He wouldn't feel any fatigue from doing this because this was his determination. If he wanted to get stronger, this dry and dull experience was something he had to undergo. Although his comprehension abilities weren't bad, and would occasionally have an epiphany, such things could only happen by luck and fortune and not actively sought after. There would be no one who could gain insights every day, no matter how much of a genius they were. Without a strong perseverance on the pathway of cultivation. It was impossible to break through your own limits again and again and step into the next level. BZZ A terrifying laceration sound echoed out. The halberd snicked through the air like a dragon, slicing everything apart. And at that instant where the halberd exploded forth with its attack, a particle of light actually appeared at the very tip of it. That particle of light shimmered with a resplendent astral light, containing a brand new energy within. I've sensed it. Ken Winchin felt joy in his heart. It was exactly this type of feeling. He pierced out with his halberd once more as a particle of light shimmered there, causing the tip of his halberd to fade in and out of the void. It exuded a terrifying energy and gave people a sense of surrealism. Ken Winchin calmed his pounding heart and continued practicing the halberd. Astral light flashed as a glow from the void covered the entire halberd. It could hide in plain sight, coming in and out of existence akin to a dream becoming reality. The fusion of true intent caused a marvelous transformation and created this new energy. Yes, it's this kind of energy. This kind of energy is able to fuse with astral energy, it's an incarnation of true intent. Ken Winchin's heart shook slightly, right now, a marvelous astral energy emanated from him. The astral energy all contained hints of true intent within, covering his body with a surreal glow yet giving off a sense of extreme power. Who? Ken Winchin drew in a deep breath. He finally opened another doorway on the true path of cultivation. Since this door has opened, success would follow nationally after. It was similar to the first time he had comprehended the first kind of true intent. Subsequent true intents were all much easier to comprehend in comparison. A few days later, Ken Winchin's body glowed with a mnemonic light. At a single glance, he gave off an incomparably demonic feeling. Those fiendishly handsome-looking eyes were streaked with sharpness, and there was a black glow in the center of his brows. True Intent of Demons, True Intent of Force Both of these intents emphasized on attacking strength. If these two fused together, the energy born from their fusion would definitely cause one's attack to multiply countless times in strength, Ken Winchin mused. He continued practicing with his halberd without stopping as though he would never know the meaning of the word exhaustion. When a particle of incomparably violent light appeared, Ken Winchin's eyes shone with a devilish light. This kind of energy was filled with a tyrannical and destructive energy. Every particle of this light had the power to annihilate everything and could even grow and multiply with no end. This tyrannical energy, even if I used it for defense, it would be extremely powerful. Ken Winchin mused. After which, 
particles of that energy circulated around his body, enveloping him with a layer of demonic light. This particular energy contained a heavy demonic aura within, and felt even more terrifying compared to the energy produced solely by the true intent of demons. For people who hadn't comprehended a single true intent, they don't even need to think about breaking through my defense, Ken Wenshin mused. This improvement by bits and pieces made him very excited. At his level, it wasn't easy to improve even if it was by a little. And wanting to cross over a few tiers was even more incredibly difficult. The fusion of true intents was the way to go. The deeper one's comprehension was, the stronger the power they would be able to execute. Ken Wenshin's improvement indicated that Li Dian was improving as well. Such a rate of improvement caused those immortals who originally thought that Li Dian was hopeless to gradually see a ray of hope. Li Dian's improvement was simply too fast, so fast even they as immortals felt startled in their hearts. For them who had lived such long lives, tens of years would pass by in merely the blink of an eye. In the span of a few months, Li Dian's strength continuously rose, and if he could maintain this speed of improvement and continued to mature, they all wondered if he had the chance to step into a tier where no one in Heavenly Dipper had never reached before. The master of the Immortal Palace was looking for a successor. It seemed as though he wanted to find a Heavenly Dipper sovereign which could defeat immortals that had their cultivation suppressed to the Heavenly Dipper level. From their point of view, all of this was pointless. The usage, proficiency, and knowledge of true intents of immortals was simply too terrifying. Even if their cultivation bases were sealed, they could easily insta-kill those at the peak of Heavenly Dipper. As for being defeated? They seriously thought that there would be no one that could accomplish it. Deet Yon improved remarkably fast, but to them, this was after all, merely just a ray of hope. Because maybe all of them combined was merely a test. Who knew what other tests that old thief had designed? However, considering what sort of character that old thief was, it was only understandable that he would set such harsh conditions to choose his successor. It has been half a year since Ken Wenshin entered the Immortal Palace. In that desolate burial grounds, time flowed by, yet no vestiges of it were left behind. Although his strength had increased a lot, there was still a very long path ahead for him to walk. Nobody could tell where the end point of cultivation was. Ken Wenshin prepared to exit the space. His comprehension had already reached a bottleneck. In the outside world, maybe Kinger and Mo King Jung were still worried for him. It was enough with Li Yan remaining in the Immortal Palace. The tombs of buried immortals could still be seen dotting this landscape. There were many immortal treasures and immortal arts, causing one's heart to bloom with the desire to seize them for their own possession. However, Ken Wenshin didn't touch any of them. If Li Yan could pass the tests, Everything here would eventually belong to him. And as for now, although Keen Wenshin was more confident regarding his strength, he still didn't think it would be possible for him to solo a buried immortal. The wind gusted, his white robes were stained with dirt and dust. Keen Wenshin's silhouette flickered as he sped through the desolate burial grounds, heading back to the direction of the exit. He didn't know what had happened to those immortals that had broken free. He could still remember that there was a buried immortal blocking the entrance back then, and he wondered if that immortal would still be there. Fan Miu? At this instant, Ken Wenchin spotted that not far away from him, a female silhouette cutting a sorry side appeared. It seemed as though she was escaping from something, and this silhouette was actually none other than Fan Miu. MHM? Ken Wenchin discovered that behind Fan Miu, there was another female silhouette that was rushing in the direction of Fan Miu. And behind that female, a figure flew through the air with his hands clasped behind his back. There was a blankness in the gaze of this figure, and it was none other than a buried immortal. Fan Miu also saw Ken Wenshin, and upon seeing Ken Wenshin heading her way, she involuntarily shouted out, She's trying to implicate me, don't come near me. Flee in another direction instead. Ken Wenshin's expression turned cold as he stared at the female chasing after Fan Miu. It was none other than that woman that belonged to the Grand Shang faction who mocked him before. Evidently, this woman was the target of the buried immortal, yet she was intentionally trying to implicate Fan Miu, hoping for a chance to escape. However, it appeared that the buried immortal had no intentions of killing her. 
that Immortal was simply slowly advancing her way and if he really wanted to kill her, she would be dead long ago. Quinn? There was another person that rushed towards Fan Miu. Don't worry, that buried Immortal has no killing intent. Ken Wenchen had already descended next to Fan Miu. And upon seeing the female from Grand Shang faction rushing over, a cold light gleamed in his eyes. The buried immortal behind her had a flute in his hands, giving off a carefree feeling and was even extremely good looking. When he was young, it was highly possible that this immortal was a horny and promiscuous individual. Let's go. Ken Wenchen spoke in a low voice. Fan Mi and Quinn nodded as the three of them turned to leave. However, the female from Grand Shang faction was still following them. Ken Wenchen abruptly turned as a sharp light flashed in his eyes, take one more step closer and you shall die. As the sound of his voice faded, his killing intent engulfed the female, causing her body to stiffen. When she glanced at Ken Wenchen now, hints of terror could be seen in her eyes. How dare you! The countenance of the female turned cold. Ken Wenchen stared straight at her, no longer as low profile as he was back then. His eyes were like ice, and appeared as sharp as swords, glimmering with a killing light. However at this moment, the flute-wielding buried immortal transformed into a shadow, shooting straight towards Ken Wenchen with a speed as fast as lightning. The long flute in his hand lashed out, manifesting a lightning bolt that zoomed forth. Ken Wenchen and Quinn acted in the same instant, unleashing their swords. Quinn's sword was akin to a flying immortal, incomparably elegant yet containing a terrifying might within. Ken Wenchen's sword was sharp and tyrannical, containing an extremely fearsome explosive might in it. With a huge rumbling sound, a long crevice was formed in the ground. Ken Wenchen actually managed to block the strike of the spirit immortal. You two go on ahead first. Ken Wenchen spoke to Quinn and Fan Miu. The two of them stood there stunned as they stared at Ken Wenchen bewilderedly. You leave first, Quinn added to Fan Miu. No. Fan Miu shook her head, her actions causing Ken Wenchen to be taken aback slightly. And at this moment, a raging wind kicked up as that buried immortal slowly walked over. A supremely powerful killing intent radiated from his body. Ken Wenchen took a step forward as the power of his blood thrummed, his entire person became incomparably demonic. Crackling sounds rang out as his robes were torn apart, replaced by an armor of astral light. His physique continued growing larger as a gigantic blood-colored ancient halberd appeared in his hand. Terrifying light circulated around his ancient halberd, exuding a might that would cause hearts to tremble. Mist formed shrouding the buried immortal within as sound waves blasted out. The buried immortal waved his hands as the mist created by Fan Miu dissipated instantly. That flute-wielding immortal stepped out as he rushed straight towards Ken Wenchen. The divine energy in Ken Wenchen's Yuan Fu gushed out, as particles of a strange energy coated his ancient halberd. Stepping out, he smashed forth with a halberd that shimmered in and out of existence. When the halberd appeared once more, it was already directly in front of that immortal. The incomparably tyrannical energy exploded forth, colliding head-on with that immortal's attack. The ground around them all ruptured, forming many open cracks from the impact while Quinn and Fan Miu rushed out to aid Ken Wenchen as well. Quinn transformed into a shadow as the beams of sword light he produced slashed out mercilessly. The flute in the buried immortal's hands waved to and fro as an intense light erupted. His body glided across the ground as he explosively retreated, instantly lengthening the distance between himself and Ken Wenchen's group. Fusion of True Intent Ken Wenchen glanced at Quinn as he smiled. As expected of a heaven chosen from their battle sword sect. Quinn's strength had already reached such an incredible level. However, Ken Wenchen didn't know that at this moment, Quinn's heart was shaking in amazement. In this half a year time. Ken Wenchen actually become such a terrifying character. As for that female from the Grand Shang faction, she stood there dumbfounded with incredulous shock and disbelief. The three of them acting together actually forced a buried immortal to retreat? Not only that, Ken Wenchen even had the strength to match the attack of the immortal head-on. To listen to the full complete novel plus thousands upon thousands of hours worth of other full novels, go to patreon.com slash Mac. Converting these novels is mind-numbing and insanely time-consuming.
uploading to Patreon removes the additional step of having to also convert the files to video format, which saves a staggering amount of time. Your support is greatly appreciated.